I've put myself in NCAA football, and if we're being completely honest, I'd be a terrible quarterback, but I want to play through a realistic road to glory where I'm going to return back to college at Northern Kentucky, and the goal is to go from starting as a 45 overall all the way up to a 99 where I can win the Heisman and hopefully get the Norse National Championship. Now, this might be impossible because my team isn't good, and I've put it on the hardest settings like always, but Northern Kentucky is in the MAC Conference, which helps, and I'll be playing through my entire freshman year in this first episode. The goal is to work my way up from being a third stringer to being the starter, but the two guys ahead of me are both much better players, and my throwing stats couldn't be any worse, so it's a good thing that I played soccer in the past, which is the only reason I have some speed and stamina, but unfortunately, I also have to be honest about my height, and I have a feeling that most of my goals in this series aren't even possible. My team's first game is an hour south in Lexington, and obviously, I had to watch from the sidelines as we lost by 35 points to Kentucky, but we knew it would be a while before I saw the field, and if Davis Brennan continues to throw picks, taking the starting job might not be that hard. We can't even be worried about that yet, though, because we have to become a second stringer first, and with 57 throws, power, my only goal for this first practice is just throw stuff underneath, but it's still going to be inaccurate because I don't have great throw accuracy either, and this is going to be difficult. I just want to rack up as much XP as I can so I can upgrade my player as soon as possible, and I've already found Jay stun the second a few times during this practice. He's going to come away with another catch for 10, but there's a lot of plays where nobody gets open, and I'm going to try to scramble for the first time where I get outside the pocket and get a few. It really hasn't gone as bad as I thought it could, but there is a lot of issues because I've missed quite a few throws, and at the same time, I've dealt with some drops, so maybe it's best if I just run because this is going to get us our largest gain yet. That could be the strategy, but it really doesn't earn that much coach trust for me. And I only have 35 so far, even though I've made no mistakes with any turnovers and I've been trying to do the right thing. I'm going to need some breakaway plays for touchdowns or something. I don't think these drags underneath are going to work. And another receiver I've been building up some good rapport with is Malachi Harris. Both him and Jay Stun the second seem to operate in the slot. I'm going to try my first deep ball, but it's dropped. And I should have known I'm not going to have the arm power to do stuff like that. That was a great throw for my last rep, but it was dropped, and the only upgrades I can afford with that much XP would only boost us up for one game. It's going to be a long season for us, but as it goes on, things should get better, and this is a winnable matchup for my program. You all are going to get a first look at the home stadium, and it's small, but this is the first year NKU's had a team, where freshman halfback Calvin Gibbs just put us up by 10 points. I'm shocked we destroyed an FCS school by this much, but it's a good sign, and now I'm having my first outdoor practice in the rain, which didn't start well. All the coach trust I'm trying to build up just could have gotten lost with one play, which really stinks, but I'm sure we can work to get it back, I think a good idea will be just rolling out here, and that's so off target. This is definitely the hardest challenge I've ever given myself, but I feel like if I lock in, eventually I'll be able to figure things out, and all of these drops are starting to drive me nuts. Maybe I just need to scramble and get Coach Trust this way, because at least I won't mess up on this. And on this next rep, man-to-man -man coverage is gonna allow Harris to be open, but I never want to practice in the rain again. We are suffering with drop after drop, and I just want to become at least the second stringer. That was honestly a really good throw, and again, I'm gonna try and take this slant, but it goes straight to them. So my coach trust just got reset to zero, and I have a feeling that's going to happen a lot. I built it up to like 100, but I need like 900 to become the starter. I'm just going to run on this play, and 22 is going to catch me. But because I'm starting from the bottom again, I'm fine trying to force it into some deeper windows. And with six reps left, I'm going to take this corner route over to Malachi Harris, who gets us a bit. To be honest, the second practice did not go how I thought it would, but we dealt with a ton of drops, and that's a good throw. So I've passed for a touchdown. That's what you love to see, and then there's a pick. I think it's going to be a very long road to glory for me. I'm not sure if I can pull this off. That was a good spin move, but I will lock in and eventually figure things out. This is the final rep of the second practice, and David's going to get us to like the five or maybe the two. We're starting to earn a little bit more XP, but the coach trust isn't coming easy, and that just means that this next practice will have to be perfect, where that's a great start to our tight end. Keaton David has not been bad for us, and I'm just going to scramble on this next play for a few. Compared to the rain, this is much better. I like that we're indoors again, and it looks like I'm going to be able to take this side of the field for an easy 25. Those are the plays I'm going to have to make if I'm ever going to become the starter, but I wasn't prepared for the blitz and it's going to hurt us. They are sending in pressure so quick. I think the only benefit for playing for a bad school is I'm also facing off against a defense that isn't the best. I've been scrambling a lot and it looks like I'm going to take off for a touchdown. Those are the types of runs that are going to make me a second stringer, but then I follow it up with terrible passes that weren't meant to go that far anyway, and that's why I have to scramble. I will say because of that long touchdown run, my coach trust has gone up a lot, but Scott Dallas dropping the ball doesn't help, and there's not that many reps left in this practice. They're all over the wide receiver screen, but at the end of the day, I'm very happy with how things went, and we will take it. That gives me enough XP to finally upgrade my player, but the only one I have enough for is read and react, and that is not worth it. At least we're still coming for that second string spot, and who knows, maybe one of the guys in front of us will get injured, which couldn't hurt us because we just got annihilated by our rivals, Western Kentucky. I never got to see the field in the game, but the backup did, so that's why it's so important we keep earning coach trust, and I could either upgrade our acceleration or throw power, but I'm gonna have to take the boost to our 
throw power. It won't make much of a difference yet, but I do want to attempt at least one deep shot, and that is on the money. Maybe having a little bit more throw power will make a difference because that was an amazing throw, and confidence is through the roof. I am coming for that second string spot. Now they're giving us four verticals, and I have to roll out because they will instantly get sacks, but sometimes it opens up lanes like this to take, so I cannot complain, and we're continuing to improve our stats more and more. Now I'm going to take this slant, and are you serious? That would have been an interception just because it was an accurate ball, and that's why I am going to keep keeping it on the ground. That's a good juke move. Go down. And I guess on this next play, we're just going to beam it to freshman receiver Dalen Maurice. All around, this has been another solid practice, and we're going to have that route over the middle to Malachi Harris. But I am so terrified of taking a sack because our offensive line isn't the best. I'm going to set my feet and find David, our tight end, who goes all the way to the five. Boys, I have never played this well. I am normally blind whenever I'm throwing the ball. But we have worked our way up to like 350 coach trust, and this is going to be even more. Words cannot express how excited I am to see how much we are getting, and I didn't take the halfback screen. It wasn't open, but that was the right decision. Right now as a 47 overall, I'm in my bag until that throw. Well, that kind of kills all the momentum I've built up, but we can take this four verticals route, and I was scared that number 23 was about to play it. We're not going to have enough XP to get another upgrade after this practice, but we have put up some really good numbers with throws like this one too. And if we continue to lose, moving up the depth chart won't be as difficult. Every single time you take a loss, it gets a little bit easier. This is the final rep of this practice where Gibbs gets a 10, and that's the most XP I've ever gotten from one. I've had the lock in, but now we're halfway there, and I highly doubt that we're going to beat Vanderbilt. You know what? It really wasn't that bad, so maybe NKU does have a bright future, but not with Davis Brennan as he threw three interceptions again. We don't really deserve it, but next up is a bye week, so I'm about to have back-to-back -back practices, and you've got to be kidding me. We are outside in the rain again. These are always so much harder, and we seem to struggle in them more, but I'm going to be able to take off. There's a linebacker to beat, and that's dumb. I literally just ran into a guy that weighs like 100 pounds more than me, but at least I didn't fumble the ball. And you got to love how Scott Dallas just decided to ruin this play. He's a junior wide receiver. He should not be making mistakes like that, but we're going to get the touchdown. And he immediately made up for his mistakes, so I can't even complain about it. We're now up to 500 coach trust, so we just need 300 more. But I've not thrown an interception in a while, so I know one has got to be coming sometime soon, and that is what scares me a ton. Those turnovers lose you like 200 coach trust, so you really can't make any mistakes. And this rain practice is going a lot better than the last one, but our running back is in my way. So I simply had to step up in the pocket, and that coverage is not going to stick with Scott Dallas. I'm starting to realize that the cornerbacks on this team aren't very good, just like our wide receivers, and Calvin Gibbs continues to run it down the field. So I'll gladly give him another halfback toss where this one isn't going anywhere. I have earned enough XP to get another upgrade for my player, though, so that's a great thing. And look at Jay Stun the second. He came so close to reaching the end zone for us, and there's not that many reps left. I think I'm just going to take off here, and the ball is loose. We just lost like 100 coach trust. And that's what I'm saying. I cannot make like any mistakes. That's going to probably be a pick. So it's a good thing nobody understood where that ball was going. And I love the four verticals play call, but that's an interception. This is the downfall I was talking about. And I just messed up at the end of this practice. Things were going so smoothly for us, but now I'm just going to run around, put a guy in a spin cycle, and we'll take the yardage. With 5,000 XP, I want to spend it, but none of these upgrades are really that good. So we're just going to advance the week. And this is the second time that we're taking chick magnet. I've already been able to increase my throw power by eight. And this indoor practice is exactly what we need. I might lock in and not say a thing for a while just so we can hopefully get some upgrades. I already know that this isn't going to be the best of ideas, but I want to go with the deep shot with my new throw power and it's dropped. But that could have very easily been an interception and I don't know why I thought we could pull it off, but I'm still going to scramble for a ton of yardage and I almost broke free. I feel like we're only a couple of practices away from challenging to be the backup, but if we're going to do that, I'm not able to make any mistakes and I'm going for the deep post. I have to get yards here. It looks like they're bringing a lot of pressure on this one, so I'm just going to have to run out to the right. R1 is open. He needs to keep making his route, and then I tried to throw it to him, but we fumble. I was ready to give it to him, but by the time I hit the button, we were already past the line of scrimmage. And there's another mistake, but that fumble only lost us like 65 coach trust, so it's not as bad as the last one. I'm not sure what the difference is, but I can't complain about it. Robbins gets his first catch of this video, and I've been in Wildcat for the last two minutes, but they won't hike the ball, so I have to quit practice. And losing a rep there really stings because every last one of them counts. This halfback screen ended up going pretty well for us, but I always know that they're going to pick up on it on the second one as Calvin Gibbs isn't going to be able to get very far. I'm trying my best to get us a position battle and I have to just set my feet, make the right read, but it's still off target. I'm sure when I watch this back, I'm going to see other stuff that was open and be upset about that. And you all never fail to let me know in the comments when there's a read I didn't take, but I did see that one to Scott Dallas who goes down at the one and I would have loved credit for a touchdown there, but I did just notice that I don't need as much coach trust anymore to become the backup. So that's what I'm saying. As we lose games, it's not going to be as difficult to move up the depth chart and we just got to keep earning some XP. 
participate. Realistically, we're one or two good practices away from a position battle, but for now I have to watch my team suffer some more losses. And Davis Brennan must have gotten hurt or injured because Colton Reynolds has been out there all day, but the backup only got us three points, so he didn't play that well, and it feels like my chance has to be coming soon. These indoor practices are the ones that we have to take advantage of, and I'm going to instantly scramble on this one. But why they're so important is because we don't play well whenever we have to go out in the rain, and their coverage is clamping us up. I don't know why I even tried to complete a pass there, but it ended up not backfiring for us. And I'm just going to roll out here and try to take the deep post. It actually got open, and look at that pass. That's going to boost up so much coach trust. I just have to be smart with the rest of practice. I have been working for this all season, and we have them beat deep. That ball is going to be underthrown, though. And I don't know why I tried to take it, but that was not the right decision there. I went for the big play, and you can't do that with a quarterback that's throwing stats are as bad as mine are at this point in my career. But I feel like I've bounced back because I'm back at about 500 coach trust at this point in practice, and I'm going for another deep post, which is caught. I'm really surprised that those are working for us. They're very risky reads to make with my throw accuracy, but I am desperate to compete for the backup job. I just want to get out there on the field, and that would get me one step closer, but this wide receiver screen is boxed. And with five reps left, they're running man-to-man -man coverage, so Dalen Maurice gets open on that route again, but he's not been able to burn him for a touchdown yet, and we're going to take our tight end as Keaton David takes it to the 10. I have bounced back from that very dumb interception in practice, but we're still going to need quite a bit of coach trust to earn a position battle, and we keep earning more XP. Upgrade-wise, though, there's nothing that I really want to take, and I'm hoping that we lose to the Red Hawks, because maybe then I won't need as much coach trust, and we honestly put up a good fight, but they still won by 13. This next practice could change everything, though, and going into it, I am tempted to take a one-game boost, but instead, I decided to save our XP, and of course, this one is out in the rain, but that was a good catch from Scott Dallas running for a lot, and they want us to run that play back, but it's always very risky, so I'm glad he slipped off of him, and we've certainly opened up practice in the rain the right way. Now I'm going to scramble if they're not going to send that much pressure, and it looks like this is going to be man coverage, so we should have freshman wide receiver Dalen Maurice, who doesn't always make the catch, but when he does, he seems solid, and he did not get open there, but he still brought it in. We've gotten kind of lucky with this practice, but he slips on that route, so there's the bad things that start to happen to us in the rain, but it's going to be okay, as long as at least some of our receivers can end up holding onto the ball, and he got in quickly. With 11 reps left, I got a play that I really like. With this play action, I'm able to roll out our wheel routes open. It worked perfectly, and it's going to be caught. That's going to get us enough coach trust so I can end practice now, and I'll be challenging for the second string spot next week. It looks like Davis Brennan has been starting recently, but he's still been struggling, so sooner or later I'm going to get to take some snaps, but I have to win this position battle first, and there's still nothing out here that I want to spend our hard-earned XP on. This is the first position battle of my career, so I'm hoping that it goes really well, but with an inaccurate ball, that is not how I would like things to start out, and I might need to run. I have a feeling it's going to be almost impossible to get 5,000 points, so I'm going to take a deep shot like this one, and because it was caught, it gave us like 500, but I don't think that's going to be enough. I'm going to have to continue to take those, and interceptions aren't a penalty. I think I'm going to have to become lucky or something if I ever want to become the backup on this team, and against this coverage, we should have just taken it deep early on. That's going to be underthrown, but it worked out. I feel like I'm playing pretty well, but we've only put up a 1,000 points, and that was another off-target ball, but it almost led to a catch, and then it was dropped. I'm just going to go for the deep shot. We have to take some deep ones, and that's going to be picked. Well, this did not go how I was hoping it would. It seems almost impossible, and unless the bonuses on these last few plays are just insane, there's no way that we're getting that. I feel like it's supposed to be a 1,000, but it's glitched out at 4,600. It was never that high on previous Road to Glories, so I don't know what to do about that. I don't know if it has to do with the difficulty or what, but I've always played on Heisman. For this last rep, we have to get a touchdown, but I doubt it's going to get us 3,000 points, and I still got a long way to go. Versus Western Michigan, we're going to lose by 35, so maybe that'll make the position battle easier to win, and apparently how much coach trust you need is all dependent on the difference in overalls, and apparently I still need 4,600, so that means we're going to go for big passing plays. I'm not sure how we're going to pick this up ever, but eventually I've got to earn the backup spot, so we will figure it out, and that run only got us 110 coach trust of the 4,600 that we're going to need. It seems like these short underneath passes don't do that much either. I know you get more as the practice goes on, but either way, I think we're just going to have to go for some deep plays, and I don't think this is going to work out, but it looks like that's dropped. Let's just say that I'm trying my best to pull stuff off, but there's only so much I can do versus this D. And with eight reps remaining, we're going to go with the deep shot, and that ball is put perfectly on the money. But my teammate dropped it, so it's not going to matter, and we're going to go back in his direction where Maurice gets into the end zone. That closes us in on a thousand, but we're going to need like five more of those plays in these final five plays, so that's not happening. And it might be a while before I'm able to earn the starting job at Northern Kentucky, but we're just going to continue to upgrade our player and hope for the best. I think as you become a higher overall, these position battles become a lot easier for you. And remember,
remember, I started this episode as a 45, so it would make sense that we're not gonna have an easy time becoming the backup. If anything, we've gotten a lot of XP out of this, so hopefully that helps us upgrade our player even farther, and I'm about to get used to seeing the failed sign. There's also no way that we beat Northern Illinois, but I guess I was wrong because with 22 seconds left, we are only down by three, and Brennan's gonna throw it to Maurice, who goes to the end zone. It's gonna be so hard to earn the starting job now that we're gonna upset number 18 undefeated Northern Illinois at home, and that is it. I'm glad that that was an ESPN Classic that I didn't even get to play in, and there's not many upgrades we can take, but this one will put our overall up by two, so that seems to make these position battles easier, and we just have to do that a few more times, and then I think it will be manageable to pull off. Obviously, it won't be easy, but if we get lucky with some deep shots, I could see us having success, and we have enough XP to probably get us to like a 55 or 57 overall. This is going to be a big play for Maurice, so I'm starting to have some hope, and it's just going to take some more time to get the job than I thought. I think we could still become the starter by the end of this video, because the starter isn't a much higher overall than the backup, and I might as well slow things down, because I haven't gotten to use this feature yet. It looks like that's going to let that route get open, but you all can tell that the receivers I'm working with sometimes aren't the best, and other times it is me that's the problem, as that was not the right read, and this one's also going to be caught. Even if there's no chance that we win this position battle yet, I'm proud of how far we've come, and we're going to get a route bounce as well to Harris, which is going to go to the end zone. So I'm starting to realize that if we play almost perfectly, we could probably put up like 3,000 points, and because of all of these drops, there's been a lot of them that we've lost out on. We have enough XP to upgrade myself twice, so we're just going to need to get lucky in what becomes available, and there's only one that we can take here, but Deep Ball is going to put us up by three overalls, so now all it takes is 3,600 XP, and this is something we could manage, but a drop on the first play into an interception is a terrible start, and with this one being outside in the rain, I think we're going to struggle immensely. There's almost no chance I get this job. What we could do, though, is get a lot of XP, so I'm hoping we're able to pick some up, and because almost nobody's been able to make a catch, we are not doing too hot. At the end of the day, there's not much I can do about it. I've been trying to make the right reads, and when you're out here in the rain, players are obviously going to struggle to bring it in, so I did run a little bit just to get some XP, but this is going to be by far the worst result that we've ever gotten out of a position battle, and you know what? I'm just going to take off and also stiff arm this guy where the ball just popped loose. I'm hoping that we can all just forget about this one like it never happened because I am not proud of this result, and we only got 490 XP. The Norse are also coming off of a huge win, so even though we don't have that much to play for at this point in the season, it would be nice to see my program improve a little bit. And I don't know what's changed, but Davis Brennan does not want to lose the starting job. I'm not even competing for it. I'm going for the backup one. But all of a sudden, the senior wants to play way better. And we have to get blessed with another plus three upgrade. You know what? I feel like we got pretty lucky because this one's only going to cost us 3,000. And I've improved a ton in my freshman season. This is the first time where I feel like this position battle is actually obtainable. It's going to be very difficult in order to pull it off. We're going to need a lot of big plays. But again, I feel like it is a possibility if we could get lucky and that's not it. I think we're just gonna have to go for some deep shots, hoping for the best. I know that we have a quick wide receiver over there, and with that catch from junior Scott Dallas, we just got a huge boost, but they got in instantly, and I had no chance of ever getting that ball off. That is so unfortunate. I'm looking for the deep post again. This throw is gonna be made on the run, but they keep giving me this same play over and over, and I'm not the biggest fan of it, to be honest. We still need about 2,000 more with only eight reps left, so that means going for the house, and if I'm quick enough, we could end up reaching like the 10-yard line here, but realistically, Scott Scott Dallas is just going to have to get open and take this to the crib and he drops it. I've tried boys, but I don't think this one's going to go as well as I thought. That is a touchdown. So we are halfway to becoming the backup, but we still need a lot to go our way. And I'm rolling out thrown on the run where Gibbs brings this one into the 10. I think in order to actually win though, we're going to have to get some more touchdowns. So I'm going to go deep again. Come on, Scott Dallas, make the catch. And there's only a few plays left. The multiplier does go up for these, but unless they result all in touchdowns, we're probably not winning. What I've realized is we can come pretty close though. And if we play exceptionally well, we could get even more because I have made some mistakes, but we still have to get our overall up a little bit and it's another failed position battle. At the end of the day, things are still starting to look up and it's our first snow game where Central Michigan went out and beat us by 20. Now the coach trust I would have needed to earn the second string has gone down a ton and I feel like I made myself way too low of an overall. I'd love to get this Mr. Fire upgrade, but we're not going to have 8,000 and we might as well just jump into our final game because after this, there's like six practices and I am going to win the backup spot. I might not be able to play in any game but it would set us up nicely for next year. And my only goal in these position battles going forward is to just send up prayers and hope that we can rack up a ton of XP. It's not going to be easy to do whenever they give us quick slant plays and it's still dropped, but I'm sure I'll find a way around it as I've rolled out to this left side of the field and I'm going to take it all the way to the crib. That gets us 400 and if we scored a touchdown on every play, we would have enough. But that's just not realistic to expect because I had a bunch of bad plays in a row and we just can't get anything going. I went for deep shot after deep shot and it just did not pan out. We're going to get some 
XP. But this is going to go down as yet another failed positioning battle throughout this year. And I was hoping that it would go better. Maybe we could end it off with some big plays and that's straight to a safety. I feel like I'm letting you boys down by not being able to win the starting job, but I've given myself a really hard challenge and things are only gonna get more difficult from here. Well, I feel like I've hit the jackpot because flying high is here. It's only 3000 and it puts our overall up by three. So now we're within eight overalls of the backup quarterback and we could definitely win this next position battle. You know that I have to go with the deep shot on this first play as we're just gonna go up to Scott Davis and he is gonna drop it. Only 2,600 points. I know it's still a lot, but this is far more manageable than the 4,600 it was like three or four weeks ago. And we've cracked the code. As long as we continue to upgrade our player, these are gonna get easier and easier, but maybe we could end it here. Keaton David goes to the end zone and we just need 2,000 more coach trust. This is something that we could pull off. The deep post is open and that is going to be caught. I am so nervous now. This is an actual chance to pull this off. Come on, we have got to get this. Keaton David's open and he is going to drop it. We're about halfway through our plays now and you know what? We just have to trust Scott Dallas who's gotten us here and that's another catch from him. I've been surprised at how quick some of our receivers are but that's going to be another. I know that our cornerbacks are slow but I wasn't expecting them to be that slow and there's just five reps left. Surely we're going to be able to pull this one off. I'm going to scramble on this play because I didn't see anything I liked and come on we have got to get some separation with that corner route which we drop. Three plays left now. This is literally it. This is the run that we've needed. I feel like I messed up this one and I just panicked there. I didn't know what to do. I'm going to try and fit it over this window to Scott Dallas and he goes to the two but that's not enough. There's one rep left. We have to pick this up and that is going to be dropped. We had the backup job one there but now we're going to have to try and get it in these last few weeks and I'm really regretting starting my player at such a low overall. With Chick Magnet he is going to go up two more so that should make things easier and these stats keep getting better. All right this has got to be the one. We only need 2,200 but that was not a great start and they've already instantly gotten in pressure so I'm just going to scramble for as much as I can. We had a lot of touchdowns that we probably wouldn't normally have on that last run. That was literally the one that could have done it. But I have to be confident in my teammates to make the plays and get us there again. And that all starts with this being a good throw, but I couldn't get it out. You know that I want to go back to junior Scott Dallas if he's able to get open like he did here, but he hasn't been going for as big of gains on this one. And I'm going to wait for the route bounce. Come on, buddy, run deep. That's what we needed. And he dropped it. I feel like this could be a failed run. We had such a good attempt the last time, but this is going to be caught. And if he wouldn't have fallen over, that would have definitely gone for a lot more. I have to eventually get lucky though. Surely by the end of this video, I won't be just the third stringer. And with five reps left, I'm going to roll out, take the deep post and that's caught. All right. This is another manageable one. Man to man coverage though. Come on, Scott Dallas, just get by him. And if they don't give us much time, there's not much I can do. I have to hope that we can get the deep post here and they've gotten in pressure. I had to make the throw in time. All right. About 500 more with two reps left. That is not going to get open. And sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. That was kind of just a blind read. This one is not going to be caught. So once again, we have failed, but we have a couple more attempts before the end of the year. And you know what? We didn't finish last in our division either. So maybe this team has a pretty bright future if I could just take over at quarterback. To start this position battle, we have the play call that I like where I can throw it up to Scott Dallas and that is going to be on the money. So that's exactly what we needed. We already have almost 500 points and we just have to play it smart now. Seeing drops like that is so frustrating because we're going to need every last point in this situation. But at the end of the day, this is still much better than trying to get 4,000 and that's a pick. I had to risk throwing it up because that's what works out best for us. Scott Dallas again is going to get by that corner and the junior has single-handedly given me a chance to actually become the starter. The deep post is open and the safety is not getting back to it, but he somehow made a Superman dive and that's unfortunate. We almost had another touchdown. I really thought we had him, but at the end of the day, it's okay. Keaton David reels that in and we just need like 800 more points. This is very manageable. It's like one touchdown and a few big plays away. This is definitely going to help us and I have got to win this starting job. The corner route did not get open though and with a few reps left, I'd rather take a deep shot to the end zone than take the half back here and that's going to be knocked down. Almost caught though. That would have been insane if he brought that in. We could have used it so bad. I think I'm just going to have to run for it on this play because there's no way I was going to be able to set my feet and make a throw. So once again, we need about 500 with two reps left and the deep post is not going to be hit. That stings so much. I highly doubt we're going to be able to reach the end zone on this play unless I'm able to set my feet, throw it up, and it's just not enough. We're so close to becoming the backup and I think it's a lock if we can get one more good roll on an upgrade. We did is we're going to be able to boost our over all by three more, but now there's no more position battles available for me. It says, do you want to advance to next season? And I thought we had a couple more in us, but now we have to beat out a freshman who's a worse overall, but I guess it's all good. I didn't realize we improved this much in year one and that's a huge jump. So we're going to be able to go for the starting job pretty quickly. As a team, we've also improved to a 75 overall. And because of all the work I put in last year, I am starting season two competing for the backup spot where that's a good start. If you watched the first episode, there were practices like this where I had to get 
4,600 points, but now just 1,000 seems much more manageable, and I need to start completing some more passes, but I can't. I don't know what's happening, but I'm starting to really struggle, and our tight end is going to get open. I put that one perfectly on the money, so Evan Carter Jr. reeled that one in, and I just have to wait for another player to get open. I keep forgetting I'm not the fastest, but I am able to run it to like the 15, and midway through practice, I'm halfway to where I need to be to win this position battle, but it's dropped, and Jay Stun the second is starting to really frustrate me, so we're going over to Scott Dallas. He's a senior this year, so it's the last season that I'm going to be able to throw the ball to him, and currently, I've been throwing the ball to the other team, so with a few reps left, I still need to get more points, and I'm just going to simply do it with my legs. Just 150 with two reps left, nothing too difficult. We should be able to hit this deep post, but the game's saying I need to complete another pass, and that is what I'm going to do to Scott Dallas. I should have had no trouble winning this position battle after what we went through last year, and it feels so good to finally be the backup. My job's not done, though, because I want to make sure that I become the starter, and Colton Reynolds is only going to hold that position for so long. I might even step onto the field for the first time in this game, because Penn State's playing at our place for whatever reason, and it was a blowout, but I never got an opportunity, so I still haven't put up a single collegiate stat, and I don't think I'm going to have any issues in practice versus this defense. Even though it's in the rain, the worst thing I'm going to deal with is players dropping the ball, and surprisingly, I haven't experienced it yet, but I am expecting it to happen. With 18 reps left, I do want to try to throw up a deep prayer to Scott Dallas, and that was on the money, so you know that I'm already building up coach trust, and I'm also making sure I make the right decisions. I made so many mistakes as a freshman that caused me to not be the starter that now I'm not doing it. But as I say that, I've thrown my first pick, and I have to start over with Coach Trust. So that's not the best thing in the world, but we're going to hit this deep post, and Dalen Maurice is going to reel it in. I don't think I'm going to show as much in practice this year as I did last season, but that ball was thrown right to James. It wasn't meant to go to him, and I got bailed out in that situation. But ever since this practice got off to a good start, I've been struggling, and it continues. Interception after interception is not a good look for me at this point in my career, and I still have to upgrade my player a ton, so I need to be racking up the XP as well, which we do here. At the end of the day, I am closing in on 4,000, so I should have a big upgrade coming soon, and Jay Stun the second's gonna take it to the house. So the sophomore receiver finally did something right, but I'm still far away from challenging for the starting spot. As for potential upgrades, there's none on here that are worth me spending coach points, and maybe I'll get an opportunity versus my favorite team. I get to be on the field to hold the kicker's balls here, and we're losing by so much, but that's the only time I've seen the field. We did force the fumble here, so I was hoping I'd be out there, but it's still Colton Reynolds, and on third and 10, he actually looks good finding Evan Carter Jr. It's starting to hit me that my coach might not like me, but I'm coming for that starting job anyway, and it shouldn't be hard since these stats are not good. I'm also going to get the upgrade that I really wanted as this is going to boost me up to a 71 overall, so I only need 200 coach trust to earn a position battle, and as long as I don't turn the ball over in this practice, that won't be that difficult to get to, but it hurts I took a sack there, and I've simply got to lock in because I want to make sure I become the starter Jace on the second goes to the three, so that's going to make up for my mistake, and if I don't see anything that could get open, I'm just going to scramble to this left side of the field. I've been doing my best to get the ball out as quick as possible, and Dalen Maurice drops it. So he's been very frustrating to throw it to, but I have some other good receivers, and it just hurts whenever I throw an inaccurate ball. They've also gotten in pressure immediately, but somehow our tight end was able to reel that one in, and with the comeback route, I'm off target. You're probably wondering if I'm anywhere near what I need for Coach Trust to get a position battle, and with throws like this, I think I am as Evan Carter goes to the five, but it turns out I still need like 25 more, and I'm going to take this wheel route. This could be it. That's going to go for a lot. But Dalen Maurice did fall over. So I think I'm going to need to complete one more pass and this should do it for us. Next week, I'm going to have a chance to become the starter. But first, I have to watch us take on Vanderbilt and the weather's not good for this one. That might give us a chance of winning. And once again, I had to hold for this kick. So I'm contributing even if it's not with me taking snaps at quarterback. And we actually have a lead going into the half. With about a minute left though, we do find ourselves trailing by three points to Vanderbilt. And all I can do is watch from the sidelines where Colton Reynolds goes over to his flat and Gibbs is going to take it into the end zone. Calvin Gibbs puts us up by four and our defense has stepped up as they have forced two sacks in a row and they're going to get a third. It probably isn't good that we're about to beat Vanderbilt though because that might hurt my chances of becoming the starter and I'm glad to see a position battle still available. I had to attempt the impossible as a freshman and get like 4,600 points in these so getting a thousand is nothing and all it took was me improving my overall but I had no time there. That could have been a big play. It's why I roll out almost instantly on almost all of these. That's a good throw and I have taken a lot of deep shots to Scott Dallas but again they're getting in pressure almost instantly so I need to make sure I get this ball out a bit quicker and that's picked. As the reps dwindle down I am a little bit intimidated because of how quick they're generating pressure and my defense must not want me to become the starter because they've been playing so well against us. I don't think I'm going to make it happen this week unless we can pull something off like this where I'm going to go deep and it's dropped. That is unfortunate because I wanted my first start to be against our rivals Western Kentucky so I'm really trying to do it but Jace done the second just dropped that ball and I keep going for these deep shots that they're all over. With three reps left, it's going to be very hard to make this a reality, but maybe we can. And we just
just need multiple big completions in a row. There's only one route I can take here and they guarded it. I'm going to have to go back to the same receiver because again, unless I score a touchdown, it's not happening and we don't. So I failed to take the starting job and I hate that I don't get to play in this game. We're honestly losing so badly that you'd assume they'd put me the backup out there as they're going to almost get another pick. And finally, with a minute and a half left, I have my opportunity where I am off target. That's not a good start and I can't make hot routes to any of these receivers. So I have to make sure that I keep that in mind. I'm playing with backups, but I found tight end Bo James there and nobody's getting open versus this man-to-man -man coverage. So that's a sack. I was just inches away from escaping the pocket, but apparently that was enough to trip me up. And here on second and 16, I'm just going to feed it to Malachi Harris. Now they have me hitting the halfback screen. So it's not a hard read to make, but that was the extent of the first minutes I'd ever get. And I lost coach trust. So next week I have to earn another position battle. It's a good thing that we're going into a buy because I'm frustrated and I got to get my coach trust out. I literally have no time back there. It's like my team doesn't want to see me succeed. I'm not sure what I should be doing. And I'm honestly intimidated facing off against this defense. So I've just been running for my life to try and put up coach trust. It's kind of worked, but at the same time, I still need a lot more and those drops are not helping. I just want to challenge for the starting job again. I had no idea that it was going to be this difficult. I already went through my entire freshman year without getting any playing time. So I don't want to go through that experience again. And evidently I just haven't put up much coach trust in this practice, which is frustrating, but we need more. Unless I can throw for like a touchdown or something, I don't think I'm going to have enough, but that looks like it could be it. And why did Scott Dallas fall over? Come on, we just have to get a little bit more and Jay Stun the second makes the catch. So my hopes are high. They've sent in a blitz and I probably could have taken the tight end with that route, but I was scared to stand in the pocket. So I just ran. At the end of the day, I did get enough. So I have earned another position battle and there's a lot of upgrades I could take beforehand, but none of them improve my speed. So I don't think I'm going to do it. The acceleration one's going to be hard to pass up on though. So I'm still going to think about it. And in this position battle, my only goal is to make sure I become the starter. I'm going to have to take our flat Devin Carter Jr. The tight end. And that just doesn't get us many points. The only way to have success in these is to make the deep plays. So I'm going to go for some big reads like this. And that's where he makes the catch. As you can see, we are three tenths of the way there and our deep post is open to Jace on the second. So I've been pleasantly surprised that he's actually been catching the ball and I am not going to outrun our defensive lineman, but maybe I am. That gets us a bit. I could have sworn that that wasn't going to end well for us, but it looks like that route does get open and Dalen Maurice is starting to drive me crazy. Please make this catch, buddy. With just those two alone, I'd probably be at about a thousand right now, but instead I'm struggling and I don't think I'm going to win it. After going through the stuff I went through as a freshman, I can't believe I'm about to lose another position battle, but I have to make something happen here and Scott Dallas is the perfect player. Me and him think on the same page and it looks like they've sent a blitz, but it's not going to matter. I had Maurice, which is not the guy I should be trying to feed the ball to. Here is the last rep of practice and I'm off target. We should have definitely won that there, but because we didn't, I have to start Matt conference play on the bench and it looks like we're taking on Buffalo. At the end of the first quarter, it's zero to zero, but to open up the second, I get to hold the kicker's balls again and we might win this first game. The team's playing well and our defense has given up zero points. So to my surprise, it's 20 to zero and I've gotten to be out there on the field more than I thought I would. I know I didn't put up any quarterback stats, but I love the fact that we could go undefeated and Mac play and make the conference championship. So I just need to earn the starting job now and none of these are going to be some good long-term boosts. I was so locked in at the end of my freshman year because I wanted to win the job and now I have a chance to, but I'm just off target. So I don't understand what's up with all the struggling. We had to get so many more points and just a thousand should not be this difficult, but I feel like nothing's going the way that I need it to. And maybe this is where we finally complete a pass. It was about time I was able to hook up with one of my receivers and now I'm going to have the tight end up the scene. So the four vertical play call is perfect. And that is going to be a deep bomb. This is the one we're finally having a good practice. I'm going with another deep bomb. Why not? This could be the end of it all, but that did not result in a catch. And I'm just going to have to roll out here, see if anybody gets open. And you know what? I saw Calvin Gibbs in the side of my eye and we're just one or two more passes away from this all being done where that isn't held on to. So it's unfortunate to see, but now we're just going to hit done for that one. And it turns out that was not enough yardage. So we're going to take this slant and he holds on again. I can finally say that we have won the position battle. It is all over and I'm going to be the starter for NKU. I've been waiting on this moment for a season and a half, but this is still just the start of my career. And I hope we can take down Kent State. This is the first start in my career. And I think I'm going to open us up with a big play as I'm going to find tight end Evan Carter Jr. So I'm loving how things are looking so far for the Norse. Calvin Gibbs goes nowhere though. And on second and 12, it looks like they're going with man-to-man -man coverage. So we're going to have Scott Dallas. It's very important that I don't make any mistakes in this one. And I've stared down the deep route for too long. So that one was definitely on me. I had plenty of time back there, but I don't this time. And since they got in some instant pressure, it is third and 33. There's no way we pick this up. I'm also set to lose my starting job with negative 70 coach trust right now, but Calvin Gibbs gets a big gain. And with a read option run, I guess I'm going to have to keep it in my hands, but it's going to be hard to get around all these defenders. I must have gotten hurt because on third and two, the backup is out there on the field 
taking my spot. And that's so frustrating because he's probably trying to become the starter again, and I'm just going to have to step up to midfield. It's nice that we have a lead, but I want to throw for touchdowns, and Calvin Gibbs is going to take this one for 10. That was a big play for us, so I want to run it back, but they were all over me this time around, and I'm not going to go down with either of those. I broke two tackles, and I'm about to get hurt. I did not learn my lesson from the first quarter, and on the second and five, that will be brought in by Robbins. So we have nine first downs to Kent State zero, and I'm just going to continue to make the smart read. It's very important that I don't get benched after this performance. I've earned coach trust, and after after taking those sacks early on, I'm getting pretty close to being back into the positives, but I'd love to throw for a touchdown to finish off this drive, and that's caught. I can always lean on tight end Evan Carter Jr. to bring it in, and then we got a punt return for a touchdown. So with 34 seconds left in the half of my very first start, we're up 21 to 0, and we're just going to play this passively to take it to the end of the second quarter. However, to open up the second half, Kent State returned the opening kickoff for a touchdown, so now that's two returns in just one game, and it's on me to lead my team back down the field to get us some more points, but all of a sudden, it's third and 10. We're going with the wide receiver screen and Jay Stun the second isn't going to make it there. My defense would hold it down though because by the time that we have the ball back we're still up by 14 and I'm very happy with how this first game's gone for us. I'm going to try to fit this into that window over Devin Carter but I'm experiencing a lot of drops from my teammates and he can't let that happen again. Remember my goal in this series is to win a Heisman Trophy and a national championship with Northern Kentucky and I'm not sure if that's going to be possible with this roster but we're going to do our best. I think for my sophomore year what's most important is that I keep the starting job number Number one, and that we make a bowl game as well, so that's going to be our two goals, but I feel like I can play things pretty smart. And even on the hardest difficulty, I'm not having many issues tearing apart this Kent State defense, but they are a 68 overall. They're the easiest max school, but that's what makes them great for a debut, is I'm going to step up to get the first down, go down at the five, but I'm laying there holding my chest injured. And I haven't been put back out there until the fourth quarter, where I could still get a touchdown, but that was marked a little bit short, so we're going to have to do it on this play, and that's dropped. I feel like we need to run it back, because I don't want to hand it off, and it looks like I am going to have somebody open. So Bo James gets me my second career touchdown pass ever, and this was a great game for my first start. You can't ask for much more than that, because we're already halfway to making a bowl, and I even won player of the game, so I'm going to be able to upgrade myself a ton hopefully. It looks like I have about 8,000 XP, and there's a lot of different ones I could take, but I think we're just going to go with hold the front door for now. It's also important to note that I'm still going to be grinding away in practice mode even if I don't show as many plays now, because I need to build up my coach trust, and this is the only way for me to get XP, which in turn will also allow me to upgrade my player even farther. Now an annoying issue that I'm still dealing with is our receivers just can't seem to catch and there's another. That was literally a perfect example as I was saying it and Dalen Maurice is driving me crazy. That is another one from him. I might as well just roll around and try to scramble instead. It's honestly been a terrible practice and that was almost intercepted but Jay Stun the second somehow slipped out of there. So I'm honestly just thankful that I haven't lost my starting job yet but I can't act like I've gained any more trust from my coach either because I'm just going to take a sack and that means we're going back to almost zero. I'm not very proud about this practice, but at the end of the day, I'm still the starter. And what's important is how we do against the Red Hawks, because the winner of this is going to have the number one spot in our division. This is the most important game of my career so far if I do want to make the MAC championship this year, and I'm opening it up right by finding Dalen Maurice, who's streaking down the sideline, and he is gone. Normally, he cannot hold onto a catch to save his life, but it is already 7-0, to and I cannot believe that we actually have a lead this early on against Miami. Now, that drop really hurts me, because it could stall out this drive, but we'll see what happens on third and nine, and I'm just going to take the hitch where Dalen Maurice isn't going to get enough. Our defense must be doing something right, though, because they've already forced another stop against the Red Hawks, and we'll see what Calvin Gibbs can do with this handoff on the halfback draw, but he went nowhere, so it is third and four, and I'm just going to take my hitch to Jay Stun the second. What's cool about him and a lot of the guys on this offense is he's only a sophomore, so he's going to be around for a while. I have to go for the deep shot over the defense, but it almost led to me throwing an interception, and now my coach wants me to keep it on the ground where Calvin Gibbs goes nowhere. Even though he's like 6'3", he doesn't look the best, and I'm clearly not happy about that third down play call. Our kick return units also let me down, because apparently they fumbled the kickoff after the Red Hawks scored, which allowed them to get two touchdowns in a row. So all of a sudden, we find ourselves down by seven to the Red Hawks, and we are just crumbling. This is the most important game of our season, and we aren't going anywhere on this play. So Miami, Ohio is going to follow that drive up with another touchdown, and to end the half, we have to get some more points. They are pressing Jay Stun the second, though, so I'm going to try to roll it out and throw it up to him. That would be very risky to take. I don't want to turn the ball over. So I had to play it smart and I like to get out of the pocket a lot of the time because I'm only 5'9 and I struggle to throw it over those offensive linemen. It looks like they have a corner blitz coming off of that left side, but that's fine. I'm going to find Brown up the middle. And why is our coach calling a timeout? That makes no sense. We need to burn clock, but he called another after he forced me to hand it off and there's a touchdown. Dalen Maurice now has his second of the day. And after Miami, Ohio opened up the third quarter by getting a field goal.
ball. We're going to have the ball, but we're down by 10, and we got to start putting up some points quick against the Red Hawks. I feel like I'm doing better in this quarterback road to glory compared to most of them because I'm used to turning the ball over like 50 times, and I'm not making those same mistakes anymore, which is weird because this is a very realistic one with my overall being low, and that's a laser. Now with the read option, I'm going to get to keep it in my hands, and I wish we were able to block for a bit longer, but I'm clearly not going to be a great scrambler versus these athletes, and that was so off target. They cannot hold us on this third and five because then we're going to be forced to take a field goal. They've also sent in a blitz, and I'm just running for it myself, but I won't make it, and I'm also having a hard time getting up, so it's fourth and three where I have to watch it from the sidelines. Colton Reynolds steps up, and Calvin Gibbs is not going to make it there. By the time I'm back out there, we're still down by 10, and there's only two minutes remaining in this one, so it's going to be hard to come away with the win, but maybe we can pick some stuff up, and I really hate this third down play call, which they're blowing up. Being able to change the plays would be nice. We somehow have to convert on fourth and 14, and that was almost picked, but I had to try to get us past the marker, and it looks like we did use our three timeouts to get a stop, but being down by 10 with 35 seconds left, that doesn't give me much hope, and I've got to work on getting the ball out just a little bit quicker. I felt like I had a pretty good day, but this is the final play of it, and I'm just going to be smart, take that over to Marks, and that's going to help my stats. It was always going to be hard to take down Miami, Ohio, and I feel like I did pretty well, but it still hurts to see us lose at home, and this stat line gets me 2,000 more XP. I gotta say, Dalen Maurice definitely carries, so maybe I'll start trusting him a little bit more during practice, but of course, the second I do that, he just drops the ball, and this could be an interception, which would really hurt my coach trust. I have got to be a little bit smarter, and I want to make sure I get enough XP so I can upgrade my player at least two more times, which is why I'm thrilled to say that this practice has gone pretty well, even if I have had to run for my life like this, and a lot of the passing plays that I've been forced to run just haven't gone for much. With a couple of reps left, I am going to try to get one or two more big plays, and it looks like it's going to come on the ground again, where I'm just going to juke and then go down. So I've also earned a good bit of coach trust, and that's going to beat the man-to-man -man coverage. But I'm still missing a lot of passes, and that's why I'd love to upgrade my throw accuracy, but none of these things allow us to do that, and this was a terrible draw. We're actually favored to win our next matchup, but that's because we're playing Eastern Michigan, who hasn't won a game, and I better not mess things up here. I'm playing on a gray field for the first time in my career, where I've already seen somebody get in, so I'm just gonna have to evade the pressure, and that's gonna go for a first down plus more. I even put a defender in a spin cycle, so my confidence is through the roof right now, and this one's simply gonna go over to Calvin Gibbs, where he didn't get the blocks that he needed, but he's still gonna be able to pick up 15. Later, on the second and 12, I'm hoping Dalen Maurice can create enough separation, and I put that ball in the right place. So we're flying down the field, and we're just one pass away from a touchdown. Eastern Michigan is 0-7, so theoretically, this should be my best game yet with Scott Dallas holding on. And I don't think things could be going any better for me, but I am gonna have to step up on this play, and I just have to get a block here, which is gonna allow me to get 15. I know I started my career as the worst quarterback in the country, but it sure doesn't feel like it, as I'm able to complete deep passes like this, and I really hope that Calvin Gibbs isn't able to get in with this carry, because I want the touchdown for myself, where I'm just gonna keep it, and we could not get our block held. But it's not gonna matter, as I'm gonna fight my way in anyway. If we could get another touchdown on this drive, this one's gonna be quickly getting out of hand, and Dalen Maurice is open with that beautiful route he's run multiple times now, and he goes down. But not before getting us inside the Eagles red zone, and with some of these blocks, I'm able to just step up and run for more. Now that we're down on the goal line, we really don't need that much more. I just gotta thread the needle here. But Scott Dallas lets me down, and I'm gonna have to hope for the best on the next one. I'm not gonna be happy if all I get out of this drive is a field goal, so I'm gonna have to extend the play and then find our tight end. It honestly doesn't even feel like I'm playing on a hard difficulty because of how well I'm doing. That is another good throw. And even when it's on Heisman, whenever you're facing off against an 0-7 team, you shouldn't be struggling much. This is a perfect chance to get back to being 500, and that would then allow us to probably make a bowl. But we're also probably still in the running for winning the MAC championship as well. And I have liked what I've seen so far, but this play goes bad, and they tacked on a penalty as well. It looks like we're gonna have to settle for a field goal on this drive, but that still gives us a three possession lead. And I think I'm gonna rely on Dalen Maurice to get open here where he did not. I'm perfectly fine with that though, because we're playing really well. And this is only in my sophomore season where I have plenty of more time to upgrade my player, so we could get even better. I think the biggest issue that I'm gonna run into in the future is whenever we face off against better teams. And coach wants me to just hand this one off so we can take it to the half. But Eastern Michigan would score pretty quickly, which gets it back within 10 points, and we still have 34 seconds. I've already thrown for over 260 yards in this half, but he doesn't want me to stop. And this is by far the best my stats have ever looked, but they are gonna intercept us. Our wide receiver didn't create any separation there. So all of a sudden my stats don't look good. And we've choked because the Eagles have it back within just three points. I got a little bit too confident and cocky, and that's gonna hurt us as I'm gonna pitch it to the side, and that's gonna be a fumble. So my coach trust keeps going down. And I honestly don't know what I was thinking here, but we're just lucky that the ball rolled all the way out of bounds. I've gotten a little bit frazzled, and I don't think we're gonna pick up this third down, but we 
we might have a chance here, and we're very fortunate that our defense was able to stop Eastern Michigan on their next drive. I can only play well for so long before I go back to making mistakes, and on this third and four, Scott Dallas is going to get just enough, which is honestly a big deal with a little bit of play action. I'm hoping I'm going to have the wheel route to him on the next one, and that is actually Evan Carter Jr., our tight end. If I'm watching this next play from the sidelines, though, I must have gotten injured whenever I got that ball out, so I'm not going to get credit for another touchdown, and I wouldn't get back out there until there's only a few minutes remaining. At this point, we are up by seven, but that's still only a one possession lead, and they almost picked it, so I've got to get that ball out quicker, but this third and eight halfback screen's dropped, and they're about to tie it up with a touchdown. I didn't think we would be in this situation, but now it's my time to clutch up and lead my team down the field, so that's a pretty solid start, and they're not going with man-to-man -man coverage. I'm very lucky that guy got tripped up, and I just need to get some blocks from my wide receivers. I still have more to go, and I need to go down now. I was not willing to risk fumbling in that situation, but this is some odd play calling, and to be honest, I'm gonna run the clock down as far as I can before threading this needle over the Dalen Maurice, so I was content with us taking a field goal, but I thread the needle for the game-winning touchdown anyway, and that's the exact result that I was looking for. Outside of my dumb mistakes, I played pretty well, as I almost had 500 total yards of offense myself, and I feel like this is a much-deserved bye week, where I was hoping to upgrade my player, but all of these boosts are just for one game. As for my coach trust, it's only halfway there, but I am getting closer to being able to flip play calls, and eventually down the line, you'll see stuff like being able to use hot routes, so that's why it's extremely important that I continue to play through all these practices and don't make mistakes. One of my favorite plays they always seem to call is this bubble screen play where I know that I'm gonna have Scott Dallas open, and touchdowns like that help me tremendously, but I have no time. It's like every time I do something right, then I make mistake after mistake, there's another, and I can confidently say that I am never taking that C route again because it hasn't worked in practice or in game. But one of them that does is this wheel route play where he is wide open in the end zone and that is a touchdown. By the end of the practice, it was one of my best ones yet. And of these last four games, we just have to win two of them if we want to make a bowl. When it comes to winning the MAC conference, Miami, Ohio still needs to lose twice. And I feel like the only player upgrade I've been taking throughout my career is this deep ball one. I mean, it's gotten me up to a 77 overall and I'm able to earn coach trust a lot easier. But what I'm wondering is if I'm able to take down Western Michigan. And for my first play of the day, I get to mix in the play action where I just get to roll out and then look over to Jay Stun the second for a big game. By the way, I know this stadium's supposed to be on my old college's campus, but that does not look like it because Northern Kentucky was the opposite with a very modern look to it. And there's no chance that they ever get a football team, but they really do need to add one because it would be sick. So far, I haven't had any issues on this first drive and I'm starting to get really good at stepping up in the pocket and taking whatever they're gonna give me. But coach doesn't want the ball in my hands on this play as I give it to Gibbs. And I have not been very impressed with Calvin Gibbs with what I've seen from him so far. But I definitely messed up there, not taking my check downs and getting sacked instead. So that drive's gonna stall out and we're gonna have to settle for a field goal. Fortunately, our defense can't be the worst in the world because they've already gotten me the ball back. And since I can't call hot routes or anything, there's not much that I can do on third and 17, which means the next time I have the ball in my hands, we're gonna be trailing to Western Michigan, losing by four, but we move the chains on third down. And I just noticed that stadium sign over in the left-hand corner says high school on it, but we're gonna ignore it. This is a college-level team trying to compete in the MAC conference where this run goes absolutely nowhere. And on a third and 20 with a few minutes left in the half, there's no chance that we convert it. Our defense has gotten it back for me pretty quick though, and I am not gonna take that C route. Instead, I'm gonna try to scramble because that's a better chance of working. And I would love to get a touchdown before the half so we are not losing to Western Michigan, but that's a bad throw. I really wanna make a bowl with NKU and we play a ranked school next. So this is definitely one that we have to come out on top of. And because I didn't set my feet, it was off target. And then Western Michigan would score another touchdown on our defense. It is a shame that it is 14 to three right now. And I'm terrified of taking one of these verticals because I feel like I'm gonna throw a pick. But it turned out to be worth the risk and I'll continue to feed Evan Carter Jr. My coach is gonna have to come up with some better plays down here on the goal line though. I don't like this one and Dalen Maurice is trying his best, but it was all for nothing. So now we're keeping it on the ground and that didn't work too well either. I think slants on third and goal should work though. And that is going to be picked. So I got baited and that was not a great way to end that first half. As my career goes on, I'm definitely gonna wanna throw less and less interceptions. I think I've already thrown three. So I might be averaging one a game and I'm never gonna win a Heisman Trophy doing that. I'm also gonna struggle to earn coach trust because every single time I lose like 130. So I'm very disappointed in myself for ending the second quarter in that way. And after getting stopped there, we have the ball back with a few minutes left in the third quarter. And you know what? I'm just gonna roll out and find Dalen Maurice with the route bounce where he is able to get open. And I'm not sure if that defender is gonna catch him or not, but he's gonna make it pretty far down the field. This is my chance to redeem myself. I can't throw another pick down on the goal line, but it's impossible to if I have zero time to get a throw out. And are you kidding me? I had the easiest touchdown in the world, but that ball was put way too far behind him. And whatever I do, I cannot force it here, but I'd really like a touchdown. So the fact that that ball was dropped really irritates me.
hates me. My defense did get another stop though, so maybe this is the drive where we tie it up. And my coach wants me to let Calvin Gibbs go to work, but he's not doing a very good job of that until this play where he fights for the first. These C routes never seem to work, so I am terrified of taking one on this play. And it's right back to the counter run where Calvin Gibbs gets a couple. This is a pretty massive third and five that we have got to pick up, and I'm going to take our running back, but I couldn't throw over my line, so I am just fortunate to have another chance with this much time left, and that was not meant to go to Dunn. It was such an inaccurate throw, so we honestly got bailed out hard, and they've given me three straight screen plays in a row. So we got stopped, but our defense got another stop as well, so we have the ball back with two minutes left. So this is where I need to go to work, but they're running man-to-man -man coverage on these C routes, and those always get jumped. Now it's third and ten. Our tight end was open, but if I threw that, there was a chance the linebacker picked it. So it's honestly best if I just scramble instead, and I want to make sure I make the smart read on each play. One of the issues we might run into is we're also going to need to get the two-point conversion. So I'd like to score sooner rather than later since we still have all three of our timeouts. And we honestly might do that right here if I'm able to roll out and find somebody, which I'm going to do at the last second. Wide receiver Jalen Robbins has gotten us into the end zone. And this is honestly a pretty solid two-point conversion play where our slant is open, but it looks like defensively we just couldn't get a stop and they're going to kick a field goal. I'm not too happy about this result, but it simply took us too long to get things going offensively. So we're going to fall to four and five this year, and I'm about to go crazy during practice so I can prepare for these final few games. All we have to do is win two of them, and I would have led NKU to a ball. I just found Evan Carter Jr., who slipped off of that tackle, and he's gone. That's the type of stuff I need to see in practice if I'm going to keep getting my coach trust up. And you know what? I'm just going to throw the hot route on Jay Stun Jr., where he almost jumped it, but our defenders just aren't good enough. I am getting very lucky and getting multiple touchdowns I shouldn't, but that's what's going to make this one of my best practices this season as well. And look at Calvin Gibbs going all the way down to the five. I had no idea that I could perform like this in the rain, but I'm very happy with the amount of XP we earned, and I need to start spending it. I'm also pretty close to becoming a veteran starter, but we need these skill upgrades to actually be good, and I cannot afford first string winner. That would be a lot of XP, but I can do hold the front door while also doing crow hop, which is going to increase my acceleration, and I think I have to do marathon just to increase my injury and stamina, which means I spent a lot, but I'm an 80 overall, and it would be very hard to lose my starting job at this point. Now, we might not have a shot at winning the MAC championship, but we could beat a top 25 team, and Toledo's only lost at Iowa State and Central Michigan, so I'm not shocked that they're favored, and they're one of the highest overall teams we've had to face. This is the hardest game I've ever had to start in because our opponent's a top 25 team, but I would love to upset Toledo here at home in front of our small, small home crowd. And things have been going pretty well so far, but they boxed up that bubble screen, and I'm gonna fumble it in the process. That is not good for my coach, trust, but they did go with man-to-man -man coverage, and I'm just too short to throw a pass. So it was tipped at the line of scrimmage, making this a third and 19. They've gotten in pressure, and we had something that's straight to Bowers. We honestly didn't have anything there. I thought I would just try to force it in there anyway. And because of my stupidity, the Rockets are already up 14-0. to I have not looked very impressive in this matchup, and I just have to make the smart read on this one. But I am ready to bounce back and prove that I can step up in this game, and that's a great throw. The issue is Jay Stun the second can't hold onto the ball, so at least I'm able to run for this. And on third and two, we only need a couple of yards, which we're gonna get. I'm really not happy with how we started this one, but it's my fault for turning it over so carelessly, and they almost got another pick. We really need them to run man-to-man -man coverage on third and 13, and that's what they did on Dalen Maurice. But it was marked as a fourth and inches, so we have got to pick this up, and our running back is open in the flat. So I'm not happy with Calvin Gibbs for dropping that one. But after they pinned us at the one, he's the guy that we have to lean on. And I really don't like when coach calls halfback screens on third down, because they just don't work. The next time we'd get the ball, it would also be inside the five. But my coach is putting the ball in my hands this time, and I'm not sure if that's going to go much better for us, but we do get the first down. I feel like for how bad our offense has been, we're really not that far behind, but surely somebody could have picked up number nine on this play. And I still have a lot of work to do with Northern Kentucky if I'm ever going to be able to win a championship with the Norse. We are going to get the first down though. That's a great play. And Dalen Maurice might actually be my favorite wide receiver, but only during games. And if it's not him, it's Evan Carter Jr. or tight end. Surprisingly, we're not out of this one and I'm going to try to get this to Scott Dallas, but I am not happy with the senior for dropping that one. So it's just right back to Dalen Maurice. He's going to need a breather at some point though. So he's not out there for this next play and their man-to-man -man coverage just stuck like glue. Well, this is a pretty big third and 10 and I'm going to be very risky, but I'm just throwing it straight to Dallas. So I'm glad he was able to reel it in and we're just a few yards away from the end zone, which means I should be able to take it in myself. That gets it back within seven, but they would score again before the end of the half and they've given us like 19 seconds to come up with our own points, which means I have to go with the four verticals. Look, the Scott Dallas and that goes inside the red zone. This is exactly what we need. Now I'm going to have to try to thread the needle, but that's probably not the smartest thing to do because no matter what, we needed to get it back within a possession. And right now it is just a seven point 
game between us and number 22 Toledo. I understand things didn't start in the best way possible, but we're starting to get into a better rhythm offensively. And surprisingly, we have more total yards than them, but I hate taking the C route. And even when we do it the right way, it's not held on to, which is annoying. My best bet with this next play might just be to roll out and take our vertical over here to our tight end because Evan Carter Jr. is wide open. And I know this started as a realistic road to glory, but there's no way I could do any of this in real life. We're getting into the end zone. Our defense would also get another stop on Toledo, which gives me a lot of hope that we can actually pull off this upset. And I feel like my sophomore year is going pretty well, even though we did just lose that one game to Western Michigan, because just the fact that we're competing to potentially play in a bowl game with Northern Kentucky is impressive. Those two plays didn't go that well, though, and they're going to stop us on third and 10. So they'd get the ball back and kick a field goal to go up 20 to 17. Then after that run, I'm going to lay on the ground hurt. So I've had to watch the end of one of the biggest games of the year from the sidelines, and Colton Reynolds just does not cut it. It is fourth and 25. We're not going to pick this up. So in the end, we're going to lose to Toledo. And I cannot believe I got hurt after upgrading my injury in stamina. I could have played a little bit better to start the game, but I feel like we only lost because I got injured. And in order to make a bowl, we have to win these final two matchups. That means I need to lock in during these practices so we don't go out there playing bad. But because I haven't upgraded my throw accuracy much, I'm still struggling and so is our offensive line. So I have to get it out quick. It would be really nice if I could just throw for a touchdown and that one is put right where it needs to be. So thankfully, I have earned some coach trust back and I'm going to continue with all this momentum. I'm like 100 away from being able to flip some plays and that's manageable to get into this practice if I don't make any mistakes and continue to make the right throws. With nine reps left, they've given me the wide receiver screen that goes absolutely nowhere. And by the time I'm seeing a real pass again, there's only five reps left. I'm just going to have to scramble on this one and that'll get us all the way to the red zone. As you can see, I'm getting very close, but we need just a little bit more coach trust and that's a drop. I swear, those always come at the worst time in this series. They've also gotten in pressure instantly, so I had to run. But we are going to need a deep completion. I know that this can get open versus man-to-man -man coverage, and I think I had our running back all along, but I decided I was just going to do it myself. So we're going to have to hope that's enough, and that is caught by Dalen Maurice. I think we got it. We're also going to be able to afford two upgrades, and there we go. I'm now a veteran starter, but now I want to unlock team captain. This is going to be a little ridiculous, but the only upgrade available is Chick Magnet, so my throw power goes up again. And I have 95 throw power with 79 throw accuracy. I literally started as a 45 overall, and now I feel like I'm in a position where I could carry this team. We can't lose this game because if we lose one more game this season, we're not going to make a bowl, so we have to take down Bowling Green. It's the first time that I've had to play in the snow, so we will see how that affects me. Dallas is going to get us the first, and with a new set of downs, I'm just going to roll out and scramble for as many yards as I'm able to get. We're wearing the camo jerseys today, so it's kind of hard to see our uniforms, and I'm hoping at some point one of our wide receivers can sneak by them because that's probably one of the only ways that we pick up this third and 16. I don't want to force it into any windows here. And because I took that sack, we'd get nothing out of that drive. Their man coverage looks like it's sticking like glue, but I am going to break that there. I need our offensive lineman to step up for a little bit of time, and I'm not going to complete the pass. I got to say, I'm not enjoying playing in the snow so far, but I'm sure I'll figure it out. And it is already third and 10 again, but our corner route was open. So I'm just relieved that our defense has forced a turnover and I have the ball inside the 30. We're back down to where we were earlier on. But now that it's third and short, we need a better play call than a halfback draw. And my coach thinks it's best if we just take our field goal. I don't think so, considering Bowling Green would get a touchdown after that, but we have the ball again, so it's all good. And this is my time to shine. If I want to make sure that we make a bowl game, it is all on me to step up in these moments. So I better lock in because how this season ends defines how the rest of my career will go. And I'm hoping to finish this drive off with a touchdown, but I take the sack. So it's going to be a lot harder to do that now. And I literally ran right into that one myself. At 5'9", I struggle to throw over this offensive line and I'm down again. So approaching halftime, we still only have three points, but maybe that can change here. I clearly need to start upgrading throw accuracy instead of throw power, but it looks like Scott Dallas was able to get wide open. And I love whenever coach calls four verticals because it is so much easier to move the ball, but they were all over in this situation. I'm going to have to break that tackle and just slide down. It also looks like my coach has dripped out, but I need him to make better decisions than this because we just ran a halfback draw and the time is ticking quickly off of the clock. I'm going to have to thread this needle and he stuck with it. He knew exactly where I wanted to go. I don't know why I made that decision, but I was determined to get points down inside the red zone and I'm going to have Scott Dallas again. Next year, my main goal is going to be to cut out the interceptions because I think I'm averaging like one a game, but I'm just going to step up because it was man-to-man -man coverage. I knew this side of the field was wide open and this needs to be the drive where we finally reach the end zone on them. I'll be ticked if we settle for another field goal. Gibbs gets us the first and I hate that I'm not able to call hot routes in this situation because I'd put slants out on the field, but apparently they were offside for that one and on second down, I go nowhere, which has also resulted in me getting hurt. Every time something important happens in this series, I have to watch it from the sidelines 
lines, which really hurts me, but we did get in and that was fumbled. You have got to be kidding me. Colton Reynolds just gave it right back to the Falcons, but he'd make up for it on his next drive and I want to be back out there. With four minutes left, I finally am, but it's super dark out there on the field. Where are the lights? And I guess that's what happens when you play in the MAC conference. You can't see who you're throwing to, but it's fine. I'll make the best out of this situation and on third and four, I didn't take the halfback screen because I wanted to make sure we picked it up instead. So I'm just glad to see that I didn't get injured because I was able to slide and it looks like they have me mixing in play action where that is open and we are going to pick up the first. This has been some pretty terrible conditions, but we're closing in on another touchdown and I'm just lucky that they didn't pick off that ball. I'm going to go for the deep post and that was open. Malachi Harris couldn't hang on though, so now it's third and 10 and please tell me we actually catch it. Where thankfully Bo James did and in the end, we're going to take down the Falcons. The weather definitely made it tough to get a result, but we still have a chance to make a bowl and my coach trust is in the negatives, so I have to make sure that I get it back up during this practice and Scott Dallas is going to open us up in the right way. Honestly, it's a bubble screen play, but I never take the bubble screen here. I always feed it to him and I'm starting to get into a groove where I can just throw laser after laser. So I should have no issues getting the coach trust back to where it needs to be. And I hope I can play this well in our final game of the regular season, because if we want to make a bowl, we're going to have to win that one. And this is a perfect throw over the middle. It's so unfortunate that I still have to deal with drops at this point in the series, but that's going to be expected. And maybe by the time I'm a senior, our receivers will have gotten better to where they no longer struggle to catch the football. But until that happens, I just have to continue to shrug it off and I'm going to be patient to take this slant, which is held onto. I feel like we are getting closer to being ready for our final game of the year. But then I see stupid stuff like that where I just can't throw over the offensive line and I just checked my coach trust, which is not looking as good as I thought it was. I am at negative 32 right now, which means I need two big plays back to back and I'm about to drop down a level. I cannot believe it, but that's what's going to happen unless this is a big running play and it's going to be very close. I'm not able to tell from this screen, but it looks like I'm no longer able to flip the plays. So before I hop into my final game of the year, I'm going to go through one more practice and Miami, Ohio was really good. This one won't be long because I'm pretty sure I can't exceed 1000 XP, but if I'm going to take sacks, then I'm going to be in this for a lot longer than I was hoping and I just have to avoid the pressure consistently. There's a reason that I always instantly roll out and come on. I'm literally trying to prepare myself for all these blitzes and I still can't do it. That's a good throw over to Scott Dallas though, but we have a lot of work to do and I can't lie. I'm not sure if I'm ready for this game against Ball State. I know I've worked so hard to become the starter, but I feel like it'll be a letdown if we don't make it to a bowl game as well. And all I need is like one more big play at this point. I think this will do it as long as it's held on to and it is. I can't exceed a thousand here. So there was no point in playing out the rest of that practice. And this is it. We are taking on Ball State at home and we're missing that first pass. Everything is on the line today because if we can't come out on top, I am not going to make a bowl during my sophomore year. They're about to get the sack on me. I'm trying to make a play, but instead I just fumbled it away. And on third nine, I'm taking that wheel route over to my favorite target, but they gave him a haircut while forcing him to drop that football. Our next drive starts inside the five, which is never a good thing, but my coach is trusting me to not take a safety on this third and six, and I am not going to pick up this first. It's a defensive stalemate though, as our defense has gotten us the ball back for another time in this game. So it would be amazing if I could ever complete my first pass and they are guarding all the hitch routes that I really want to take. So I'm just going to run around instead. This has not been an ideal way to open things up, but with a route bounce, I'm able to find Scott Dallas all the way down to the, like the 25 or 30. And that might be all it takes to get things going offensively, where now I'm going to take the drag. And I have got to grow during the offseason because he should not have played that football. At least we're able to move the chains and they are not falling for this halfback screen until maybe late. I've gotten it over to Calvin Gibbs and he is going to take it all the way. I've never been able to pull something off like that before, but we have the ball back now up by four. And my confidence is currently through the roof on this next play. Again, I've been very patient just taking these route bounces, but they played it. Now it's third and six. So you know, coach has to bring out the halfback draw, but we almost got it. And I wish we went for it, but it's all good because we'd get the ball back not even a minute later where I just pitched it over to Calvin Gibbs. And I've got to give credit to that man for being one of the main reasons that we're winning this game. But I just noticed that I don't have a passing touchdown, which means that my passing touchdown early on to him counted as a run instead and not a pass. I must have tossed it backwards or something, but that's just going to hurt my stat line. And I'm going to check it down to him on this to get us inside the red zone. But I do need to get greedy on this possession if I want to put up some good numbers and they are dropping everybody back. It's honestly pretty rare for our coach to ever call a running play, which I appreciate. And we have forced a fumble on the kickoff. So we have the ball back inside the red zone. Again, they're about to get the sack, but it is all good. I wanted to run down as much of the clock as I could anyway, and then laser it over the middle to Jace on the second. Going into the half, it's going to be 21 to three. And I feel like things could not be going much better than this for us. I'm going to eventually avoid the pressure that they were about to get in and then find our tight end down the field, extending the play. I'm a little scared of taking a 28 to three lead, but we aren't the Atlanta Falcons. We should be fine. And I feel like things are starting to really open up for
for me, but that is dropped. So now it's third and 10 where I need to take the corner route in order for us to pick this up. And maybe I'll try the hitch, but it's picked off and Ball State could get right back in it if I'm not able to hit stick this player. And I kind of did. I'm sad about it, but I did knock him out of bounds. And why do I always have to throw at least one interception? I mean, we should still be fine, but it's an 11 point game. And if we actually choked this after I mentioned us being like the Falcons, that'd be so embarrassing. I didn't even see Manly there. I've thrown another interception and I'm definitely choking for my team. They're also going to break free and can somebody just bring him down? I'd honestly say I was doing really well in this video compared to some of my other quarterback road to glories. But after those two turnovers, I'm going to have to take it back. And we're going into the fourth quarter only up eight. I need to just be smart here. I don't need to take anything deep, but I still do it anyway. And look at that. Dalen Maurice is setting a school record. I have force fed him the ball that much as our third receiver and slot receiver. So I feel like that's pretty impressive. And we're always going to take that corner route to tight end Evan Carter Jr. I know I've made a couple of mistakes here in the second half, but I'm making up for it now. And if that was ruled as a fumble, they would have definitely been gone to the house. Now we're just handing it off, setting up a third and inches where I'm just going to keep the rock and that'll take us to the three. For a split second, it looked like we were going to choke this game against Ball State, but now we're closing in on reaching the end zone and finally we do. Our defense would also stop them. So from here, we should be able to run out the rest of the clock with Calvin Gibbs fighting for as many yards as he can get. And you got to love the fact that we've actually made a bowl. I wasn't sure if it was going to be possible after we fell to four and six, but this is a big moment for my career. And I hope we don't get matched up against somebody that's super difficult. It's also nice to be a veteran starter again. And before I hop into a bowl game, I am going to play a couple of practices just to see how much XP I can earn for our player as that's a great pass. And this practice has gotten off to a great start, but I'm not going to show many of these plays as I'm able to just dominate. So I could spend this on numerous things, but the only thing I really like in this situation is upgrading our throw power. And I can't believe it's already maxed out at a 99 overall. Once I advance the week, there should be more upgrades available as well. And you might think I'd take this acceleration one, but suicide drills upgrades our throw accuracy and our acceleration. Now I would still like to get Tom Don't Jinx us as well, so it's a good thing there's another practice available, and this will just help us build up our coach trust, which we need since unfortunately we weren't able to make the MAC championship. As for our bowl projection, right now they have us facing off against Wyoming, but there's no telling if that'll stand, and I think we should review our season stats. Obviously, Dalen Maurice was wide receiver one, and then for myself at quarterback, I threw for almost 2,000 yards while I had two touchdowns to every one interception. That's not terrible, and I wasn't far behind Calvin Gibbs when it comes to rushing yards, so I'm really happy with the player that I'm becoming, and I just need to get 1,600 XP out of this practice so I can upgrade my acceleration even more. It is such a big deal to be able to escape the pocket, because right now, whenever my offensive line collapses, there's honestly not much I can do about it, but if I fix my acceleration, I can make plays out of it, and that's a good throw. Again, just like the last practice, I feel like at this point in the video, you don't need to see me dot up our defense, so I'll see you all at the end of it where we should be able to get at least 4,000 XP because we're already almost there. With a rep left, you'll see that we are well over 2,000. They got in a blitz on this play, but I've been able to roll out, throw it on the run, and Carter Jr. gets in. That was back-to-back -back great practices for me, and I know I said that I wanted to take this upgrade, but I think I'm going to risk it, advance to bowl season, and see what else is available. I'm hoping that one day I can be up there in the Heisman race, and there's a few different things I could take, but honestly, I'm not a big fan of any of these. I honestly might just start to save our XP as we go for becoming a team captain, and it turns out that Wyoming's actually ranked. It's time for me to take the field in my first ever bowl game where we're facing off against number 21 Wyoming, but I found Calvin Gibbs for six with my first pass, and I cannot believe that we got off to that good of a start, but they're also giving us Maurice, and he is not able to hold onto the ball the same way that our running back was able to. Now, I know the blitz is probably coming on this next play, so I'm gonna have the speed to roll out and then find Jay Stun the second to get us past midfield, and my confidence is through the roof now that I've been able to upgrade my player to an 89 overall, because I feel like I can make almost any pass in this game, and it'll be interesting to see what I can do at Northern Kentucky in these next two seasons. I think things will get easier as I continue to increase my speed, but I can't escape the pocket. And I thought we were about to cruise to an easy 14 to zero lead, but that might not be the case. I'm going to have a hard time finding the end zone on this third and 17. I honestly don't want to force it in there, but if I can run for it, that would be incredible. And it's probably best that the field goal unit is out there. I mean, our defense continues to step up, so I have nothing I could complain about. And on third and five, I'm hoping for man-to-man -man coverage where Evan Carter Jr. dropped it. That's unfortunate because I can normally rely on him, but our defense got another interception anyway. So with a few minutes left in this first half, we're up 10 to zero and we have the ball again, but it is all on Calvin Gibbs to pick up the first for us and he just goes backwards every time. Eventually, Wyoming was going to score, but at least it's only a field goal and I'm going to try to make this throw on the run where my number one target has let me down again and he didn't get open. I can't believe it, but I'm being forced to just hand it off on third and 10. So fortunately, at least we're starting the second half with the ball and maybe we can get things going again offensively as I spun that defender out, but I would much 
rather throw it than keep things on the ground, and I have to test out my 99 throw power. I think we have a touchdown here. I saw Maurice run right by everybody. So Dalen Maurice comes up huge for us, and the play action faked them out. Wyoming would get a field goal, but they're still behind by 11 points, and this is about the time where I normally get injured in one of these games, but I'm hoping that I can avoid it, and the halfback screen got boxed up. We need to pick up this third and 11, where I'm gonna try to do it with my legs, test out that new acceleration, and it's clear I need to focus on upgrading my speed, but our defense got another stop, so it's really not gonna matter. And going into the fourth, we're up by 11 still. My coach must really love this wide receiver screenplay, though, running it two times in a row, and Scott Dallas picks up the first. He stumbled like 10 yards down the field on that one, and we just continue to move the chains against them. So I have a feeling that we're about to take down a ranked team, and we just need to be smart down inside the red zone, where I can take the read option all the way to maybe the end zone if I keep going. I didn't quite have the speed to get the outside edge that I wanted to take, but coach wants me to get a quarterback draw going, and they are going to stop me quick. I was able to flip this toss to the other side of the field, which I thought was cool, but we lost yards, and I don't want to run a halfback screen here, so I might not take it and throw it straight to our tight end, hoping for the best, but that didn't work, so we have to settle for three again, and I'm just glad that our defense is going to hold on as this is fourth down, and there's no way that they picked it up. What a performance from them, as they're going to be one of the main reasons that we win the Arizona Bowl, and I can't believe I'm already having this much success in my career, but I feel like I'm putting Northern Kentucky on the map, and look at all of our fans that came out for this game. I still got two years left to continue to improve my player, but I've definitely already come a very long way, and I've got one final goal in this video to get my player to a 90 overall, because if you all remember two seasons ago, I started as a 45 overall, and if I can get up to a 90 by the end of this final practice, that would mean I've doubled my overall in just two years. That's gonna go for six, so I'm gonna play through one more, get my XP up as much as I can, and I gotta go for some more deep shots. It's also the final time that I'm gonna throw the ball to Scott Dallas, which makes me very sad, but I'm hopefully gonna be able to hit him on this deep post, which I did, and I'm starting to realize that every time I roll out, it gives me a better chance, but there's still a lot of mistakes that I'm making, as that shouldn't have been a pick, and maybe I should just call the season here, because I threw back-to-back -back ones, and we have enough XP. I'm gonna really need to lock in if I wanna ever become a team captain and move up the chains even farther, but at least for upgrades, I don't think I wanna take any of these. I wanna risk it by advancing a week, and I'm just gonna hope for one that would boost up my speed, and there was. It was a rarity level five, but I don't have enough points to actually afford it, and there's no more practices available, so if I would have finished off strong, I would have been able to max out my speed, and I've never seen this upgrade before, but that is insane. Well, I guess it's time to move on to my junior year, and between earning the starting job last season and also performing exceptionally well during practices after the training results boost, my player is up to a 93 overall, and my throw power is maxed out. Now, I saw a lot of comments on the last episode saying I needed to upgrade my awareness, because apparently my receivers won't drop it as much if I do, so we're gonna try to do that this season, and there's been some crazy upgrades available, but I can't afford them. That would have helped me achieve one of my two goals in my junior season, which is become a 99 overall, and the other is win the MAC conference, which could actually happen with these preseason projections. Due to hiring some new coordinators, our overall jumped up to an 86, and it might not be the highest overall in the conference, but it sure is close. We're just gonna get warmed up in this practice run with a touchdown, and then after we do that, I'm gonna hop into our first game of the season against Cincinnati. With one rep left, you'll see that I've gotten us over 10,000 total XP, so I'd say it went pretty well, as we just found Calvin Gibbs and he came away with it, so I'm curious if there's any good upgrades available, and I thought you were on fire or that blue and orange would be perfect, but it's only a one game boost. We're gonna save up our points and hop into this one, where playing against the Bearcats is a pretty big deal because they're just 10 minutes away from our college across the Ohio River, and I've already been able to find junior tight end Evan Carter Jr. for a nice game. One thing I'm gonna try to do more this season is take my check down since you all told me to, but because I did, this drive has stalled out and the halfback draw doesn't work. Our defense would get us the ball back pretty quickly though, and there's not many people open. So now we find ourselves on a second and 10 where I am just gonna have to try and escape the pocket and that's not happening. I'm trying to be very careful with my reads because I don't wanna throw many interceptions this year, but so far what I've been doing hasn't worked, so maybe I need to start forcing it deeper down the field. Here on second and inches, we're gonna let Malachi Harris take this jet sweep where he is gonna get us the first, and Dalen Maurice is gonna be on the end of this wide receiver screen, but he doesn't get much. My hope is during the off season, he was able to fix his drop issue. I'm about to take a sack, and with play calling like this, we're about to have our third drive stalled out, which is not good. It was a pretty rough first quarter, but maybe we can open up the second in the best of ways because I wanted to take that up the seam and I was not able to do so, but we're going to go with the deep post and that is brought in by Dalen Maurice. I'm telling you all, whenever I start taking those deep passes, I play 10 times better and that's a touchdown. So things are looking solid so far, but Cincinnati would respond back by getting onto the board for the first time and that's going to be brought in. Now we're going to have a read option play where I get to keep it on the ground, but I'm still not the quickest, so I don't get much. And here on third and three, it's a halfback draw, but it is not 
not going to go for the first. I should be happy that we're being aggressive going for it here, but it's not going to be in my hands, and Jace done the second, still picked it up. If we could just finish this drive off to end the first half, we would be in a great position. I'm going to find our tight end over the middle, but I think no matter what, we're going to give Cincinnati a ton of time to respond, and for whatever reason, my head coach keeps calling timeouts, but it's all good. We should have Evan Carter Jr. here, and with our tight end bringing it in, it is 14 to 3. Our defense would get a stop as well, so Northern Kentucky could be pretty good this season, but if I turn the ball over like that, maybe not. And I always make one bad read a game. Up to that point, I was playing almost perfectly, so I am pretty upset with myself. Now they're getting in pressure, and I'm gonna get it to Dalen. But he drops the pass, and I am terrified of taking this route on this play after I threw an interception there. Heisman mode always finds a way to humble you when you start doing really well. And Cincinnati opened up the third quarter by scoring a touchdown, so now we find ourselves trailing by three to the Bearcats. It's my fault that they were able to get back into it, so now I have to lead us down this field. And here on second and 12, it looks like they are not going to bite down at the drag, so we're just going to take it. I really need to get some more coach trust, though, so I can change up the play call whenever I don't like it. Because now it's fourth and one, we have to hand this off, and thankfully Calvin Gibbs is able to pick it up. I was not sure if our offensive line was actually going to hold there, but they must have improved a decent bit during the offseason, and the backup running back goes nowhere. This third and two play call also isn't the best, but it did end up working. So the drive has continued to stay alive, and if this is man-to-man -man coverage, none of these routes are going to be open, so I'm just going to have to take off and do it all myself. We are closing in on reaching the end zone. I can't make any stupid reads in this situation though, so I'm going to take off. And are you kidding me? I just lost the football, and if we don't get a stop on third and 12, we're in trouble. But thankfully, our defense did, so we are not out of it yet. And we just need one solid drive with a game-winning touchdown to end this game and get the win. It would be a huge result for Northern Kentucky since we weren't expected to come out on top of this one. I made a great throw on the run over to Calvin Gibbs, and I'm starting to want to escape the pocket quicker because I'm not sure how long our offensive line can hold for. But once again, Dalen Maurice is going to let me down. And on third and 11, I'm hoping for man-to-man -man coverage where Malachi Harris brings it in. How our season starts all comes down to this drive. And the only reason we're even in this situation is because I put us here. I didn't have a good half. So I was hoping for a better play call on third and five. The halfback screen might not get it for us and it's not going to. This is literally it here on fourth down. We're going to take our hitch and we pick it up. But I was terrified of doing that there and they get the instant sack. That's going to make it second and 17. There wasn't much I could do about it, but we're going to get a lot of it back. And I'm hoping we can hit Malachi Harris up the seam where he's going to break the press and take it into the end zone. Now it is simply on our defense to hold the Bearcats. But with that completion, they've already gotten to the 40 yard line and this is going to take them to midfield. They still have all three of their timeouts as well. So I'm afraid we're in a lot of trouble. That's going to be caught by Jackson and we need them to score super quick because they're definitely already in field goal range. It's unfortunate, but now they're just being smart, trying to run out the rest of the clock and they wouldn't get the two point conversion, but there's only 13 seconds on the clock. I'm going to use my 99 throw power to go deep and Malachi Harris catches it. We have one final shot at reaching the end zone and I just have to hope for the best here. We're going to go over to our tight end and that is going to be picked off. We are not going to get the win at Cincinnati and our fans are not happy about it, but I think we proved that we can put up a good fight with every team in the MAC this season and my stat line looks really good until you see it from this perspective where the two interceptions really sticks out. Now before we take on our in-state rivals and my favorite team, I think it's important that I try to get myself some more coach trust. So that's what I'm going to do here in practice, which is out in the rain, and I just got to complete it to Dalen Maurice. However, things would not go as well as I was hoping they would, and because of an interception I threw, I gained almost no coach trust. I did get us up to 14,000 XP though, and I'm just waiting for some better skill upgrades because I don't think either of those are worth it. It's time to play against my favorite team for the first time on the road at Kroger Field versus the Wildcats where I'm completing that pass, but they've already scored a touchdown and then missed the extra point because of the weather, so this could be a long game. And on second and 10, they just want me to hand it off to Calvin Gibbs, who picks up the first. Now that he's a junior, he is starting to get a little bit better, so that's a good sign of what's to come in the future. Our corner route didn't get open on this play, and I waited too long to try and roll out, so we have to pick this up, and we don't. Fortunately, our defense would hold the Wildcats, so we have it back down by six. And this first quarter's already flown by, where we have to figure out a way to pick up this third and 11, and that window is gonna work. I wasn't sure if Dalen Maurice would hold onto that ball or not, but I'm very glad he did, and Evan Carter Jr. has come away with this one. So all of a sudden, we find ourselves down on the Wildcats 25-yard line, and I just have to make the smart read. I get very nervous whenever I can sense that they're sending pressure, but I had plenty of time back there. And now my hope is that we're able to reach the end zone if our C route gets open, and it does, but it's dropped. Dalen Maurice is going to drive me crazy, and nobody got open versus their man-to-man -man coverage, so I had to take it on the ground, but it worked. And using my legs, we're going to take a one-point lead on Kentucky. It wouldn't last as they responded back, but I'm just happy that we're able to compete with my Wildcats. And I think that's a good sign that we're going to do very well in MAC 
conference play. I'm going to try to bomb them deep here, and that's a great throw. Dalen Maurice actually caught the ball, which I was not expecting, but they have scored again, leaving me 31 seconds left in this first half where I almost threw a pick. That is the exact reason why I don't like to take that seam route up the middle. And on third and 10, I'm probably not going to do it as they've just sent in a blitz and we're going to take it to the half. It's a good thing that we get the ball to start the second as well where Malachi Harris got tripped up. And now on second and six, I'm just going to wait in the pocket to see if something gets open, but I'm going to have to use my legs instead. I don't like that I have to hand it off on third down, but Calvin Gibbs gets it. And it is remarkable that our coach just doesn't feed him the ball. He only has two rushes in this game. We might have another deep play and that's put perfectly on the money. We are really starting to work it down the field on Kentucky. I got a couple of good blocks on this one and Calvin Gibbs is going to have to do something with this screen pass where it goes over to him and he picks up the first. We just need like eight more yards now and it looks like they've been faked out by the read option. So I rushed for another touchdown but they scored again and it's a good thing they didn't get the two point conversion so they're only up by five. Here on second and ten I'm hoping for man to man coverage but it's zone so I'm going to try to dot it up and I can't. But it's not my fault that ball was put exactly where it needed to be and I'm not sure if Jay Stun the second is going to get us the first but thankfully he did keeping this drive alive and now I'm going to have Evan Carter Jr. over there. The pressure is on going into the fourth quarter and we couldn't pull away in the end versus Cincinnati so I'm hoping that we're able to do it against Kentucky where Malachi Harris just fumbled it to Evan Carter Jr. but he picks it up and he takes it all the way. I've never seen something like that happen but with a two-point conversion we could find ourselves with a three-point lead and I think I have to do it with my legs. Our defense would then force an interception so we're in a fantastic position but the one thing I could not do there was take a sack and I just have to find Evan Carter Jr. who goes down to the three. All it took was our defense getting one stop and now we've been able to pull away. But it isn't over yet as Kentucky's going to kick a field goal here and it's on me to help us run out the clock but coach is calling passing plays instead of running ones. I guess that's a good thing is we're going to have to get this second and 12 and I'm going to have Dalen Maurice who comes away with it. But now the rest of this game's in the hands of Calvin Gibbs who gets five and all we need is one first down to seal the result against the Wildcats which we are going to get. It's honestly remarkable that we were able to come away with the upset and now I feel like we could take down any team but I'm going to have to play as well as I did in this one where I did enough to win my first Mac player of the week. That's going to get me up to 18,000 points and I wanted to save them but I have to upgrade my throw accuracy here so I'm getting very close to becoming a 99 overall and we have another rivalry game coming up but first I want to try to become a team captain by getting my coach trust up. Having the ability to call extra plays whenever my coach makes the wrong decision is literally game changing so we really need it and I'm going to do everything I can in my power during this practice to put up as many points as possible as we get a touchdown. And I wasn't sure if it'd even be possible to get as much coach trust as I need, but now I'm starting to have some hope. With 15 reps left, we're getting closer. But I've also had a lot of big plays in order for that to be a reality, and we're going for another where that DB stuck with him. I cannot believe I just threw an interception there, but I was hoping we could have had a touchdown and instead it didn't happen. So I'm sorry, boys, but no matter what I do in this practice, it won't be enough. I'd end up throwing another interception as well, so our coach trust is only at about 500, but Calvin Gibbs is going to take it to the end zone. And I think this is the most XP I've ever gotten from a practice. It's not going to help us in this regard, but as the weeks go on, I'm going to want to spend some more, and I'm just waiting for a good awareness upgrade. It's about time that we finally get to play at home now, but before I play out the rest of my career in this full movie, a word from today's video sponsor, Prize Picks. The greatest tournament of the year, March Madness, is about to start, so now's a perfect time to get Prize Picks if you don't have it already, and you can play in over 30 states, so there's a good chance yours is eligible. Anyways, if you don't already know what Prize Picks is, you simply pick two to six players and then hire or lower on their projections. But as you can see, I like to do smaller entries. And if you want some free cash to start out with on Prize Picks, code board or the first link in my description will double your initial deposit up to $100. Now it's time to take on Western Kentucky. And we are starting out with the ball where Calvin Gibbs is just going to get locked up here, but he broke the tackle. So he actually got a positive gain. And I really don't like whenever we have to run all those wide receiver and halfback screens. So I'm glad on third and one, I'm going to be able to actually make a read. And I'm just going to have Dalen Maurice over the middle of the field, taking it to the 40. I've never been able to take down our rivals Western Kentucky, but I've also never gotten a start against them either. So I'm hoping that this one can go as well as the Kentucky game did, but they've already gotten in pressure. And I tried to escape the pocket, but I wasn't quick enough. Now we have to feed it to Dalen again, which seems to be going pretty well for us. So I can't complain with how we've started this game off and Calvin Gibbs is fighting. He keeps getting better and better the older he gets. And we should be able to pick up this third and three where our tight end is open and that's down at the one. From here, we should be able to pretty simply just punch it in. But Calvin Gibbs messed that up so I'm going to get credit for the touchdown. Unfortunately, our defense wouldn't get a stop though, so it's 7-7 to when we get the ball back. And I absolutely love this play if they show us the right coverage, but they didn't, so I'm not going to have the deep route I wanted. This bubble screen makes me very nervous, but our tight end is going to be able to catch it and get us like 15 yards, so I still have yet to make a mistake in this game, but they're all over the run. And on 
second and 15 are hitch routes. Probably the only thing that's open, but McCray actually got the pick, and I didn't think he could play that. I cannot believe we just turned it over like that, and we've gotten the ball back inside our own five-yard line, which isn't good. We'd have to go the length of the field if we want to put up points here, and I'm terrified of taking those hitch routes now, but it worked out for us in that situation, and I just have to make sure that they don't have a player in a quarterback contain. I am going to try and scramble here, which is going to move the chains for us again, but if we're going to finish this drive with a touchdown, we still have a long way to go, and I cannot believe that Malachi Harris dropped that ball, but now we're going to go over to Dunn, and that was the right decision. I'm probably just going to step up in the pocket and try to scramble on this play, but they are all over me, and because of how hard I got hit, I am on the sidelines because I got injured. I mean, I'm happy to see we still got a field goal out of this drive, but Western Kentucky would end the first half with a touchdown, so we find ourselves down by four points. That honestly might have been the longest run of Calvin Gibbs' career, though, on that last play. He's been very solid, and with two runs, he's gotten us to a third and one situation where he was open for a second, but I took it way too late, so we're attempting a 52-yarder, and our kicker must be insane, but that's good to know. Now on a second and 13, I think the best thing I could do in this situation is run around and try to feed it to our tight end who comes away with that football, and I am terrified of standing in the pocket for too long with our offensive line. Even though we haven't played the best, we are fortunately still in this game, and we need to get a touchdown out of this drive. I'm sick of only getting field goals as that's going to be a good throw, but we still need about 20 more yards, and our backup tight end doesn't catch it. This is where things could go downhill for us with this play calling, and it is why I need the option to change our play calls before Matt conference play starts, but maybe I'll have enough coach trust. That completion makes it first and goal, and Calvin Gibbs gets us to the one, so we'll see how we open up the fourth quarter, and this is set up for me to get another rushing touchdown, but I'm a quarterback, and I think I've run for more touchdowns than I've passed for this year. The two-point conversion's also very important as he goes down short, but our defense has gotten them to a third and 15 where Veltkamp throws it well off target. With four minutes left on the clock, there's a chance that they never see the ball again, but I can't turn on two clock and road to glory, so we're probably going to have to move it all the way down the field, and I had to wait a long time for that to get open. I'm still very confident whenever it comes to feeding Jace Dunn the second, he doesn't make many mistakes, and my coach is not giving us running play calls, but passing ones instead. You would think that he would want us to just run out the rest of the clock, but that doesn't seem to be the case, and if I need to, I will put on a clinic by taking all of these checkdowns over and over. As of right now, I am 25 for 29 in this game, so I've played pretty well besides that one interception, and it is about time that we start to run the ball where I pitch it over to Calvin Gibbs, and he's going to get a couple. However, because of the hit that I took on this play, I would get injured, so I'm not out there for this third and six that we don't get. Western Kentucky is going to have a chance to tie it up and send it to overtime, but they're already in a fourth and ten situation where they are simply not going to pick it up, so we're going to take down our rivals, the Hilltoppers, at home, and that is a great start to the season where I could have just gone down early on, but I wanted to get my rushing yards up, and Calvin Gibbs is going to get the final play of the game. We're sitting at two and one before we start Matt conference play, so I'm pretty happy with how our team is doing, but it's clearly a must that I have to become a team captain soon, and I think it's time we become a 99 overall by upgrading our throw accuracy by one, upgrading our acceleration by two, and then getting our awareness up to an 82. Apparently, that only makes us a 98, though, and I just spent a lot of skill points, so now I have to earn some of them back. The main goal of this practice is it to be the one where I earn enough coach trust as well to start calling some extra plays, and Evan Carter Jr. always seems to be open. Our tight end is incredible, and on this play, he is as well. By the end of practice, I don't think I've earned enough coach trust to get to a 1,000, but I have gotten us a lot closer, so hopefully after our next matchup, I will be able to start calling extra plays, because that would literally be game-changing for us, and it's time to see who the best team in the MAC is. On paper, Northern Illinois is better than us, so if we're gonna take down the Huskies, we cannot make many mistakes, and this could be the best start ever if we're able to make this catch. But unfortunately, Dalen Maurice just couldn't bring it in, and I even upgraded my awareness, so I don't know what else I could possibly do. He's just gonna need to develop more, and Evan Carter Jr. is always open, so I will continue to feed the junior, and with this quarterback draw, I think this is the best one's ever gone. We now find ourselves in a second and one situation where, again, I'm going to hit the junior tight end, and the Huskies' defense has shown no resistance to stopping us so far during this drive as Dalen Maurice picks it up, but this is where things get tight down on the goal line, and that's a bad throw. I'm pretty sure I didn't set my feet, so that one is my fault, and I don't want to force anything on this third and 11, so I think we're just going to have to take our field goal. It's always hard to get into the end zone from there, and Northern Illinois has scored again, so we find ourselves trailing by 11. There's a chance this is our toughest game of the season, and we just had back-to-back -back drops, so we have to have a catch on third down, and finally we do. I will take back pretty quickly, though, that this could be our toughest game, because I just remembered that Ohio State is on our schedule, and I am not looking forward to that one. Here on third and 10, we have to pick this up, and I floated it in the air. I don't know what I was thinking, but by the time we're getting the ball back, it is 21-3, to and I just have to go deep and hope for the best where we make 
make the catch, but Jay Stun the second really bailed me out here. And if I have ever deserved to throw an interception in a game, it is definitely this one. Their defense is just really good, and I don't see anything getting open here. I'm not able to scramble around. So now it's third and eight, where we have got to finish this drive off, and we are going to pick it up to Evan Carter Jr. We cannot get held to a field goal if we want any chance of winning this game. I should have made a read there, but I hate throwing it when we're this close to the goal line, and there we go. Jay Stun the second's going to get it back within 11 points, but they're going to end the first half by kicking a field goal, and I don't think I played that bad, but we find ourselves down by two scores versus the Huskies here. Now, when I watch this back, obviously I'm going to see some stuff that I don't see whenever I'm commentating live, and you all always make sure to point out in the comments the reads that I miss, but you have to keep in mind it's a lot easier to see it later on, and I also do like to stare down one receiver. I feel like I'm getting better at looking at multiple players, though, so maybe that's why this drive is going so well, and Jay Stun the second brings that one in. On this next play, I am going to run around to this left side of the field and then throw it on the run to Carter Jr. So my improvising skills are getting a lot better and Dalen Maurice takes it to the two. It looks like the backup running back is in with this halfback toss play and Marks doesn't get it. So now my coach is going to let me throw the ball and I wanted to pick apart these zones, but I was scared to do it and we fumbled it away to them. That turnover alone might cost us the game, but our defense has finally gotten us the ball back without giving up any points. And if we're able to get it inside the 10 again, I can't crumble versus Northern Illinois. That was definitely one of those plays where if I could, I would have changed the play call. And Dalen Maurice is starting to drive me insane. How is he not holding on to the football? I was hoping we'd go for it there, but our coach decided to settle for three. And luckily for us, the Huskies only got a field goal on their next drive. So technically, with three timeouts left, we're not out of this game yet, but we need to score very quickly. And I think we're going to have to do it by going deep to one of our receivers who is open and they got over to it. This is the game right here, and I'm going to have to make a hot read. I saw it get open the last time. And now we find ourselves on the other side of midfield where I'm going to hope that last second Malachi Harris can get open here. I've put it perfectly on the money, but they intercept it. They got over to the football. That was a stupid turnover for me again, but I feel like it was the right read in that situation, trying to get us points as quick as possible. And we're going to have to recover an onside kick if we're able to reach the end zone to still have a chance in this one where I'm going to go deep and Harris takes it to the house. My fingers are crossed that we can come away with this football, but it was a bad kick. We didn't have a chance of recovering it. And we're going to drop our second game of the season to the Huskies. But believe it or not, it's actually not the end of the world because I'm continuing to get better as a player. And as long as we beat every single one of these teams in our division, we can still make it to the MAC championship. Besides the Ohio State game, our schedule is about to get 10 times easier. And we also have a bye week before we play Western Michigan. So I'm going to have plenty of time to get 13 more coach trusts. And that means extra plays would be available to call versus the Broncos, which would be huge. All we need is one more completion and we're going to get there. I think I might be able to pick it up with my legs as well with this run going to the 20. And I ended practice right after that because I cannot risk turning the ball over in any of the other place. So there we go. I've become the team captain and next up would allow us to have hot routes. We're starting to progress more and more, but I gotta say, if we're gonna win our conference, we cannot lose any more MAC games and that is dropped. It is so frustrating that I can put the ball exactly where it needs to be and it doesn't seem to matter, but we catch that. And honestly, the one goal for this game is to not throw a single interception. I've been turning the ball over way too much recently. Done the second, takes it to the 25, but he fumbled it away to Western Michigan and that wasn't even my fault. The Broncos offense would also get a touchdown out of it, so we find ourselves down 7-0. And I still don't know how it's going to be possible to win a national championship in the Heisman with this team. But those were the two big goals for this series, and next year we're going to have to really figure things out. We've continued to improve this year, but I think at this rate the only realistic goals we can have is making the MAC championship. And it's rare to see our star tight end drop the ball, but he almost stalled out this possession. At some point, we're going to have to wake up as a team and simply perform better against some of our opponents, so I'm hoping that we can do that to finish out the rest of this game. And I'm hoping that we don't struggle as much down inside the red zone now that I have the option to change the play call, but I'm just going to scramble to the five. And from here, we're keeping it on the ground where Calvin Gibbs gets a couple, but that's not going to help us very much. And I'm going to take it in. Western Michigan would score again. So it is 14 to seven by the time that we're getting this ball back. And I thought that our defense might be a little bit better when we got to Matt conference play since we're playing against some weaker opponents, but that has not been the case. And I was hoping for man-to-man -man coverage because I assumed that Malachi Harris would be open and he was, but he dropped the ball. And with this third and inches, Calvin Gibbs is not going to get it. We had to punt it back to them where they scored another touchdown on us. And I am about to lose my mind with how bad our team is performing right now. I'm going to have to step up and somehow make us win. I seem to be the only player out there on the field that can consistently help us get a lot of yards. And I cannot turn it over now. We have got to get some yardage here and come on. If I just had a little bit more time, I would have had a big completion. But it all worked out because we still picked up that third down and their defensive end was quick, but not quick enough. Evan Carter Jr. is going to get it back within seven points. And they literally scored within like 30 seconds to go up.
up by 14 again. Our defense has gotten shredded, and on this third and nine, they're going to throw an interception. So that is the only thing giving me any hope in this game because they were about to go up by three possessions on us, and I am so glad I was watching that play. I did not realize how big of an impact that could be. I honestly thought we were about to go down 35 to 14 to open up this second half, but instead we have it. And I don't know why we're starting to run the ball so much. It doesn't work that well, but I am sick of it because I want to go back to throwing it through the air instead of handing it off. This is a huge third in inches, and we ended up keeping it on the ground, but it did work out for us, and my goal is to roll out to take this to Jay Stun the second, but that isn't open, and I just got to go down. I probably could have forced it there, but it would have ended really bad for us. Carter the Jr. is going to take it to the five, and here we go. This is a game-changing third and four where I am probably just going to try to do it with my legs, but I was marked short, and now I'm holding my chest, and I have to watch us make the worst decision ever. I mean, our defense would hold them, but we still find ourselves losing by a lot, and our tight end is open down the field. Come on, Evan Carter Jr. Break free here. Just go all the way to the end zone, and you do. What a turnaround to end that third quarter. I didn't think we'd pull it off, but then they scored a 77-yard touchdown, and even though I'm back from injury out there on the field, I can't even be excited because we're down by so much. This is not the time for our coach to be calling running plays, but he is, and I hate this halfback draw one, so we're going with verticals. That is why we needed this option available, but still, nothing is getting open versus the man-to-man -man coverage besides maybe Dalen Maurice, and he is actually going to reel it into the house. That is a nice 69-yard touchdown to get us back within a possession, and I'm going to have to use one of our extra plays on the two-point conversion. This is simply too important for us to not pick up, and I don't really see anything, but maybe I can do it with my legs. But that did not work out, and on third and 24, please do not give this up defense. Just get the interception here. I mean, it worked out because then they'd miss that 54-yard field goal. I don't know why they even attempted it, but Calvin Gibbs breaks the tackle, and I cannot believe we still have a chance to win this game. I can't take the sack, but I knew it was coming. I saw it from a mile away, and that's why I've been instantly rolling out. This is a pretty big third and eight where I'm throwing it straight to our tight end. They almost got the interception there, and it's saying he's not down, so he gets up and gets some extra yardage. Normally, the play would just end there, but it was obvious he was going to get up from it, and I'm going to let Calvin Gibbs go to work by hitting him to take it inside the red zone, and I don't know why our coach is calling timeouts. We need to run off as much clock as possible here, and I hope that the pressure doesn't get to me. I honestly just want to use my legs, but our running back is open, and that's a touchdown. I hope I didn't leave them too much time, but I'll feel a lot better about it if we're able to get this two-point conversion, and I didn't even look at the right side of the field, so I made a mistake. We'll see what happens to end this game. This is honestly the worst, having to watch this from the sidelines as our defense almost gets a pick, and I am terrified that they're going to have a big play or something, but they're not going to get this out. So there's just nine seconds left now, and that's not going to get them in field goal range. All we have to do is not give up like a 70-yard Hail Mary where we got a sack, and I cannot believe that we're going to beat Western Michigan here at home. I thought we were done. My adrenaline is racing after getting my team the win, and this has to be the best stat line that I have ever put up, so I shouldn't be surprised that I won my first NCAA player of the week, and I'm just hoping that eventually I will get noticed in the Heisman watch. There's honestly not any upgrades here that I think are worth taking, but I should mention that we're already earning a lot of coach trust, so before we play our next conference game, I'm going to try to earn some more, and it doesn't even bug me that this practice is in the rain because I am so thrilled with that result against Western Michigan. I'm obviously going to expect a lot of drops because of the weather, and there's one, but it's Dalen Maurice, so I don't think anybody watching would even be the slightest bit surprised, and I can't believe I just turned it over like that. I always seem to make the dumb reads in these practices, which just hurts my coach trust. I came into this one hoping to earn some, but instead I just want to get some more player XP so when the good upgrades become available, we can afford it. And I finished practice pretty strong, so I'm up to almost 500 coach trust now, and I'm ready to play another home game. I'm coming off my best game ever, so we should perform pretty well against the Bearcats. My offensive line just had some amazing blocks on that play, and this run's going to continue to go. So I'm starting to use my legs a little bit more, especially when nothing is going to be open. Here on 2nd and 12, it is man-to-man -man coverage, but the corner routes did not get open, so that will make it a third and long for us, and I think the odds of picking this up aren't great, but we're actually going to do it to Malachi Harris. I'm starting to actually love this Northern Kentucky team and how everybody's developing, but in the next season and a half, there's still so much that all of these players are going to have to achieve, and Evan Carter Jr. dropped the ball. That is not something he normally does, but we're still going to move the chains, and now that we've gotten down inside the red zone, it's going to be the question of whether or not we can finish it off, so I think we're going to use my legs to do that, and we go to the four. I really don't like some of these passing plays that they call down here, so I try to step up in the pocket. I've broken one sack. How am I still going here? What is happening? I wish they would stop putting out these simple hitch routes on the field because they don't get open, and none of the change play options were great either, so this is the best that we have. But it worked for us there, and then our defense got a stop, so I'm happy with how things are going. Calvin Gibbs goes for eight, and that makes this a very manageable third and two, where both of those hitch routes just stopped in the same spot. I was going to take one of them, but they decided to be right next 
to each other instead. Calvin Gibbs breaks that one tackle. And with four and a half minutes left in the second quarter, Ohio has tied it back up at seven. But I'm not worried because I know we're the better team and we definitely have the better quarterback. If I can continue to play this well, I'll honestly believe that I'm the best quarterback in the country. And stat-wise, I probably am since I've gotten myself up to a 99 overall. I need to be able to lead this team to a MAC championship though, and our corner route is wide open. So we're very close to reaching the end zone and the slant got boxed. Our receivers really aren't that good. I make them look a lot better. And after reaching the end zone again, our defense would go out and hold the Bobcats. So we have an opportunity to take a two possession lead and that's going to be a laser. I'm so used to us playing in close games this season that it would be weird if we had a big lead over the Bobcats in this one. But it would also be nice because then the pressure wouldn't be as immense as it has been recently. And all I have to do is make sure I don't throw an interception where Dalen Maurice brings it in for a touchdown. They would follow that up with a touchdown though. So by the time we have the ball back here in the third quarter, we only have a seven point lead. And it is crucial that we have yet another good drive where they are about to get a sack. And I can't believe I made both of those players miss the sack, but I'm just going to complete this to Evan Carter Jr. to about midfield. And he is continuing to run. I do not know how he is still standing, but there is a reason that the junior is my favorite target. And my hope was man-to-man -man coverage on this play because there's a route that normally gets open versus it, but it wasn't there. So instead, I'm going to take off on the ground using my legs and I'm going to go all the way down to the one. All I needed was another yard to get the touchdown, but I'll do it here. And we must have forced a turnover if we have the ball back this quickly in this position. It is so nice that this one is not as tight as some of the recent matchups. I'm appreciative of it. And it's allowing me to comfortably sit back there, look at whoever's open, and Evan Carter Jr. wasn't there. I tried to get him a touchdown, but even with 96 throw accuracy, I'm still missing some throws, so that's Heisman for you, but Malachi Harris catches that. And even though the Bobcats would score again, we're in the driver's seat in this game because we're up by 14 with the ball with less than four minutes left. And I'm honestly just going to continue to pad my stats because I think I've rushed for over 100 yards, which is something I don't think I've done before, and that shows I'm starting to become a dual threat. I feel like there's still a chance I could sneak into the Heisman conversation as well if I keep putting up good stats, but Calvin Gibbs dropping that ball is going to cut that drive short. And in the end, we're going to get the right result versus Ohio. I'm very happy with how my stats looked as well, which has been earning me a lot of XP recently, and also coach trust as I'm about to unlock hometown hero. So that's exciting, and let's make sure that I boost up my awareness and also my speed and acceleration here. I don't know why I thought I had 96 throw accuracy, but apparently I don't. But it's fine because the rest of my stats look really good. From the looks of these division standings, all we have to do is continue to win out to make the MAC championship, but before then, we have to play at Ohio State, and I've already accepted that this could be rough. I think this game could teach us a lot about our team though and how we compete against better schools. So it's nice to see our first offensive play go for 27 yards. And the Buckeyes scored seven pretty quickly against us, but that's no surprise. Calvin Gibbs is going to make it all the way to the 45. But coach wants me to have another halfback screen to him for our third down play call. And that was actually the right decision to make. We're getting closer and closer to reaching the end zone versus the Buckeyes. I need my offensive line to step up though. And nobody got open versus their man-to-man -man coverage, which just is upsetting to see. I know we're at least in field goal range, but we have to get as many points in this game as we can and I'm going to try to scramble for it where I am going to pick it up on the ground and that actually gets me a little bit of hope versus the Buckeyes because we're competing with them pretty well. To end the first quarter we could tie it up at 7-7 to if I'm able to make the right read but I didn't want to force it into a tight window so I'll gladly take my check down and it's not going to work this time. We can't keep running halfback screens but that's what my coach loves to do and if this C route goes for a touchdown that'd be awesome. To everybody's surprise Dalen Maurice actually held on to the football and the Buckeyes only got a field goal out of their next drive. So if we have a good one here, we could take the lead and I'm forcing it into that one to done. Right now we are thriving, but the wide receiver screen got boxed. So that's my first incompletion of the day. And I almost took that route again, but I got worried and now I'm going to get sacked. I cannot be hesitating versus teams like the Buckeyes and that comeback route was boxed up, but somehow Dalen Maurice made the catch and I should have thrown an interception there, but they didn't turn around quick enough, which is amazing. That's going to keep our drive alive and I'm going to have to go for the end zone shot where they aren't going to make a play on it. So Jay Stun the second puts us up by four points and it wouldn't last since they'd scored to end the half, but we still have 16 seconds to get into field goal range ourselves. I truthfully believe that we can make it happen as long as some of our receivers get some yards after the catch here and he doesn't. So we're going to need a little bit more to even attempt this with our kicker and that drag should do the trick as long as Harris goes down in time, which he does. I don't think I could have had a better first half than what I just did. And the pressure is on for us to pull off the upset here in the third quarter. Anytime we have struggled to do something, we have made up for it on the next 
next play. But our zig route did not get open. And on third and 12, there's only one player I could really take here where he drops the ball. It should be no surprise that Dalen Maurice lets us down and they would also score a touchdown where they're getting in pressure here. But we have a deep post open and Dalen Maurice is going to make up for his drop by reeling in that catch and he is going to go down at the one. That was exactly what we needed in that situation there. But our defense has got to step up and on third and eight, they're going to get the interception. Booker comes away with the football and they're not going to make the tackle on him either. I cannot believe that we just got the turnover we needed, but we might actually beat the Buckeyes. That was insane. I was certain that they were going to get at least a field goal there, but instead we're just going to hand this one off to our fullback. And I don't like any of these third down play calls, but quarterback draws probably our best option. So that's what we decided to go with. And I hate that we're settling for a field goal. It's no surprise Ohio State's going to respond back. And I've been given a chance with 51 seconds left, but that's a bad play call. Our coach really doesn't want to see us succeed, but I can change it. So that's why it was so crucial for me to unlock that, but they've boxed up all of our slants. And why would that even be an option for third and 10? I got to change it again. My hot read is going to be tight end Evan Carter Jr., who eventually would have been open, but I needed another second to throw it. And it is fourth and 17 where I'm going to have to try and force it into a tight window to pick this up, but they're going to get the sack and we fumbled it away. Our defense would force a fumble though. So we still somehow have a chance with 19 seconds left. And I have learned that I should probably just do things on the ground because through the air has not been working. That leaves us with about 12 seconds left. And if this is cover two, we are going to throw the four verticals over to Jace on the second. And with that, I'm able to set a school record. But what's important is what happens on this Hail Mary. And I'm going to set us up even better. We lost to Cincinnati on the same play and the tight end didn't get open, but we might have one of our receivers deep and it is dropped. We're going to fall short of beating another big school, but it came down to this. And that was so close to actually working in our favor. From this point though, we should be able to win the MAC conference because it's obvious that we have a solid enough roster. And I tried to play my best, but it wasn't enough. That's honestly the worst, but we just need 50 more coach trust to become the hometown hero. So I might as well make that happen. And they've sent in a blitz, which results in a sack. I cannot catch a break right now. That's going to make it even more difficult to unlock it, but we'll do it. And it's also important for me to get some more XP so I can upgrade my speed and the rest of my player. I was kind of worried that that could turn into an interception. And now we're just going to bomb them deep, which is going to get us pretty close to having enough trust. So all we need is a few more completions. And after that, I'm ending practice because I cannot risk having any mistakes. I think one more will do it here. And that's what we're going to take on the sidelines, which means I can now call hot routes during some of our home games. And honestly, that's a pretty big deal because we're about to play Akron at home. So that should help us go out and get the win versus them. To open up this big conference game versus Akron, we have the ball first and I'm going to try to fit it into that tight window. So that's a solid start for this offense. And we're going to do the same thing on this next play. And it looks like we're going to get a touchdown as well as Harris has broken free. Malachi Harris has some good plays and also some bad ones, but at least he's helped us open up this game in the best way possible. And Dalen Maurice is also catching it. Our offense has been flying down the field so far and the quarterback draw gets us 10. So Akron's in a ton of trouble, but we didn't get anywhere on first down with a run. So now we've given it to Calvin Gibbs again, and he gets like 30, 40 yards as he continues to go. I can also call hot routes now, which really helps down inside the end zone. So we should be able to score here. Malachi Harris is open and that's a touchdown. I'm also thrilled with the fact that our defense has been able to get two stops already in this game. So as our offense is getting better, our defense is as well. And I'm hoping to have a big run here, but they're going to stop me. It was still a perfect first quarter from us. And the zips might be able to get us off the field on this third and four as they're over the halfback screen, but I'm not worried about it, even though they would get a field goal next because we're still up by two possessions versus them. And I'm just going to take that underneath. But because I'm short, it was almost picked. I've got to be more careful in those situations. And Malachi Harris lost the ball, but we bounced on top of it. So we still have possession of it and we should be fine, except I didn't see that defender. So I should have thrown an interception there. And it looks like on second and 10, they're going to box me up, except I was able to scramble to the outside, which just shows that now I can get out of almost any situation. And I cannot believe I threw that straight to them, but we did not create any separation there. And on this play, Dalen Maurice is going to take it down to the red zone. We're getting closer and closer to me throwing for my third touchdown. Their defensive line is not going to generate pressure quick enough. And now that I can put slants out on the field down inside the red zone, it should be so much easier to get in, which we do. Now our defense is starting to fall apart, but I'm not even worried about it because they've shown that they cannot stop our offense. And here to end the first half, we might get another field goal as well. I mean, we still have 30 seconds to get in range, so it's not like it's going to be too difficult for us to do as we do it here. And if we're going to get a four verticals play call, there's always the chance that I could go for another touchdown, which I'm getting. I think Malachi Harris just caught his third of the day. And my coach does not like to call running plays because even though we have such a huge lead, we're coming out in the second half, still slinging it with four verticals. And if I can finish off this game as strong as I've started it, there's a good chance I could be in the Heisman race. To be honest, I feel like the only thing holding me back from doing so is the fact that I play for Northern Kentucky, but I'm going to evade that pressure. I'm not going to get sacked and I'm taking it to the 10. I'm hoping for 
for my fifth passing touchdown of the day on this drive, which I should have gotten. And I can't believe Malachi Harris just dropped that ball, but we're going to roll out. There's a slant I could take, and they were playing it, so we're going to run into the end zone instead. At this point in the game, I don't think Akron's going to be able to come back as we have a great lead over them. Calvin Gibbs is going to lose the football. And are you kidding me? They've picked it up just when I was saying I don't think the Zips could come back in this game. And that's nuts that they got the football there, but they wouldn't score a touchdown on that drive. And I've noticed that they are pressing star tight end Evan Carter Jr. with a linebacker. I know that he can outrun him, and that ball was put perfectly on the money. He is going to continue to run. He's broken multiple tackles, and I'm starting to play like a 99 overall quarterback. It turns out that being able to put hot routes out there on the field has changed everything for us, and it's been very rare for us to blow out any team in this series, but we might start doing it. I'm honestly going for another passing touchdown just because I can, and I'm not getting benched for the backup, and it looks like I've broken one of my own records. I knew that this could turn into one of the best games of my career, but from there, my coach would obviously put the backups in, so I'll have to settle for having seven total touchdowns. Downs, and this next MAC conference game is super important for us. It's versus one of the better teams in our division, and because I'm only a hometown hero and not a field general, I can't call hot routes on the road, so this one could be difficult. And our defense has gotten us in a fantastic position to start this game because they were able to force a turnover on Miami, Ohio. Getting us an interception so we can score the first points is such a big deal. Calvin Gibbs is going to go to the seven, and my head coach clearly wants me running a ton of screen plays in this game. But so far, they've worked, and with the read option, Calvin Gibbs goes nowhere. I really wish. I could put some slants out there on the field with some hot routes. They're going to get the sack and the fumble. So we didn't get any points out of that drive and I had no time back there. Now it's second and seven where I've decided that I wasn't going to pitch it to Calvin Gibbs because I couldn't risk turning the ball over again and we're going to move the chains on third down. Being able to use hot routes at home to change up all of these hitch routes is a huge deal because whenever it's man-to-man -man coverage, nothing's open and I'm not risking throwing it for like three yards whenever there's a defender right next to them. This is not going to work. So it is third and 17. They've gone with man-to-man -man coverage and I have to hope that Calvin Gibbs can outrun 23, but it looks like he was able to do it. There is one good thing about our offense, and it's that all our guys are quick. So approaching the end of the first quarter, we are still up by seven, and our defense has done their job so far. If the rest of our team can improve enough during the offseason, I think next year we could make a playoff run. So that's going to be exciting to see if it happens. And I simply have to do my part in continuing to improve my player. I want to try to hit our tight end over the top. He had a stop and go route there, and he is just quicker than 16. He has gone to the crib. I've never tried to bomb a team over the top with a route like this before, but the stop and go was just enough for him to get a little bit of an extra burst. And Miami, Ohio's offense has been terrible, so we're going to have it back up 14. I think we got all of our hard matchups out early on in this video, and I feel like things would have been a lot different if we didn't take down Western Michigan. This third down didn't go well. And all of a sudden, the Red Hawks have it within seven points, so it's not over as we approach halftime. But I'm starting to figure out that against these weaker teams, I have more time back there in the pocket, and if I need to, I can escape to the outside, which I've done on this play, and that takes us to the 25. I'm obviously going for another touchdown and the man-to-man -man coverage is not going to work against Josiah Brown. So we'll continue to fly down the field and with the option, I should have pitched it. That's on me for getting greedy and thinking that I could reach the end zone by myself. Dalen Maurice takes it in and we get the ball to open up the third quarter. So Miami, Ohio is in a ton of trouble. You would think that our play calling would be a little bit more passive now, but our coach wants us to run up the score versus every team. And this is one of the first times in Road to Glory where I've liked a majority of the play calls that I've gotten from my head coach. It looks like Dalen Maurice makes the catch and I am 15 for 16 for almost 300 yards on Heisman mode with Northern Kentucky. This is insane. I know I'm a 99 overall quarterback in a bad conference, but I started as a 45 and I honestly didn't think I would ever get to this point in the series. In the first episode in my freshman year, I wasn't even able to get onto the field once, but just two seasons later, I'm the best quarterback in the game at a 99 overall and I'm hoping that I'm able to outrun both of these defenders, but they brought me down so it is third and goal and I don't want to force it here because I'd much rather us go up by three possessions. I guess it really doesn't matter whenever your defense forces a turnover down inside the red zone, comeback routes are open, and Dalen Maurice is starting to really make a difference. Two plays later, we have the ball back again, so this is starting to get crazy. And it's about time that our defense started helping me out because they struggled for a lot of the series, and especially during some of the games in this episode as well, but I just want to make sure that I don't turn the ball over here, so I'll gladly check it down and let our kicker go out and drill it. I have found it pretty interesting that our head coach does not like to put the backups out there even when we're up by a ton, but this game's obviously already over, so unless we're in the red zone again, I'm pretty much just going to cut to 
the end. I mean, the Red Hawks would score to get it back within 20 points, but that's still not close at all. And I wish I could turn on Chew Clock because with one first down, we could simply end the game, but that won't be the case even though we get it. Instead, we've been able to move it all the way down the field by simply handing it off. And I'd love it if I was able to go for just one more touchdown against them, but instead, we're going to send the field goal unit out there. And that is a great win on the road at Miami, Ohio. My stat lines are continuing to be great as well. So even though we could earn more coach trust through practice, I've honestly been skipping it and we'll see if that comes back to bite us in the future. I'll probably miss out on a really nice upgrade or something, but there's only so many things that I can improve upon. And with three conference games left, all we have to do is win out. It looks like the MAC Conference Championship would be a rematch against Northern Illinois, and I'd love to get my revenge versus them, but for the first time I've appeared in the Heisman watch. So the most important thing about this series is I finished this season strong. I could actually win the Heisman Trophy as a junior, and I don't think I've ever done that in a road to glory before. Bowling Green has already sent in a blitz versus us, but clearly my awareness needs to be even higher because we still have players that aren't able to hold on to the football. This is a pretty big third and two where Bowling Green isn't going to stop us. And I remember playing here on the road last year because of how sick that backdrop is behind their end zone. So I don't know why they didn't come to our place this season, but it is what it is. All I have to do is make sure I don't take the sack and I am going to avoid it by breaking that tackle and getting the first. We are going to open up things the right way with Evan Carter Jr. getting open on the corner route. And that means he's broken Dalen Maurice's record from last year. It's hard to believe with all the drop issues he's had that he had that from the past season. But we have an issue because after I got hit at the end of this play, I'm pretty weak and that would end up being enough to injure me as I'm going to hold my chest. So I've had to watch the rest of this first drive from the sidelines and on third and 11 done, the second's going to move the chains for us. We'd end up scoring a touchdown and I'd be out there on our next drive, but missing out on scores like that could hurt my chance at winning the Heisman. And it's going to be hard to pick up this third and 14, but I'm going to hopefully do it over there to Malachi Harris. I hate facing off against man-to-man -man coverage whenever we play against bigger schools and they actually got the interception out of man-to-man -man coverage there. But I was about to say I love it versus weaker schools. And that's the first time that I've turned over the ball in a while. So that's really frustrating to see Evan Carter Jr. just didn't get open. We have seven first downs to their zero though. So it just shows that we're dominating. The score is also seven to zero. So that's a cool thing. And I also want to make sure that I'm still putting up some decent rushing stats, even though they're not calling design quarterback runs, I'll do it myself. And that's going to get us another first down where I'm just going to take this hitch and that broke free up field, but it helps us out. Something tells me we're going to be ranked very shortly and getting Northern Kentucky there three years into this would be insane, but they have sent in a blitz and I'm going to not go down. I've actually broken a tackle. So I don't know what happened there, but I cannot complain. And with this, we're just going to get a couple more. I'm still upset at myself for throwing that interception early on, but I'm going to make sure I don't do it again. And if that means only getting a field goal here, that's okay. I'm not going to force anything if I don't have to, but I can step up and run, which is going to lead to a touchdown. This has to be one of the filthiest spin moves in channel history, making four defenders miss a tackle on me. And we have instantly recovered a fumble. The play calling is terrible, but we have the ball back again, and that actually got open. So maybe the spacing play versus man-to-man -man coverage isn't as bad as I thought it was throughout this video. There's still a few minutes left in the first half, but we could go up by three possessions. And unless we turn it over, it is locked in because a field goal would do that for us, but I'm just going to run and that will be a touchdown. So once again, this one already feels like it's over and we haven't even hit halftime yet, which is just crazy. Calvin Gibbs also broke free with the halfback screen and nobody is going to catch him. So that came out of nowhere and that's going to really help my chance at winning the Heisman because that counts as a long passing touchdown for me. I just realized that this is going to be an incredible senior year I'm going to have because we're playing in the MAC conference again and everybody keeps getting better. So I should dominate theoretically and it looks like they are going to lock us up on this play where I'm just going to try to run for it myself and I've made it to the two. I'm honestly very excited to see how my senior year goes and the rest of this one because we should cruise to a lot of easy wins and I'm just going to do the smart thing. I have a feeling I'm about to get another touchdown even though Calvin Gibbs went backwards there because he got a positive gain. And the only thing that could really ruin our season right now is if we had any injuries, especially to myself. That has happened to us before and on third and four, I am going to go up the middle of the field. So we're going up 42 to zero. And the fact that our defense is getting stops as quickly as they are is incredible. This is probably going to be picked though. I shouldn't have floated it. And I always do something stupid. I mean, we're instantly going to get it back because our defense was able to get an interception on Bowling Green. But I am not happy with myself for having two interceptions in one game. And I better not get benched to start the fourth quarter. I simply want to finish off this drive and then they can pull me as we get in. So that's what happened. And we'd end up winning 52 to seven. There's a lot of positive takeaways we can have from this game. And one of them has to be my stat line without the interceptions. But because of them, I'm not going to have enough coach trust to be a team leader. And I thought it would affect my Heisman odds, but somehow I've shot up to number one. All that's left on our schedule is Central Michigan and Buffalo, but we could still lose the tiebreaker if we lose both of these games. So we have to be a little careful and it looks like Northern Illinois has been ranked, but obviously we're not receiving votes, which means we still have a long way to go in this series. And Central Michigan could be difficult. They're seven and three 
three and looking to take us down, but hopefully we'll come out on top. Gibbs is going to get four here. And this is one of the most important games of my career because I'm so close to winning the Heisman Trophy. My stats must be insane or something, and I feel like Evan Carter Jr. is going to be able to run straight by them, so I've bombed it up to him. I've put it perfectly on the money. And originally, it looks like he drops the ball, but then he ended up catching it anyway, so he came up clutch. It also helps because we're at home, I can call hot routes, but I've hit the wrong button getting it over to backup running back marks. So I missed out on an easy touchdown, and we're just going to have to hope that somebody gets open, which we have on this play, Malachi Harris. Then our defense forced an interception. And where were all of these turnovers in the first half of the year when we were struggling so much? Now we're just dominating. I mean, even with us on the five yard line, they've gotten another stop, and I cannot take the safety here. I've got to outrun that defensive end, which I was able to do. Now I can get a block, and that's a great run. That was a little risky on my part, but my confidence is so high after how we've performed recently. Gibbs is going to get us a first, and I could have sworn he had it, but they said he was short, so we're going to have to pick it up to Dalen Maurice. I feel like the Grand Rapids series with those tough sliders has really helped me, because even though I know I've made some stupid turnovers in this video, I'm playing better than I normally would. And to end the first quarter, I'm hoping that we're able to move the chains where the checkdowns are really working for us right now. They make it take a little longer to score, but they've also made my stats look 10 times better this year, and with the pitch, Calvin Gibbs is going to get us four. This is another one I feel like we're going to close out if we score on this drive, and I'm just able to run around everybody. I can not believe how quick I've been able to make my player. It's only like 79 speed, but in the MAC conference, that's clearly all that you need, and Evan Carter Jr. gets us to the three. We are cruising through this game, so we should make the MAC championship, and our defense has been incredible for us once again. I'm just going to hand this one off to Calvin, but they were ready for it, so we're going to try something like that again, and this time he gets us a little bit more. Apparently, I've already changed the play five times, though, so I have to hand it off with a halfback draw on third down to him, and that was another upgrade that we could have really used in my sophomore year, but I'm glad that we have it now. If we could just score on this drive. That would be the last main bit of this game I'm going to show. I see a deep route streaking down the field to Jay Stun, and if I set my feet, I could have led him a lot better, but I'm still terrified of my offensive line not holding their blocks for long enough, and they did that there. A fullback dive from the four-yard line is an interesting play call, though, and I really wish I could change some of these, but there's nothing I can do. Here we go, third and goal. I have the slant out there to Malachi Harris, and that touchdown pretty much secures our win. By the end of this one, I'm just going to continue to pad my stats, and it looks like they weren't expecting me to take off here, but my my coach wants me to hand it off to Gibbs, so I'll do that. And that would be the final time in this game I'd see the field. With no turnovers, though, I'm very happy with my performance. And I had five passing touchdowns with almost 400 passing yards. I think at this rate, the Heisman race is going to be mine to lose. And I am so ready to have a chance at getting revenge versus Northern Illinois in the conference championship. But we have one more game that I have to play first. And if I perform well, I'm going to go from being a hometown hero to being a team leader. This is the final game of the regular season, so I'm hoping we can go out and get an easy win over them. Dalen Maurice already broke a tackle. But some Sometimes playing in the snow can be a little bit difficult, and it looks like our tight end created a ton of separation with that post route past midfield. We're flying so far, but with this handoff, Calvin Gibbs doesn't get much. So I don't love that we're going back to giving it to him again, and that makes it third and 13 where they went with man-to-man -man coverage, and that's going to lead to us getting stopped. However, instead of taking our three, coach wants us to go for it, and the halfback screen is not going to work. But it's all good. Buffalo didn't score, and we eventually would have the ball back. I want to take this wheel route to Malachi Harris, and he was in motion to start the play. Now he goes to the 45. So I thought that that was a cool little design and I want to hit our tight end here, but I don't have time. Now, don't get me wrong. There were definitely other things open, but I wanted to beat them deep. And this time I did take the smart route over to Malachi Harris. But now we have to find a way to pick up this third and seven. And I'm just going to roll out where we have gotten a perfect route bounce. I have hit Jace on the second and he is gone. Buffalo would also get stopped on our two yard line. So we have the ball and Calvin Gibbs is going to get to the outside to get us out of a bad situation. From this point on the field, we should no longer have to worry about taking a safety against the Bulls. And I wish I could do some hot routes. I'm probably just going to send up a deep shot, seeing if Dalen Maurice can burn that corner. But unlike what he's been able to do against some of these MAC defenses, he couldn't do it there. And because I was staring down some deep routes, we'd take a sack, which has led to the Bulls tying it up at seven. So there's a minute and a half left now. And I would love to get some more points before the half, but we have to be smart about what we do. And it might just be me scrambling. I was in such a good groove when it came to making reads before I went and ate dinner. Now I feel like I'm going to miss some things. And that cannot be the case because we have some big matchups coming coming up and I'm just going to try to avoid the sack, but he gets me. This has been a rough performance for a player that has a Heisman trophy on the line, but we had it deep and now I'm holding my chest after not getting it there. Well, somehow in the minute I wasn't out there on the field, we'd end up getting a safety against the Bulls. So the drive did not end well, but we're still up by two and we just got to take control in the third quarter. That was a really bad drop there though, making it so we have to convert on third and eight, which we do. And I should probably just be smart and take my slant, but I thought everything was boxed up. So I've decided to run instead. I've been scrambling a lot more as of recently. So it's about time I pass it. And we are closing in on scoring on this drive. We just need to have a 
laser here and it's dropped. If we didn't have to deal with so many of those, I wonder how good this team would have been during this season. And here on third and eight, it is zone coverage, not man to man. So the route I wanted to take still got open. There was literally a defender right there, but for some reason he didn't make a play on it. And that's big because I am in the running for the Heisman Trophy, where it is crucial that I finish off this game with some better numbers and that stop and go route from our tight end worked again. But I overthrew him and I'm going to be thinking about that one for a very long time. That would have been such an easy score for us, but at the end of the day, I'm going to make mistakes. I can't be a perfect quarterback. And my hope is that he can get open with another good route on this play, which he does, and that player can knock it back to the football. A quarterback sneak would be perfect in this situation, but they didn't give it to us. So I had to find Dalen Maurice instead for the touchdown. And a two-point conversion would give us a three-possession lead, but they get the sack. It's not going to matter because our defense has locked up for us, and I'm just going to step up if there's going to be this much space. They're literally dropping like eight or nine guys back into coverage, and I don't know what I need to do to make sure that they catch it more, but before next season, we have got to figure that out. And if I have a good drive, I think we can pretty much seal things. That route is so filthy versus man-to-man, -man. but Malachi Harris cannot hold on to it for like the fifth time, and I don't even want to look in his direction on this play, but he's open, and there we go. I'm honestly excited to look at the season stats and see how many drops we experienced. I think it's going to be a lot, because they keep on occurring, and I just don't even want to take anything simple underneath. I would rather use my legs so it's not dropped at all. We're honestly just lucky that none of them have turned into interceptions for us. And this is a design quarterback run, which they weren't expecting, but I'm not going to get very far, except I have eventually broken free. And I'm still not quite sure how I was able to slip out of this one with that spin move. It would be huge if I could score at least one more touchdown in this game, because as of right now, this hasn't been the best of performances for a Heisman contender. And I have to make sure that I don't turn the ball over here when I want to laser into tight windows, which I decided not to do. I got scared, but I think I had my tight end. I just didn't want to risk the interception. And I don't like how close everything is down here on the goal line because a lot of things aren't that open. Somehow that counts as a first though, and I just don't want to take Malachi Harris. He's probably not going to catch it. But if I would have done it from the beginning, he probably would have there. And on third and goal, I am keeping this where the read option gets me in. You know what? At the end of the day, we got a big win over a conference opponent, and now we can celebrate it in the snow. So let's get ready for the MAC Conference Championship. And I'm going to continue to take these upgrades, which help me when it comes to how I run. Going into the final week of the season, I'm still in the lead for the Heisman. And then I saw this upgrade, which would max out my stamina and also limit the times I get injured. I think I'm taking a lot of good strides forward as a player, but my throw accuracy could still use some work. And it looks like going into the conference championship, Northern Illinois is 11 and 1. Their only loss came on the road at Ohio State. And if it wasn't for that, they'd be in the college football playoffs. The good news though is after last week, I'm a team leader. So I'm going to have a ton of extra plays available to use. And it is time to get revenge. This is my first ever conference championship game where the handoff goes nowhere. So I need my coach to keep the ball in my hands and we are going to dot them up for the first down. Northern Illinois did beat us earlier this season, but I feel like we've gotten a lot better since then. And I know that our slant's eventually going to get open to Malachi Harris, who takes it all the way to the 30. Even if the Huskies only losses to Ohio State, I feel like we could actually go out and take them down in this game. And on first and goal, I'm going to have somebody open where it is reeled in. Our defense would then get a stop on Northern Illinois. So we're off to a perfect start. And I've hated this spacing play all season, but the route bounces from it are really good that we couldn't take. Eventually we will get that down, but now it is third and 12 and we have to try to fit it over to Malachi Harris, where I'm just as shocked as you that he held onto the football, but maybe he's getting better. If I am going to win the Heisman Trophy, it's very important that I don't turn it over and I think we're going to have a touchdown to Malachi Harris as there's no one back there, but eventually a safety would get over to it and I'm just going to step up and run for the easy touchdown where I don't make it in. I've fumbled it away to the Huskies. Are you serious? That was so close to being a good play. And even though they wouldn't follow it up with a score, I hate seeing myself turn the ball over. I mean, we still have a lead to end the first quarter, but it should definitely be 14 to zero. So we have to just make this drive a smart one. If I'm remembering right, Northern Illinois was able to score a ton of points on our defense. So I'm not going to feel comfortable unless we're up by like at least 21 and I almost broke free, but I fumbled it away to them again. And I've really got to start sliding in this game. They'd only get a field goal, but I can't believe I just lost it there as well. And this is one of my favorite plays in the game, but they're going to get instant pressure. It always either goes for a big game or a loss of yards and coach forced me to run the ball on third down where I've just fumbled it for the third time they've picked it up and I am just so upset. I've never seen something like this happen before but I better step up make some good reads and end this first half of football in the right way. With the Heisman Trophy on the line I feel like I'm choking but you know what I'm gonna trust Malachi Harris to burn his man and that's exactly what he does. The next time I'd get the ball then in the third quarter it looks like we have forced a turnover around midfield so that is a good sign of what is to come in the future and this Northern Illinois team is tough they're playing us extremely well but I've also made a lot of mistakes and we are very lucky that we somehow have a lead versus them. I want to hit Calvin Gibbs with the wheel route and he's going to hang on. So we are closing in on going
going up by 11 and eventually our slant route's going to get open. Jay Stun the seconds had a quiet second half of the year, but that was really big for us because they would score on their next drive and I'm just too short to complete that pass. That was hard to see and the bubble screen has been locked up as well, which means it is third and long, our corner route is open and please just hang on to the ball. Right now, assuming we can finish this drive off, we're in a really good position, but we have to do it first. And I'm going to let Calvin Gibbs go to work with this halfback screen, but it looks like he's going to do that, getting the first down plus a lot more. For somebody that wasn't that good as a sophomore, he's made a massive stride forward as a junior. And I'm really excited to see how everybody on this roster plays as seniors. There's a lot of players that are juniors on here. And that includes every single one of our main receiving targets where we already have a ton of chemistry with them. But some of them have got to work on catching the ball. And on third and 10, I'm going to try to pick it up with my legs where I'm not going to reach the marker. Unfortunately, my coach didn't give me the option to go for it. So I've had to watch as my defense is struggling to get a stop versus the Huskies and they're down to our five. They'd eventually score a touchdown, but we have the ball back with a few minutes remaining. And whether or not we win a MAC conference championship is pretty much all in my hands, but they boxed that up. And I can't believe that just happened to our comeback route. I'm not sure if the hitch is going to make it to the marker, but it did. And that's all we needed to move the chains against the Huskies. I have very little control over what we do in Road to Glory, so I can't just settle for a field goal and chew clock. And I also can't put hot routes out there on the field, which means there was nothing on this play that I could take besides Calvin Gibbs in the flat. We're going to have to punt it back to them. And thankfully, our defense clutched up for us. With about a minute on the clock, we have the ball approaching midfield, and all we have to get is a field goal. So I'm not that worried about it because I feel like we should be able to pull it off. And we have pretty much done that already. Our kicker has a big boot. He should make it from here, but I'm going to try to scramble for more. And their defensive linemen are quick. 15 seconds left on the clock now. All we have to do is make sure we don't turn it over. And my coach wants me to sling it, so I'll do that, but I just want to settle for three. Finally, we've gotten a play call that's going to set us up to take the game winner. And junior kicker Jordan Rogers is going to put it down the middle. It was a close call, but we have taken down the Huskies. And I've gotten my revenge, winning the Norsa MAC Conference Championship. You would think that this stat line would have won me player of the game, but because of my three fumbles, it went to Malachi Harris. And I'm just lucky that I'm still a team leader. But my main wonder is if I won the Heisman Trophy and we're about to find out. To my surprise, it wasn't even close as I got so many first place votes. So as a junior, I've taken home the Heisman Trophy for myself. And that wasn't the only one I'd get as I also won the Maxwell, the Walter Camp, and the O'Brien. But it's because I threw for over 4,700 yards with 35 touchdowns to six picks. And then on the rushing side of things, I also had 16 touchdowns. So I guess I never realized how incredible of a season I really had. And I gotta point out our kicker, Jordan Rogers, who has been perfect for the past two seasons. Now, even though we took down Northern Illinois, we still didn't crack the top 25, but we did receive some votes. And that's landed us versus Appalachian State in our bowl game. From here, I am gonna take the deep ball upgrade just to improve my throw accuracy. And I'm ready to finish my junior year. We are playing in the Independence Bowl versus Appalachian State, where I've already had to break one sack. And I'm just gonna go with the deep post over to Jay Stun the second who gets us inside the red zone. So a 59 yard reception is one of the best ways that we could have opened this game up and Calvin Gibbs is going to take the halfback screen in. Even though he's our running back, he had a much better season when it came to receiving the ball. But Appalachian State responded back, so we are in a tie game at 7-7 to and we need more points. I'm still super shocked at how well this season went. I can't believe I won the Heisman Trophy. I'm going to take the sack though. And I've not been playing as well recently because I've been wanting to go with more of the deep routes. But that led to our second drive stalling out and we need to figure things out on this third one where they just boxed up Malachi Harris. It was a pretty tight first quarter, so I'm hoping that we can pull away here in the second, and I'm just gonna take our flat to Malachi Harris, which actually worked. I guess that's a sign that I should do that more often, and all we have to do next year is win a national championship because we completed the Heisman goal. But I have a feeling that's gonna be pretty tricky to do with Northern Kentucky, especially if we lose any of our receivers. I think most of them are like 80 overalls, but you never know who could get drafted. And I can't view the depth chart, but I can see that Jay Stun the second say 91. I don't understand how he's progressed like 15 or 20 overalls in the span of just two seasons, but apparently that was third down and they held us, then scored a touchdown, so all of a sudden we find ourselves down by seven points. And I don't know why I thought we'd cruise to an easy bowl win over Appalachian State, but I was loving those four verticals play calls from my head coach, and Calvin Gibbs is going to catch this one for a few. We're getting pretty close to tying things up, but I always hate making reads down inside the red zone. I did the right thing there, but it's only because Dalen Maurice was able to get open and this halfback screen just went backwards. Because it's not a home game, I can't put hot routes out there on the field, which really hurts us. And that's the next level of coach trust, which I can unlock, which we'll worry about next year. Until then, I just scrambled to get us the easy touchdown. And that was the perfect ending to the first half that we desperately needed. After this game, I've got to check how many times we've experienced a drop this season. So I just need to remember to do that. I am going to step up and run for the first here. But I also need to try and stand tall in the pocket more because our offensive line's better. And that is exactly why I don't do it. I have to make quick reads if I do. But those only get us a few yards. And on third 
114. I think we're just going to hit Jay Stun the second over the middle. Here we go. I'm starting to get into a little bit of a rhythm. I want to take him again, and he is going to reel it in. But we need about half a yard more, and they have sent in a blitz, which means I'm just going to run for the touchdown. Since they'd only get a field goal out of their last drive, we are sitting with a four-point lead. But once again, Dalen Maurice just can't hang on to the football, and the quarterback draw will not get free. This is a very big third and three for us, so I'm just going to be safe. Go to Calvin Gibbs. And I don't know why he'd step out of bounds there, but now it's probably going to be a one-point game, and that's short. We honestly just got bailed out by the fact that their kicker does not have a strong leg, and there's nobody stepping up to me. So they should probably send more than one rusher in my direction, or they're just going to give me a lot of time. I'm pretty sure the last time we even lost in this video was against Ohio State, and that was a long time ago. So as of right now, we have got to be on like a six or seven game winning streak. And because of all the fumbles I experienced in the MAC Conference Championship game, I am starting to slide. On third and four, I can tell that they want to dial in some pressure, but they're not going to stick with Chase Dunn the second. And after finding out that he's a 91 overall, it would honestly be huge if he returned to school for a senior season. I had so much time back there and I didn't make a read, but I'm going to step up. And with this run, I am in that zone. My legs have gotten so much better as my careers progressed, but Appalachian State scored again. So we have to run out the rest of this clock and that's going to be the first first down. I'd honestly be so upset if we ended up losing this ball game to them. But as long as we get a few more yards, we can seal our win. And it comes down to this third and four where Calvin Gibbs is going to make it. It was a close call, but we have come out on top. But the real question will be how far this team can go next year. And we'll see if I can lead the Norse to a national championship. With some really hard out of conference games on the schedule, nothing will be a given. But I did just throw for almost 5,000 yards, so I should be able to lead this team. And I'm so excited to get into my senior year. But that's not going to come until next week. And after upgrading deep ball one final time, plus the offseason training results, my stats are incredible. And now I have almost perfect stats for a quarterback alongside more coach trust than I've ever had before. The ultimate goal is to get Northern Kentucky a championship though, and we all know that's not going to be easy, especially since when you look at our schedule, there are some tough matchups, and if we lose just one game, we probably won't make it into the 12-team playoffs, so it's a good thing I'm the reigning Heisman winner, and the preseason projections have us kind of close to the top 25. I think that's because senior wide receiver Jay Stun the second didn't go on to the NFL early, and even though me and him are the only two players on our team that are over 90 overall, somehow we're starting this season as a 95, so my guess is we have some really good coordinators or something, but we're not projected to win our conference. And I'm shocked by that, but hopefully I can get another Heisman Trophy, which would just add to my trophy collection where there's already four of them because I threw for almost 5,000 yards as a junior. Now, before we hop into our first game of the season against Louisville, I did want to make sure I was warmed up through practice, and I rarely go to it anymore because of how good I've gotten, but sometimes it's nice to just sling the rock against our defense. I'd end up throwing a couple interceptions, so it's a good thing that I'm already getting it out of my system early on, and there's another. This was not a good showing for me, but I think we're still going to be fine against the Cardinals, and we're stacking up our XP, so if there's ever any upgrades I want to take throughout this season, then we'd be able to afford it. And I should also mention that even though I lost coach trust, we're pretty close to becoming a field general. It would be awesome to be able to call hot routes on the road, because right now we can't do it against the Cardinals. We have to take whatever they give us, and that's going to be straight to Dalen Maurice to get us to midfield. I'm liking how this one is opening up so far, and we should be able to dot up this zone as well going back to him. So on my first drive of the day, we are flying down the field, and this is also the first time that I've ever faced off against the Cardinals. Despite NKU only being like an hour and a half away from Louisville, we've never played them before and we're going down at the two. So we don't need much more. They have us passing the ball and they get the sack. That was instant. So my offensive line didn't even give me a chance. That should have been intercepted. And I've got to be a little bit more careful with the ball. Our slants open and there we go. I wasn't expecting Dalen Maurice to hold on to it after last year, but maybe as a senior, he's going to finally get good at catching and he does it again. Of all the games on our schedule this season, this is definitely one of the harder ones. So we need to be careful. And I can't believe that I'm watching this play from the sidelines. I must have gotten injured. By the time I'm back out there, it is still 7-3 to three and we aren't going to go anywhere with the halfback screen. So I'm surprised that my coach wants us to run it back and this time Calvin Gibbs again doesn't do very much but he stiff arms someone. So at least he tried his best and on third down we are going to have Dalen Maurice for another reception. As a sophomore he had a good season out of the slot for us so it's nice to be using him again and on the run we are able to find Jace on the second. So even though last year we dealt with our receivers dropping the ball over 30 times, I think this year we'll be fine and on third and three I'm going to step up to try to get it myself where with my legs I'm able to do so. It would be nice if I could pass for another touchdown and we're getting closer but I don't get why my coach won't simply let me hand this ball off and I'm gonna find Evan Carter Jr. Our defense would also hold the Cardinals so things are looking pretty good for us. Dalen Maurice is gonna bring this one in and the senior has 120 receiving yards before halftime but he's not done because he's created separation to take it inside the 10. I am so happy with how this one's going for us so far and I need somebody to get open. If not I will take off with my legs and that's gonna make it 21 to 3 versus Louisville. I'm honestly just shocked at 
how well our defense is playing to get us the ball back within 30 seconds. And if we can keep this up, I'm starting to feel very confident about our chance at making the playoffs. It's been a long four years for Northern Kentucky, but Dalen Maurice is open and he is gone. So I had a perfect first half and I'm not sure if it's even going to matter that Louisville got a kick return for a touchdown. I haven't needed hot routes in this one either. They're going to leave the middle of the field wide open for me to take off and that defender had a bad pursuit angle. There's just one more of these guys to beat. But from past mistakes, I've learned to either slide or just run out of bounds. And I was expecting us to play this well against some max schools, but not Louisville on the road. I mean, it hasn't even been close. I'm completing everything. So I can't be upset at Evan Carter Jr. for dropping that football and I'm just going to run down some clock. By the time we're inside the 10, there's only about a minute left in this third quarter and Calvin Gibbs goes to the house. So if you're new to this series, you're probably shocked at how this is going. But this result has been four hard years of work in the making and my stat line ended up turning out super well. So we have almost 7,500 XP and that means that I'm going to make myself a little bit quicker. Right now, you're probably wondering how the computer would ever stop me, but you have to keep in mind that I'm playing on Heisman. So honestly, anything could happen as I try to become a field general. And there are definitely some stat categories that I need to still make sure I improve upon. After doing that in our bye week, we're taking on Western Kentucky. So we have another in-state matchup coming up and I'm hoping that we can eventually crack the top 25, but we're still not receiving votes. It should be no surprise I'm still leading the race for the Heisman though. And that's because I won player of the week with my six touchdowns, which would be nice to replicate versus the Hilltoppers. Our rivals got off to a great start against us, already scoring a touchdown, so we're going to have to respond back. And we've brought out the camo jerseys in this one where Calvin Gibbs gets like seven yards. I want to prove that we're the best team in the state of Kentucky, but we still need to make sure we beat them and then the Wildcats next week. So we got a lot of results that we still have to make sure we pick up, but this is by far the best roster that we have had at Northern Kentucky yet, and that's going to be close to a first. I'm not sure I like the halfback screen play call on third and inches, but Calvin Gibbs should be able to get it. And now that we're inside the red zone, it's back to going on the ground where this gets a couple. If they're pressing here, this would be such an easy touchdown, but they weren't, so I couldn't take it to Dalen Maurice. Instead, I'm scrambling, and that's going to the crib. Then our defense would instantly get us an interception, which is nice, because we could get another touchdown versus them relatively easily, and I can't believe I threw that. They fooled me. I thought that was man-to-man -man coverage. It wasn't, but we can take our hitch, and Dunn goes backwards. But instead of kicking a field goal here, my head coach is letting me go for it, and I had to go back to Evan Carter Jr. He was my favorite target last season. Calvin Gibbs punches it in, and with our defense stopping Western Kentucky for the second time today already. We have a real opportunity to pull away here and with my legs I'm going to take it to about the 40 yard line. That was a really good first quarter offensively and I'm hoping that this is press man to man coverage because I want to throw it up to our tight end if he's quicker but it turns out he isn't. I still haven't thrown my first interception of the year but I do make stupid reads every so often and I'm shocked at how little we're running the football with the Norse right now but that was almost really bad and with the halfback screen Calvin Gibbs is boxed up. Not being able to call hot routes here makes this really difficult to pick up but I'm going to trust he has the speed to outrun that linebacker and that was a perfect throw. Our halfback laid out to make the diving catch and if the Hilltoppers thought they had a chance they would need their defense to be playing much better against me. Even though we're performing like this right now I already know some Mac school is going to come out and try to upset us and get pretty close to doing it. So even when we get to conference play we're going to have to be very careful especially whenever we're on the road. I'm pretty certain that if we lose even one game there's zero chance of us making the playoffs because we play in such a weak conference. So we have got to keep up performing this well and that's another touchdown. It's honestly game changing now that our defense is getting stops. I was scared of taking a four verticals there but I'm able to use my legs to get around the defense and that's one thing that I really couldn't do at the beginning of this series. I also have Dalen Maurice with that corner route and he is not going to be able to break free but he does get us inside the red zone and with man-to-man -man coverage he should get open again where he goes down at the three. I wish I could run the clock down before trying to get in here but I'm not able to. So maybe it's a good thing that we didn't score there and I hope our C route gets open. That defender's kind of in the area. I did not want to take it, but we still haven't punched it in, and finally we're going to be able to do so, which just makes that half perfect. During this season, if there's any games like this one where we have huge leads and it's clearly already over, I'm not going to show all the plays, but just know things could not be going any better for us, and there's another touchdown. Going into the fourth quarter, we're still up 35, and I'm pretty sure if I get us in here, that'd be my eighth touchdown of the day, but that ball was dropped, so now we have to try and do it on the ground, and I am not able to. It is third and goal now, and this play call was pretty rough. Nobody got open, but late we're going to have our one. And in the end, we beat the Hilltoppers 70 to 14. Most of that later work was done by our backups. So clearly somebody at NKU's been recruiting well. And with a stat line like that, I'm setting myself up to win back-to-back -back Heismans. Being the National Player of the Week's no longer a big accomplishment. And honestly, I would love if I could afford this upgrade to max out my acceleration, but we're currently on a bye week. So I'd need to have one of my best practices ever to put up 3000 XP. And we are going to open it up with a catch. The issue though is ever since I haven't had
had that many big plays. So maybe this one could go for a lot. And there we go. I feel like I'm getting closer and closer. I only need a thousand XP now, but that's going to take a lot. And with four reps left, I think I still need like 500 XP. So we'll see if I can get there. What it would probably take is a touchdown play. So I'm going to try to roll out and see if I can hit a deep post. But instead, I ended up scrambling. And it looks like on this next one, they're going to send in a blitz. I'm going to take it over to Harris. But they tackled him. So I have to make sure I at least complete a pass on this one. And I think I'm going to have to take off instead. I was able to get us up to 9,002 XP though. So in the closest call of all time, I'm going to be able to max out my acceleration and I'm quickly becoming a perfect quarterback. I also earned enough coach trust to become a field general. And that's going to be huge because in the next five weeks, we play Northern Illinois, Kentucky, and then number two, Notre Dame. So that should help us out. And it looks like we're receiving more votes than the Huskies. Whoever wins this game will be ranked in our conference and we're on our home field for the first time this year. To start this game, our defense got a stop and then we're running a terrible wide receiver screen. So my coach set me up for failure with that one. And I cannot believe that I have already thrown an interception in this game. That's my first one of the season. Then Evan Carter Jr. decided to drop the ball. So we are struggling against the Huskies. And on third and six, we just have to make sure that we keep the chains moving. So I'm glad that he held on. Dalen Maurice has been surprisingly consistent for us. I don't want to jinx it or anything, but he's going to come away with the football again. And I'll let Calvin Gibbs try to do something here where he gets almost nothing. I wouldn't be surprised if they keyed in on stopping me here. And that's what they did, but I was able to get us more than I thought. So now it is third down. And I think I'm just going to take our drag over to our tight end, which moves the chains and he gets to the one. It's on me to help us finish this off now. And that's what I'm going to do. And then our defense would force a three and out. So we have an opportunity to take a lead with this drive. I'm honestly still in shock that this game started the way that it did versus them, but we've bounced back from that. And I'm just making smart read after smart read. My stats during this season are hopefully going to look way better than they have in the past. And I could have used a block there, but I didn't get it. So now it's second second and seven. This is one of my favorite plays, but they're not running man to man. And this is going to end badly. We have got to make sure that we at least stay in field goal range. And I can't take anything too stupid here. So I might as well scramble where this isn't going to make it. And this is the best man to man coverage that we've seen all season. If their offense hadn't taken a step back from last year, I'm afraid that we'd actually be losing to the Huskies right now. But instead they've struggled and it looks like with four verticals, I'm going to have somebody, but I couldn't get it out in time. And I am injured for the second time this year already. We get the touchdown down, but they'd score one as well before I'd get thrown out there with about 30 seconds left in this half. And I just have to play this one smart. The last time I waited for one of those four verticals to eventually get open, I got injured, but this time it's going to work out for us. And my coach continues to call the most OP play in the game over and over where this is going to be dropped. I don't know what's happened to Evan Carter Jr. Our tight end, but he's starting to struggle more and more. So it's a good thing that he made up for it by holding on to that football. And to start the third quarter, we have the ball, which is a good sign that we should be able to hold on to our lead and get the win versus them. I mean, all we need is a touchdown on this drive and we'd have a three possession lead. I have to try to bomb them deep just to see if it works. And those are the type of plays that I'm expecting to see out of our tight end. I think Northern Illinois tried their best, but there's only so much that they're able to do. And with our defense continuing to get us the ball back, they're in a lot of trouble. Dalen Maurice isn't going to get this though, but that's not going to stop me from trying it again as I think he's going to beat 38 and he is able to do it. I don't understand why the Huskies think they can press our best receivers, but it makes my life 10 times easier. And on on a third and goal, I'm going to just throw it over to Thompson, but I honestly hit the wrong button and that should have been picked off. From there, I thought that would be it, but Northern Illinois is determined to stay in this game and they did not bite on that wheel route. I've thrown another pick. That's the first one that's been my fault. And I got greedy trying to put up some amazing stats because with a touchdown now, we find ourselves only up by 11, but that's a big play. Evan Carter Jr. breaks the tackle and I still believe that it would be pretty hard for us to lose this game because they cannot play defense. I mean, even if they continue to score, they have to get the ball back back to get more points. And I just don't see that happening. Calvin Gibbs is going to help us move the chains with this one. But my coach kept on calling halfback draws and they were all over it. So they are going to get a stop. And as I'm watching this from the sidelines, I'm not happy because they're getting it super close. I mean, we should have had the interception there, which would have ended it, but instead they're going to make that catch. And on fourth and goal, all we have to do is get the stop, which we do. As long as we don't take a safety, we are going to stay undefeated and that will do it. Thank you, Calvin Gibbs. But I'm honestly not too happy about how this went because even though we got a really good result and my stat line looked great. I threw two picks. So I'm just glad that I'm still a field general and I could become a household name soon. That's the last level I really care to reach, but you can see those turnovers affected my Heisman odds. So I would be upset, but Northern Kentucky is ranked for the first time in this road to glory. And it's only taken us four years to surpass Kentucky, which is crazy, but they're one and three and we're favored to win. I'm playing against my favorite team in one of the biggest games remaining this season where Dalen Maurice already makes a catch. And I have been ripping apart every defense that I've faced off against.
against so far, so I'd expect us to do the same today. The key to my success hasn't been going for as many deep shots, but instead taking whatever they give us underneath like this. And eventually that'll open up everything else so later on in the game I can throw whatever and that's going to be a laser. They'd only get a field goal on their first drive, so we have them exactly where we want them to be. But I couldn't get that throw away with the ball, so we're just gonna have to pick this up and it looks like we will. Dalen Maurice is already having a fantastic day for us with like 100 yards. And if they want to start focusing more on him, I'm gonna get some other guys involved. Here on second and seven, I'm expecting man-to-man, -man, but it was zone, and I'm gonna be very careful here where I can't get it out. So that's definitely on me for hesitating, but we're still gonna move the chains on third and 12. And I've yet to throw an incompletion in this match. I might as well sling this one, and he's wide open. I cannot believe that I went from being a 45 overall to being this dominant, but even with that in mind, I'm still not sure if we're gonna be capable of winning a championship this final season. I mean, we're playing really well against some decent schools, but we also haven't faced off against a top opponent yet, and that Notre Dame game midseason could be a big wake-up call for us. I'm not sure how it's gonna go, but I'm looking forward to it, and I can get the first here. It's honestly just super important that we continue to make sure we take care of business, and I'm gonna get sacked. So I'll give Kentucky's defense credit for that. They have been pretty good at stopping my scrambling, and I hate that we're going with a wide receiver screen on third and 17, but I didn't even want to take it. It worked out for us because we'd punt it back to the Wildcats, and then we get a safety almost instantly. So everything is going our way, and they tried to send in a blitz, but it's not going to get in in time. We get it over to Dunn the second. This has been another incredible first half when it comes to me throwing the football because I'm already over 250 yards, but these wide receiver screens are getting locked up. I cannot outrun Kentucky either, but we're going to have that up the seam and they read me like a book. I threw that way too late. And with the Wildcats scoring, they have this one back within a possession. I was so confident we were cruising to the easiest wins ever, but now we're starting to struggle. And I just know that that turnover is going to really hurt my Heisman odds because I already was struggling after throwing two of them last week. But I also didn't have my eye on the clock and I've just realized that we're probably going to go the half without getting more points. I mean, I'd thread the needle and then call an instant timeout. But for our kicker to hit from 55 yards out, that would be insane and he doesn't. Kentucky would also start the second half by getting a field goal. And I just hope that this drive goes well for us because right now it looks like this is going to be a close game. It is not a good sign that we're struggling versus a 1-3 and three SEC school, but we pick it up. And even with the mistakes I've made, I'm still sitting at 17 for 20 on the day. So it's not like I'm playing bad and I've been called for another quarterback draw, but it didn't work. Now it's third down and with this drag, I had to give it to Evan Carter Jr. again. He is my go-to target whenever I need us to pick up a gain and I put that perfectly on the money, but we still have a bit to go if we want to reach the end zone here and I just got flattened. That is what happens every single time I don't slide and my coach wants me to run a halfback swing play, but they were all over it. I've been trying to change some of his play calls, but the options to switch to other things aren't any better and going into the fourth quarter, we have a huge third down. To be honest, I'm just going to stare down this left side of the field where Dalen Maurice broke the press, and then our defense would force a fumble, so we have the ball back already, which is great. I was genuinely worried for a second, but now I feel like we should be able to just take care of business, and I've lost the football because I tried to run for the first. So again, I'm making mistakes, and it's a good thing that in the end it shouldn't matter, because by the time there's a minute left, we're still up by seven, but we have struggled to run out the rest of the clock, and I hate this play call on third and long. Kentucky would then get a huge punt return so they could tie it all up here but we stop them and I'm so relieved that we're leaving our home field with a win. We've started to own the Wildcats which I really appreciate and Dalen Maurice won player of the game so that's when you know that my stat line wasn't that impressive. The real issue is I got sacked seven times and I'm not sure how with that performance I went up in the Heisman watch. I am happy to see the only other team that looks to be that good in our division is Ohio though and we're going to play them on the road after we play at Western Michigan but then there's the Notre Dame game. These next three matchups mean so much for this team and last season and we barely survived against the Broncos, so we need to be careful. This is our first road game in conference play, and they could catch us off guard, so I need to get the ball out a little bit quicker, clearly, and that's gonna be reeled in. Now, unfortunately, I have noticed pretty quickly that I'm not able to make any hot routes on the road, which is a big problem, because that means I'm no longer a field general, but Calvin Gibbs just had a great play, and on third and inches, we should go back to him. If they focus on him, though, I'm gonna pull it and keep it myself, as there's a lot of space in front of me, and they just hit me as hard as they could. We're gonna try to get this over to Malachi Harris, but I was honestly afraid it wouldn't work, and we'll take the C route again if it does. This has been a solid opening drive, and their man-to-man -man coverage kind of stuck there, but I still threw it to our fourth wide receiver, and now I'm glad that I did. It's so nice that the Broncos also weren't able to do anything offensively, because we already have it back. We could go up 14-0, to and nobody's on Jace on the second. Whatever coverage they were running there, it wasn't any good, and they keep on leaving the flats wide open, so I might as well continue to look there, and it seems like we are going to have have Maurice over the middle.
field. I just need to get my team five more yards through the air to get the touchdown, and I do. But the next time we're getting the ball, it's going to be on our own five-yard line, and that's pretty intimidating. With one mistake, we could find ourselves in a little bit of trouble, and I just got it out in time. So at least now we're out of the danger zone, and I'm not sure if I should try to be throwing this up to our tight end right now, but sometimes you have to take shots like that. If that was a linebacker on him, he would have definitely been gone, and I'm getting it out quick again. So as long as I don't turn it over, I'm on track to bounce back from my last two performances, and I just want to hand it off to Calvin Gibbs. So now it is third and long for the Norse, and I probably could have scrambled to the right side of the field if I saw it quicker. I'm going to throw it on the run, and it's not on target. Unfortunately, after that, the Broncos would score a touchdown, so now we find ourselves in a one-possession game versus them, and they're doing their best to keep this one interesting and also close. I'd feel a lot better about how this one's going to go if we could end this drive with another touchdown, and so far it looks like we're on pace to do so. I see Calvin Gibbs over there with no one on him, but now my coach wants me to run four verticals, so you know I'm going to sling it deep, and Thompson goes to the end zone. I'm pretty happy with how that went. We also have the ball back with about 30 seconds left in the half, and they've left me way too much time because I can pick apart this defense. Even without being able to put hot routes out there on the field, I'm not struggling too much, but that defensive end was pretty quick, and I'm just going to run out of bounds. Now there's 15 seconds left on the clock, but that's man-to-man, -man. and now I'm just going to stare down Jay Stun the second, which panned out. I mean, as long as our defense continues to hold it down, they're not going to stand a chance, and that seems to be the case of what's going to happen. I should try to beat them over the top with our tight end, but I underthrew it into a pick, and I cannot believe that I just turned it over there. That should have been an easy touchdown, but instead, I made another mistake that's going to hurt my stat line, and that's the one thing I didn't want to do. I think it's going to be more difficult than I was expecting to win back-to-back -back Heismans, but we'll see. I might be able to pull it off, and that's a first. As long as we're able to end this drive with a touchdown, I'm going to feel pretty good about closing it out, and here on second and one with a little bit of play action, I'm going to roll out, find our comeback route, and that's a great throw. Things are honestly going pretty well still, even though I'm super bummed out about the turnover I had, and I don't know who number 81 is, but I've been staring him down, and with this corner route, he's going to reach the end zone. At the end of the day, we'd close this one out with another win, and I threw for one more touchdown to get myself up to six total, so that's how the final score looks this bad, and I'm just happy that I'm going to become a field general again. With that result, if the season ended right now, we would be in the 12-team playoff, but now we're going to have to step up because we're playing on the road at Ohio, and this game could decide who wins our division. With a spot in the conference championship on the line, I cannot afford to have a bad performance, and this is the best possible start as Malachi Harris catches it, and there is nobody that's going to catch him. That was our first play of the game, and within a minute, Ohio would respond back with their own touchdown, so you can tell what type of matchup this is going to be. We're the best two teams in our division, and whoever comes out on top of this one is probably going to win it, so it's very important. And it's always a rare thing to hand it off to Calvin Gibbs, but it looks like he's going to take this one for two. I think that's why our coach just doesn't have us run the ball that much, and Dalen Maurice dropped it. So it's third and nine, the halfback screen over to Calvin Gibbs kind of works, and he is going to take it for the first down plus a lot more. Whenever that's the play call, you never know what's going to happen, but my coach loves it, and I'm going to be able to escape the pocket here to scramble with my own legs. I need to get a block, and that's exactly what I have. I probably could have thrown it, but that worked as well, and if I want to feed this into somebody, it's going to be our backup running back. So now we're down on the half inch line, and with the halfback toss, we're going to get in. Then our defense would get a stop, and it looks like they're going with man-to-man -man coverage, so I have to try and bomb them deep, but Dalen Maurice was not able to drag a foot with this catch, and that's frustrating because I put that one perfectly on the money. This is the final play of the first quarter, and I think I'm going to have to try and take our tight end up the seam, which works, but that was kind of a risky read to make in that situation, and I'm just glad that it paid off for us. I'm going to be able to find him again for this play, and you got to wonder if the Bobcats are going to figure out how to stop our offense. We've already had almost 200 total yards, and I don't think I see anything here, but I still get it to Dalen, so it's very clear to me that they can't stop our wide receivers, and what a throw. They had a defender in the area that could have definitely played that, but I made sure that I high-pointed this pass, and 42 didn't jump. Then, once Ohio got inside the red zone, our defense would force a huge fumble to get us the ball back. So even though they've played pretty well, we could go up by three possessions here and there's no way they're going to keep up with Dalen Maurice who just dusted them. Our receivers might struggle to catch the ball, but they also have some speed on them and that's going to be an interception. I didn't think Ryder was going to get over to that football. So I always make a mistake and that could have led to the Bobcats scoring points, but they didn't. I have so much time back here in the pocket and it's just going to be whoever I want to take. Evan Carter Jr. breaks free down to the eight. It's not even halftime and I've already thrown for almost 300 yards in this game. And with 46 seconds left in the half, we have it back again where that's going over to Malachi Harris to get us to midfield. And the goal is to definitely put up some more points just because we can where I see Calvin Gibbs and he brings it in. That was a little bit of a late read, but it did work out for us. And they sent in a blitz where I fumble it away. Hall's going to pick this up and don't tell me he's about to break free. That's another turnover from me. And I'm a little worried that the Bobcats have it within seven points. I'm going to keep this read option though. And if 
these blocks would hold up, I might be gone. I got around that one defender just one more to beat now. But you can definitely tell there that my top end speed just isn't where it needs to be yet, and Malachi Harris just took that in easily. That has to be one of the worst attempts I've ever seen at making a tackle. And then with the Bobcats failing to get points on their next drive, we're up by 14. I don't understand why our coach is so insistent on us running halfback screens over and over. But now it's going to be third and four, where Calvin Gibbs is not going to make it to the marker. It doesn't seem to matter that they're able to get stops on us, though, because we keep getting it back. And I think we're about to get the result we were looking for in one of our biggest games of the year. We've already come out on top of some of the most difficult matchups on our schedule, but the Notre Dame one's going to be even more difficult, and I'm going to have Dalen Maurice where he gets into the end zone. Being able to double the score of the second best team in our division should tell you how solid we are, and I might be able to get a touchdown. But unfortunately, they caught me right before I broke free, and from there, we just run out the rest of the clock. So we've been moved all the way up to number eight in the country, and Notre Dame has fallen down to number 16, but that's because they're coming off of back-to-back -back losses, and I'm sure they're going to come out playing really well against us. So we'll see what happens in the future, and we have to put the rest of the Mac on our back. To do that, I am going to increase some of my running abilities, and it's time to see how good NKU actually is. This could be the hardest game that I've ever had to play in my career, and we have the ball first where the wide receiver screen gets open, but we lose yards. You know, I gotta say, so far, I'm not too happy with the options we've had when it comes to play calling against the Irish, but we got close to getting the first, and Calvin Gibbs fought his heart out, but they scored a touchdown quickly, so we already find ourselves down 7-0, to and I can't believe it's another screen play on second down. These options have been driving me insane, and on third, and 13. It looks like our drag to Carter Jr. isn't going to make it. So we're down 14 to 0 pretty early on against them. And it's another halfback screen, so I've got to change the play. Hopefully, I can get a big gain for us here. Their man to man coverage looks like it's pretty solid, though. And on the run, I'm going to throw it over to Dalen Maurice, which was definitely needed in that situation. And I have him again here, but they're going to call that a fumble. Are you serious right now? That should not have been a turnover. But now we find ourselves down 17 to 0 in the most important game of our season. And I don't know if it's going to be possible to make the playoffs if we lose this. As a one-loss Mac school last year, there was no chance Northern Illinois was able to sneak in, and that was marked as a fourth and in inches. So they got the ball back to get another field goal against us, and look at that. Dalen Maurice confused that defender. He is gone. This is how we have to start the third quarter. Please tell me he doesn't get caught. I was starting to get super worried about how we were doing, but at least something finally went right offensively, and they would score again. These drops are driving me nuts, and we're just not playing well versus the Irish. So I'm gonna need Evan Carter Jr. to get open on third and 12, and that's what he does. If we want any chance of coming back in this game, there is absolutely zero room for error. But one of my favorite routes to take in this series that gets open like 90% of the time doesn't do it versus Notre Dame. And on the run, I find Harris, but he dropped it. I am starting to lose my mind on this third and long. I think I'm just going to step up and pick it up with my legs because I'm able to get around all these defenders, but I didn't hold on to the football and everything is going wrong for us today. I legitimately don't think things could be going any worse. And after scoring another touchdown, I've just accepted that we aren't going to beat Notre Dame in this game. This loss alone should be enough to make sure that we don't get into the playoffs, but you never know, there could be a chance. And I'll be interested to see how far we drop, but we did not compete with them the way I thought we would. Last year, we played against Ohio State and did a lot better, but we've also been really unlucky versus the Irish, and I'm just gonna roll out and wait for Malachi Harris to get open where he comes away with the ball to get us to the 10. Obviously, we stand almost no chance at coming back with this much time left, but you never know what could happen. We could get lucky with some onside kicks, and I love that my offensive line just gave up there, but we still get in. We need to get really lucky and that's not going to happen. Temple is able to pick up that football and I shouldn't even be surprised that Notre Dame would get another touchdown. I honestly thought our defense was special but after this performance I think they're pretty rough against good schools and the only reason I'm still playing this game is because I want to put up better stats to hopefully win the Heisman Trophy but I'm going to throw a pick. That was such a stupid read to make at the end to make this performance even worse from me. I am not happy with how that went and I think I need to start going to practice again. I've already thrown six interceptions which is just as many as I had last year, but at least the touchdown totals have been nice because I'm no longer a field general. That means no hot routes on the road versus Akron, but it shouldn't be an issue since they're 74 overall, and the fact that we've only fallen to 15 actually gives me hope that we can still make the playoffs. I mean, our remaining five games shouldn't be difficult besides maybe at Central Michigan, and we've taken down the other team in our division that could keep us out of the conference championship, so then we'd have an opportunity to probably face Toledo, who's ranked in the top 25, and even with a bad game versus Notre Dame, I'm still number one for the Heisman. Now, before we play Akron, and I have returned to practice just to get better again. Malachi Harris broke that. And because I haven't been in the lab as much as I was last season, that's probably why I'm throwing so many picks. I really haven't needed to be much because I've been a 99 overall for a while, but maybe this will end up helping me because I'm getting a lot better with these deep shots. I honestly just wanted to get enough coach trust to become a field general again, and it's time to take on the zips. After losing our first game of the season, I'm 
playing on the road, so we have to make sure we bounce back because if we can't, we're definitely going to miss out on the playoffs. And I don't love that I can't call hot routes in this game, but there's still some good reads to make. As of recently, Dalen Maurice has started to drop the ball a lot more, but I'm going to give him another opportunity. And hopefully trusting him like that will allow him to start playing a lot better with this quarterback draw. I'm going to get us 20 yards. So now we're getting closer to scoring a touchdown and that's going to go to Evan Carter. This is exactly how we needed to open up the game versus the Zips. I'm very proud of it. And apparently that wasn't a touchdown, so I'm going to have to take it in. Now at this point in the year, it's no surprise when my defense gets a stop and the chemistry that I'm building up with some of these guys has been insane, but they boxed up this wide receiver screen where I actually thought that I could outrun that guy. And that was such a stupid decision from me. I think Calvin Gibbs stepped out of bounds before catching it. And if I'm being smart, I shouldn't force it on this third and 23 because that's just going to lead to a turnover against Akron. Instead, I'd simply just let our defense get us the ball back. And this could be a 95 yard drive if we're able to finish it off with a touchdown. We had to start it deep in our own territory, but I think we're going to be okay. Evan Carter Jr. hasn't gotten that much separation and that could have been picked, but I figured my ball placement would be a little bit better and it was on this one. I'm still super upset with how we played against the Irish. That was a great blitz. And it's almost like we lost all the momentum that we had at the start of the season, but hopefully we can get it back in these coming weeks. I mean, it doesn't help that some of the play calling's been terrible, but we should be okay as long as our defense continues to force turnovers, and I see that we have a wide open Malachi Harris over there. I'm kind of impressed that he managed to not score, because he had an easy running lane to the end zone, and he didn't take it. Now it's third and goal, and with no hot routes out there, I have to make the right read, but Jay Stun the second came back to school instead of going on to the NFL, so I should honestly be looking in his direction more than I do, because he's our best wide receiver on this team, and I got sacked. It's all good, though, because they're running man-to-man -man coverage, which means we're gonna have him. And my stats in this performance have been pretty solid so far, but they stuck with our tight end. I'm used to that route getting wide open, and I could have Dalen Maurice if my arm can get it far enough, which it kinda did, but he still had to come back to it, and I'm gonna easily run it in for us. I don't know what's changed between this week and last week, but now our defense doesn't wanna give up a single point, and it must have been a wake-up call. My fear, though, is even if we do make it to the college football playoffs, we're gonna get destroyed, and winning a championship's the last goal of this series, but I only have this year. I'm very happy with how things have gone since I started as a 45 overall. I didn't even know if all of this would be possible, and this is my biggest run yet, or at least close to it. It felt like it was a lot longer than it was, and to take Northern Kentucky to this level has been impressive, but there's still a lot of work that I have to do the rest of this season. Being 17 to 20 in this game, I'm bouncing back versus the Zips, and I'll probably score another touchdown to end the third quarter because our defense forced an interception, but that would be the last time that I would see the field, and I'm fine with that because my stat line looks solid, but the most impressive thing about this game was our defense getting a shutout. I think it could be a close call because our strength of schedule isn't going to be the highest, but we're climbing back up the pulse. We should make it into the playoffs, and we just have to make sure that we win out. Any loss at this point in the season would be detrimental to how the rest of the year goes, and Miami, Ohio is normally one of the better teams in the MAC, but not this season. They're sitting at 4-5, and five, so I'm honestly not as worried about facing them as I normally am as Harris gets us the first, and we're coming off a 38-0 win versus Akron, so we are playing some good football. The Notre Dame game is still in the back of my head, but that's only because I was shocked at how bad we lost to them. I'm going to be able to scramble for this first and maybe a bit more, but I lost it. And no matter how many times I remind myself to slide when playing Road to Glory, I always end up forgetting to do so, and our backup tight end just got boxed. That is why we need Evan Carter Jr. back out there, and he got a ton of separation. So we're going to reach the end zone early on versus the Red Hawks. And just like expected, we're getting the ball back after our defense held them to zero. If we could get back-to-back -back shutouts, that would be pretty cool. I don't think I've ever done that before. And I got to say, I'm very proud of how much Northern Kentucky improved with me because now we're experiencing less drops than ever before, and this is going to be caught to take us to the 30. Of all the Road to Glory series I've done on this game, this has to be my favorite one so far. Calvin Gibbs broke that tackle, and he's still up, but he lost the football, and Miami, Ohio picks it up. It's not going to matter since they can't do anything with it, but now this will be the final play of the first quarter, and I got to throw it away. This hasn't been our best showing ever, but I feel like because we're playing against Miami, Ohio, we're playing down to our competition, and that's bad. They would get a field goal on their next drive, but we still have a lead versus them, and Harris couldn't get free. So I guess we're back to running another halfback screen, and I can't believe they keep calling it. I can only change the plays so many times, but I guess I need to be doing it more often now. And if I could just get the next level of coach trust, I would then have the option to change it 20 times a game, which would be double of what I have right now. So if we want any chance in the playoffs, I think that's something I need to unlock. To do so, I have to cut out the turnovers, so I've been taking more checkdowns than deep shots, and the only longer routes I'm throwing are the routes that I know will get open. Even then, sometimes I'm caught by surprise, but there's a touchdown. And with a minute and a half left in this second quarter, I have an opportunity to get us some more points where I'm going to take off and I should just slide. It was not worth being that risky to get six yards. And what was that pressure? I 
swear, Heisman mode cheats you out all the time. That person instantly glitched around our whole team. And I just love that our defense continues to force stops for us because it is still 14 to three. After they held us near the end of the second quarter, they had two opportunities to get points, but they couldn't do it. And I see that they have Malachi Harris over on an island there, but I didn't take it over to him. We actually have Dalen Maurice deep and what a pass that was. Just take it into the crib. Normally after I figure out if they're running man to man or zone, it's not too hard to break apart the defense, especially when I'm able to put hot routes out there like this curl route that always beats man to man. Because of stuff like that and my knowledge with this game, I feel like we would have a chance in the playoffs. I had to try and attempt a deep play, but it turns out that our best wide receiver isn't able to burn by a Mac cornerback. And here on first and 10, I am going to roll out to hopefully take X, but they have another defender over there. He was on the other receiver. And of course, I'm going to throw my seventh pick of the season and miss the tackle. I don't know what I was thinking, but my coach trust just got hit hard. And I don't like how common of an occurrence turnovers are becoming. If I'm going to win the Heisman Trophy, I have got to figure out how I'm going to cut them out. And after getting a stop, Miami, Ohio would score against us. So technically this game's not over. And my coach seems to want to keep it on the ground with Calvin Gibbs, but he doesn't do much. It is frustrating whenever it's all out of my hands and I just have to feed it to him, but the halfback screen could have worked. And now that the Red Hawks have it within a possession, we've got to be careful, but I'm still going to sling it to my favorite target. It's honestly a shock to me that we are in a close game with them because we have dominated this game, but it's college football. So you can always lose to any team and I am going for the deep bomb on them, but it's not it. For as much as Dalen's improved, he still isn't good at dragging a foot. And I'm not sure if we're in field goal range, so we need to make sure we run clock. But my coach is calling pass and plays. And on third and nine, Calvin Gibbs is going to take it all the way to the first down marker. With things out of my control, we needed him to step up there to seal this game. And I can't chew the clock, but I am able to run out the rest of it where I might as well try and get a touchdown. The quarterback draw is one of the worst plays that I have to run in this game, but sometimes it works. And now my coach wants me to get down on my knees. It was closer than we would have liked, but we still got the right result. And there's just a few games left in the year now. So I feel like the Heisman Trophy is probably mine, but I'm a little bit worried because we're not moving up in the college football playoff poll. So we might not sneak in. And with this upgrade, my speed's going to go up by two. As for my coach trust in the next three games, we need to get another thousand. So that's our goal as we finish out the rest of the season. This is one of the last few conference games that I'm ever going to play in my career. And it still blows my mind how quick this series has flown by for us, but it's been very fun. So hopefully we can take care of business at home against Bowling Green. And it would be so nice if I could just avoid turning the ball over in this matchup versus them. So far, I've yet to throw an incompletion, but the game also just started. And since they're two and seven, I don't think they're going to give us any issues. They're not able to guard Jace on the second. And even though he's our best receiver on paper, he hasn't had the best of years because Dalen Maurice gets all the targets. We just need eight more yards now and Calvin Gibbs is going to go backwards. So I don't understand why my coach wants me to hand it off again because it doesn't work. It's a shame we can't run the ball, but we got to stop resorting to doing so on third down. I'm taking the sack and the Falcons are going to hold us to just a field goal. Now, because of how good our defense is, that might be the only points that we're going to need to win this game, but I'm sure we'll end up getting more and Calvin Gibbs continues to struggle. I'd love for him to just break off one or two runs against them, but because he can't make it happen, it's all on me to move it through the air. And that's what I've done here. I'm hoping that this time in the red zone, we're able to finish it off. And I think we're getting close, but it was a slow offensive first quarter. And I love that we're passing instead of running because we're going to have somebody open in the flat and I should have taken the slant instead. I've yet to throw an incompletion. So I'm trying my best to keep that streak going, but I'm afraid that's not going to go well for me here as I have to throw it away. And now my coach just wants to let me hand it off to Calvin Gibbs, but he doesn't get in. We are going for it on fourth and goal. I'm glad he gave me the option, but our offensive line just let them get by freely and I'm going to have to take it in myself. That was a very chaotic play and I definitely got set up for failure, but it worked out in the end besides the fact that we missed the extra point and Bowling Green still hasn't been able to get onto the board. But after back-to-back -back drops, it's third and 10 and thankfully Jace done the second picks it up. I honestly never know what to expect out of our offense and Evan Carter Jr. just got a lot of separation. So that's nice to see. I don't know why we're even trying to incorporate play action because they know we're not going to run it, but it is all good with this first and 10 play call. They have a quarterback spy out there set up to stop me and he did. If I could continue to boost up my speed, that's about the only thing I could still work on in this series and Calvin Gibbs got some good blocks, but now we're going to let our best wide receiver take it with the jet sweep and he got blown up. Being able to go through this whole road to glory with the creative team makes me so excited for the new game if we can have team builder. And I think we're going to have another drive that stalls out because another halfback screen was called, but we're able to pick it up plus a lot more. Calvin Gibbs foot hit the pylon. So we're going to get a touchdown. And with 42 seconds left in the second quarter, things are looking good for us. I almost wanted to try to throw it up there, but instead I've decided to scramble. So I'm avoiding doing anything risky. And after rolling out, it looks like our flat is the only thing that was really open here. I'm just waiting for them to press one of our best receivers, but it hasn't happened. So I'm methodically having to work it down the field against them. We only have one timeout left. So this has got to go for a first down. 
but because it didn't, time is ticking off of the clock fast, and this is going to be caught at the one yard line. I wish my coach would let me be aggressive here, but that was probably the right move to make it a three possession game because Bowling Green started the second half with a score. I feel like it shouldn't be too difficult to have more success in this one and close it out, but we're one pick six away from this being a tight game, and in that man to man coverage, they had another zone sitting there. If I didn't lowball that pass, they would have definitely picked me off, and the ball is in Calvin Gibbs' hands on third and three where he is not getting enough. Our defense would recover a fumble for a touchdown though. So by the time I'm back out there, we have a three possession lead and I'm going to roll out to try and take this deep post. Being up by this much in the third quarter means we're not going to have to do much more to seal the win. And a touchdown on this drive would pretty much do it for us as we are going to find Dalen Maurice to get us to the 40. He's over 100 receiving yards in this game already. So he's having a very good day. I'm going to step up and maybe spin out all those defenders, but it didn't work out the way I thought it would. And I must have gotten injured because I'm watching this third down over from the sidelines. Our backup would turn it over and then Bowling Green would go down the field to get a touchdown against us. As long as we pick up a couple of first downs, we should be fine, but they're going to get the interception against me and this is not good. I'm going to have to make the tackle and I don't. They've broken free and oh my gosh. Jim Murphy just made this a one possession game and they're not going for the onside kick. They are sending it deep, so they're going to trust their defense against us. We'll see if we get anything with the return and we don't. And my coach has me dumping this one off to Calvin Gibbs where I don't know why we even risked passing it. All we need is a first down and this game's going to be over, but it's not going to happen here. So I am relieved that I get to pass it on this third and four and they get the sack. I cannot believe we're in a tight game with Bowling Green. On fourth and five, they're not going to get it though. So we're going to survive against the Falcons. And right now we are not performing well. I'm honestly stunned that my coach still considers me as a field general. And I'm also surprised by the fact that I'm still number one in the Heisman watch. But at least we've already sealed our spot into the conference championship where we'd face off against number 18 Toledo. And their only losses have come against Oklahoma and Florida. I feel like beating them in the MAC championship would be an impressive win. But we have to stay undefeated until we get there first. If I don't play well, we won't make the college football playoffs and I won't win the Heisman Trophy, so my goal is to have no turnovers against Central Michigan. And they always come when I'm least expecting it. They have locked up with man-to-man -man coverage, so I thought it was best if I just took the sack and it looks like Calvin Gibbs has a lot of space over there where he breaks one. But eventually somebody would get to him, making it third and seven, and this route is coming across the field where Maurice is going to get us the first. In order to take it, I had to be very patient, but I knew eventually he would be open. And our offensive line is holding up pretty well so far. I'm not happy the backup tight end dropped the ball, but that's why we put Evan Carter Jr. back in instantly, and this is going to take us to the three. Or at least it would have if Dalen Maurice could have held onto the ball. I am going to give him another chance with this play, but as of recently, he's making more and more mistakes and our slants aren't getting open. I would have never expected Central Michigan to have lockup man-to-man defense against us, but they have so far. So I'm hoping for more zone coverage, and on third and three, I'm going to reach that zone. Then our defense would get a stop on them, so I am going to go for the deep bomb with that press coverage, and Dalen Maurice dropped it. If anybody else was playing in the slot, we would already be up 14 to 0 against them. And I swear, his lack of ability to just catch the football is going to be the reason we lose a playoff game. But until then, we have to continue to just play it out. And if I could adjust the depth chart and road to glory, I'd definitely put someone else there. I think Dalen Maurice would make for a good outside receiver, but in the slot, he's just not consistent enough. And here on third and 10 with this slant, we are going to hopefully move the chains. Surprisingly, this is one of the few times that we've handed off the ball so far. And you all can let me know if I'm giving Calvin Gibbs too much hate, but I I feel like he never does anything with those runs, but more out of the air. He's better as a receiving back for us, and on third and eight, there's a route that I always love to take with this play. And to my surprise, Dalen Maurice caught the football. I also just broke my own school record at Northern Kentucky, which is pretty cool. Now I'm going to go for the deep shot to Jace done the second, and he might be gone if Johnson can't catch him. That's probably been open more times than not this season, and I just haven't noticed it. I think I should be able to get around these defenders, just a couple more to beat. And we're going to let Calvin Gibbs try to show off his speed with the halfback toss, but it doesn't work. I am so sick of watching him struggle, but we do have an open slant, and Dalen Maurice has his second touchdown of the day. For as much complaining as I've done, we're up 21-0, to zero, and that blocking was absolutely atrocious, so now it's second and 17. With the route bounce, we should have a huge gain, though. Malachi Harris has broken free, and there's just one player that could still catch him, and he doesn't. Central Michigan wouldn't score on their next drive either, so we have the ball back again, up by 28, and at this point, there's not going to be much more to show, as we're going to continue to dominate. Dalen Maurice is gone, and he's not being caught either. Now, I'm not happy that through Sim, I would throw an interception in this one. So that's a little disappointing, but we've had such a large lead for this second half and the backup was in for a while, but then Central Michigan cut it back to a 25 point lead. So I get to be out there on the field to help us end this one. And I'm going to do it with my legs as I just scramble for an easy first down. It's nice that we're improving to 10 and one, but I'm averaging a turnover a game, even with these wild stats. And I've got so much XP to spend, so I might as well continue to upgrade things like this. Now that we're up to number 10 in the polls, I know we're going to make the playoffs if we win out. And the only team left on our schedule is Buffalo. This is my final 
regular season game ever, and I'm going to start it out by finding Dalen Maurice, but I really want to pass for a ton of yards, so I'm going to try to throw up some deep shots in this game, and I ended up finding him on another slant with this play. My eyes are going to be glued on Jay Stun the second, though, for a lot of this matchup, because whenever he's not running wide receiver screens, I'm going to make sure that he is always on a streak. My coach wants to keep it up with the wide receiver screens, though, so we're running back-to-back -back ones against Buffalo, and here on first and 10, their man-to-man -man coverage is not going to stick on our slot receiver. Whenever he's catching the ball, he is so good, but I don't know if I can trust him to do it here, so I had to take off myself. And I still need to earn about 600 coach trust before we reach the playoffs, so it would definitely be ideal if we could continue to play this well. I've yet to see an opportunity to throw it up to Jay Stun the second, but I felt like this could be one, and I just did it anyway. So I'm very glad that he was able to make the catch there, and I swear that they know that we are running the ball every time before we do it. I am going to be able to run in myself, though, and that's going to make it 21-0 to zero before the end of the first quarter. As our defense continues to get us the ball back, it's becoming very apparent that Buffalo doesn't stand much of a chance against us. And just like the Central Michigan game, we're going to be able to end this one pretty early on from what I'm seeing. Once we go up by four possessions, that's my calling to start simming a little bit because that would just be a waste of time to keep playing. So hopefully there won't be any turnovers even with me doing that, and I'm going to run for like 20. I'm still waiting to see Jay Stun the second get open deep more often, though I was only able to find him once. I'm going to find Dalen here. And I have yet to throw an incompletion in this game where we are already approaching halftime. Jay Stun the second takes it in, and then Buffalo would actually respond back. So now I'm going to have to do it myself where I'm just going to take off, get a couple of good blocks here, and there's just one more that we needed. But I should have known that Dalen Maurice wasn't going to get that for us, and we aren't going to be able to do much here. I'm 13 for 13, so I really don't want to force anything deep on any of the streaks yet, and I might have to keep playing until I throw an incompletion because this stat line right now looks insane. Approaching halftime, I am 15 for 15, and that corner route got open. So here in the third quarter, it's probably best if I continue to stay out there on the field until I make a mistake. I just know that one of my teammates are probably going to ruin it for me by dropping the ball. Hopefully, Dalen Maurice is able to bring this one in, and he does. So that's actually going to give him a new school record. And the fact that it was Calvin Gibbs originally should tell you how many halfback screens we've thrown. I mean, our halfback has touched the ball more than most of our receivers. And this is a perfect example of why, because on a third and goal, we just had to give it to him instead of going for a deep pass. From there, we'd kick a field goal, and I'd never get to see the field again. So I'm pretty sure I had my first perfect stat line ever. And going 20 for 20 for five touchdowns is crazy. I'm still going to need to get 300 coach trust to become a household name though. So before the conference championship, I just want to hop into one more practice to see if I'm able to get any against our defense. With about six reps left, I am up to 800, but I don't think I'm going to reach enough through this. But because of all the XP I've been able to earn, I'm definitely glad that I actually practiced this week. And I'm very warmed up for our conference championship game against Toledo. I think it's time to get into it. And all we're going to need before the playoffs is about 150 coach trust. But in order to make it, we know that we cannot lose. And I thought Toledo might be ranked higher, but it turns out they lost a game. So because Western Michigan beat them, it's not going to help our resume the way I thought it would. With our XP, I was able to get a couple more upgrades to increase my agility, and it's time for my final MAC matchup ever. I'm playing in the conference championship game for the second season in a row, and this is the only thing that stands between Northern Kentucky and the playoffs. That was a stupid read to make, but Dalen Maurice caught it. So maybe whenever we need him to clutch up for us, he's somebody we can actually rely on, and Calvin Gibbs has a lot of green grass that's in front of him here. So we have already scored a touchdown. Our defense would also get a stop and things are looking very bright for Northern Kentucky early on in this game. This is exactly how we have to play though. And I think it's cover two, which means Jay Stun the second's going to be open. And that play would have been perfect if he could have just stayed on his feet. But now I've taken a sack and we're out of field goal range until Calvin Gibbs gets five. It's all on him whether or not we pick up this third and 10. It looks like he doesn't have enough blockers. So senior kicker Jordan Rogers is going to have to drill it. And with our defense getting another stop, I'm already feeling very very good about this one. Once again, Calvin Gibbs gets this school record, so I'm sure that Dalen Maurice is going to want to get it back from him, and he makes the catch. Now on first and 10, we are definitely going to have this seam over to him, so he does have the record now, and they're probably going to continue swapping it back and forth. On the final play of the first quarter, I'm just going to dump it off to our halfback to get the first down, but he breaks that tackle and fights for more, so we are playing extremely well right now, and I just realized that it's been over five quarters since I've thrown an incompletion in this road to glory, which is just a crazy stat. I'm going to try to go this entire game without making a mistake either. We'll see if I can pull it off. And I'm going to get Calvin Gibbs in space. We're on the halfback toss. He reaches the end zone. Even though we're up 17 to 0, I haven't gotten credit for a single touchdown in this matchup because of Gibbs. So honestly, that's not good for somebody that's in the running for the Heisman. And my coach wants me to continue feeding it to him. So that's all I can do. We wouldn't get a first down there, but our defense got to stop so quickly. And unfortunately, because I'm only 5'9", they are going to bat down that pass. So now I'll just send it deep and Dalen Maurice brings it in. I might've thrown an incompletion, but my stats still look fantastic. And there's my first touchdown. So one of the biggest games of the season that I was potentially worried about is 
already over, and with 40 seconds left in the half, I'm going to find Jace on the second. I guess we'll see if I can pass for another touchdown here. I do not want to turn the ball over. I can't be that risky. And if I keep playing this way, the backup should be in very shortly. Calvin Gibbs is going to reach the end zone, and even though they would score a touchdown to start the third quarter, it's not going to matter. With the way that we're playing right now, I would say we're prepared for playoff matchups against better schools, but we'll see. And here on second and three, I'm just going to find Evan Carter Jr. We'd end up winning by a lot, and I've now run the MAC conference for two seasons, so it's nice to see myself get another trophy. But the main one I'm worried about is the Heisman. I've also become a household name. And just like last season, it was a landslide with the voting. I might have thrown a few more interceptions, but my completion percentage was at 81%, and the rushing yards and touchdowns went down, so that shows I stood in the pocket more. As for receivers, I did hate on him a lot, but I got Dalen Maurice the bullet in the cough with this insane stat line. And I forgot to check the drops last season, but it looks like he only had six, so I guess I over-exaggerated. In 2013, he had 15 of them, and it was wide receiver Malachi Harris that had the most last season with 13. Now going into the playoffs, it looks like we're going to be the 11 seed. And just in case I could get injured, I am going to boost up my injury. So now I feel like I'm prepared for what could be the biggest moments of my career. Luckily, we're actually a higher overall than Penn State, and we'll need that since we're playing on the road. This is the first playoff game of my career, and Penn State's 10-2, and so I have no idea how this is going to go, but we've handed it off twice. And because I can change the play 20 times now, I'm definitely going to do that on third down. Here we go. I don't want to be held to a three now, and Dalen Maurice got open. So that is exactly what we needed there. It looks like they're going with man-to-man -man coverage, and again, he's going to reel in the catch. We've already been able to get past midfield, and the wide receiver screen is boxed. So now I'm just going to look for our slant or our halfback wheel, and Calvin Gibbs catches it. That sets us up for a third and four, which shouldn't be too difficult to pick up if they don't have anybody out in a quarterback contain. And after getting obliterated by Notre Dame earlier in this season, I'm going to have to lock in if we're going to come out on top. But Evan Carter Jr. has already reached the end zone once, and our defense stopped the Nittany Lions, so we have it back up by seven. If we could just score on every possession from here on out, they have almost no chance of coming back, but I threw that one straight to them, so I need to be a lot more careful. This is another huge third and long, and I'm just going to wait for our route to get open over the middle, but I didn't have enough time to get it out, and once again, our defense has forced a stop against the Nittany Lions. After Notre Dame put up like 40, I didn't know how we'd do against better schools, but so far, we seem to be doing okay in our first playoff matchup, and I'm going to take Calvin Gibbs in the flat. We have six first downs to their one, so we're definitely playing like the better team, but I've made a couple of questionable reads because their coverage is tighter. And on the final play of the first quarter, Calvin Gibbs catches the halfback screen where he gets to about the 38. I don't know if we're going to go for it or attempt a long field goal, but it looks like we're going to trust our kicker and he can definitely hit from here. Then Penn State would score a touchdown, so it's 10 to 7 and their coverage is clamping. So we better step up quickly and I think I'm just going to take our running back for 5 or 6, but he breaks the tackle to get the first. You all saw it on the season stats. Calvin Gibbs has been one of our best wide receivers. And we got the four verticals play call. If our offensive line holds up, this could have been good, but I didn't see anything I liked. On third and inches, the ball goes into the hands of Calvin Gibbs, and after failing to pick it up, I'm just relieved to see we still have a lead when we get the ball back. We're definitely not doing as better offensively as we have all season, but I've seen a lot from our defense. I got hit into that throw, and it actually wasn't intended for Dalen Maurice, but he made a fantastic adjustment there, and whenever they run man-to-man -man coverage, I feel like all I can do is just scramble. It looks like this time they're going with zone, so I'm going to try to dot it up, and I did, but we dropped it. So we're going to run back a similar play call. It's man-to-man -man coverage, and I have to dump it off to our halfback. My coach keeps on giving me four verticals, and I think we'll have a receiver here if I can avoid taking the sack, but they might play that with the safety, and Flowers got over to the football. That is so unfortunate. Somebody needs to make the tackle on him, and we do, but I should have been more careful, and I cannot believe that Penn State still only has seven points against us, but I'm about to take the sack, so I'm crumbling in the playoffs against better competition, and this is such a long third 19 to try and pick up, but there's a route I could take, and we are going to make the play to Malachi Harris. He's going to use his speed to try and evade everybody, and he might have been gone. That shoelace tackle would catch him, but it's okay. We're still down to the 25. And on second and eight, man-to-man -man coverage will not stick on that route. Evan Carter Jr. is going to get his second touchdown. I've also broken my own school record. And the fact that the Nittany Lions still have seven points against us is honestly incredible, but we fumble it away. And I'm single-handedly trying to lose this for my team. Evidently, I should have upgraded my carrying more because now we find ourselves only up by three. And on second and six, Calvin Gibbs gets this one where he is going to be able to get us closer. It's not a first down, but it shouldn't be too hard to convert here as long as we held on, and I can guarantee that if I could turn on Chew Clock and Road to Glory, I would definitely do it here. I'm trying to get the biggest result of my career, and I have to continue to make the right read like that one, but the pressure is starting to build up a lot, and I'm really hoping for cover two on this play, but it was man-to-man, -man, so we're going to take Maurice. With a new set of downs, they are again going to go with man-to-man -man coverage, and it looks like Jace done the second got open, so we're not too far away from scoring the touchdown, and I know that that contain could have played it, so I didn't take the flat when I wanted to, and our slant eventually 
they did get open. Jay stun the second, puts us back up by 10 points. And this is the biggest fourth and three ever where Rodgers is going to be a bit short. All I could do was watch as our defense came up so clutch for us in that situation. And all we have to do is make sure that we don't take a safety. Why is Gibbs running backwards? And now once again, we have to trust our defense because it's back to being an eight point game and that's dropped. It is fourth and 10 and all they did was just hand it off. So if we can just get one first down, we will get the win versus the Nittany Lions. And I still cannot believe that we took that safety, but it should be okay. With Calvin Gibbs picking it up, we can pretty much run out the rest of the clock in this one and he keeps on fighting. So we're gonna come out on top of this one and I might even rub it in by trying to get the touchdown. We are going on to the semifinals with NKU and I deserve to win player of the game. But if I wanna win a championship, there's still a ton of work to do. And next up is Texas A&M, who's a 99 overall. It is the quarterfinals of the college football playoffs and we have a huge game on the line. But I just made the worst possible read to open this one up versus the Aggies. And on third and 13, we could be in some trouble. They were pressing Jace on the second though and he catches it. Anytime that they give us a cover two look, I'm gonna do my best to shred it and Calvin Gibbs gets a few. But it would have been nice if he could have gotten some more yardage there. I'm staring down the deep post and that's gonna cause me to almost take the sack, but I get it out to Daylon Maurice. And I cannot believe that we've already made it down inside the red zone. But things seem to be going well and Evan Carter Jr. is wide open. From here, I wish I could just hand it off, but they wanted me to go with the play action instead. And fullback Marcus Watts actually got involved for one of the first times. Texas A&M wouldn't score either, so our defense has been impressive so far and I have to try to bomb them, but that was the wrong move. That was a play that worked versus Matt Conference opponents and so was this one, but they stop it. So it's third and 10. They want us to run a halfback draw and the options aren't great. That's why it's so important that I can hot route at this point in the series. And on third and 10, I'm going to have our tight end as long as he's able to catch it, but he dropped it. So they got the ball back again, but they weren't able to score. So our defense must be putting in some incredible work. After what Notre Dame did to us in the regular season, I wasn't sure if we'd be able to compete against some of these harder schools. And these matchups have certainly been harder as they're going to box us up on third down. But our defense has gotten their third stop of the day and we have it on offense again. On second and inches, we have Jay Stun the second in motion and that's going to leave him wide open up the middle of the field. And then I'm rooting for a cover two look where we are going to have him wide open. Actually, that's Malachi Harrison. He's gone. I honestly thought we just got lucky against Penn State, but we have gotten another stop. So it's 14 to zero. And if our defense can keep this up, I don't think we're going to have any issues making a championship. Here on first and 10, it looks like we're going to have our running back wide open in the flat. I was just waiting for the route bounce. He's going to stiff arm that guy and it's our backup. David Marks has not been good throughout this entire series, but that was a great play. And right now we are beating Texas A&M like we would have beaten a school that we played during Mac conference play. Not a single player on our defense is over a 90 overall, but it doesn't seem to matter. And my guess is whatever coordinators NKU has hired just have to be insane. I'm still carrying the offense as well as we're about to get our fourth touchdown. So right now it seems like we're going to cruise into the semifinals. And after our defense has gotten us an interception, I would say the Aggies are cooked. We could end the half with another touchdown, which would just be insane. And I didn't take it. I should have, but I was running. I didn't want to risk throwing an interception and they're going to play that perfectly. Now I got to get over to Wilson to make the tackle. And I'm not sure why I even tested him there. I got to say, I laid the hammer. And even if I'm turning it over, I don't care because I've already won the Heisman trophy at this point in my career. And we're just going to go for the deep shot. That was a great play. I have thrown for 400 yards here in the third quarter on Heisman versus Texas A&M. And why couldn't the Penn State game have gone like this? It's been so simple. With that pass, I'm probably going to set another record and I have. So that's nuts to do that in a playoff matchup versus Texas A&M. But after that, we just put in our backups to finish it out. And our fans have got to be thrilled. We're going on to the semifinals. We're either playing against Ohio State or USF. And unfortunately, the Bulls couldn't keep up with the Buckeyes. So we have to play against a school that hasn't lost a game. And it's going to be in State Farm Stadium. If I can win this game for my team, Northern Kentucky is going to make the national championship. But Dalen Maurice is back to dropping the football. And I've played Ohio State one time in my career as a junior where they took us down, but they also had home field advantage. I think we've gotten much better since then. So it'll be interesting to see how we stack up against them. And I'm going to let Calvin Gibbs go to work by handing it off to him, but he doesn't get much. If he was a better runner, it would make things so much easier for us. I'm not sure if we're going to get this Devin Carter Jr. though. And we're being very aggressive going forward on fourth and inches, but Calvin Gibbs was open and that was the right move. I hurried that one up and my coach was not happy about it, but I don't care. I knew we could get it. And on second and five, I'm going to have this drag route to get us another first. Now we're starting to get into a little bit of a flow and I always trust that deep post route. He's wide open. So we started things off the right way, but they would get a touchdown as well. Luckily they missed the extra point. And after avoiding the sack, I see Malachi Harris is wide open with the deep post route and he is unfortunately going to get caught. I thought he was gone, but at least we're down to the five yard line where I'm going to just take it in. And that is exactly what we needed to respond back to Ohio State. If we have the ball back as well, our defense has clearly done their job. I'm going to try to get it to Dalen Maurice and I made it. So even though it's risky to take that route, sometimes it works. And I kind of trust that Jay 
on the second is going to break the press there, but he didn't, and I just hit the wrong button. I've been trying to keep an eye on our best wide receiver just to see when he gets open like he does with this one inside the red zone. And I can't lie, this is the best football that I have ever played in my career. Now that we've made it all the way to the semifinals, we cannot afford to lose to the Buckeyes. Calvin Gibbs is not going to get in, but we're so close to doing so, and that's going to happen here. Our defense would also hold them again, so as long as I don't mess up, we should be fine. But that play simply took too long to develop. It was a bad decision to go with that there. And my three options for third and long are terrible. If I somehow managed to pick this up, I would be shocked, but there is a defender to get around and I can't do it. So the Buckeyes would get the ball back and score a touchdown, which makes it an eight point game before the half. I've also just been told that Calvin Gibbs is out for the rest of the game with a hip injury. So we're not going to have our star running back. And that means we just need to continue to pass the ball where I'm going to take it to the backup and he isn't going to get much. The pressure is definitely on right now. And Evan Carter Jr. is my read, but they had somebody right there. I don't know why I thought he was going to bite down on something else. I've thrown a pick in every playoff game and I've got to stop making dumb mistakes. With the touchdown, you'd think that Ohio State would tie it up, but they didn't get the two-point conversion, so that definitely helps us. We get the first, and I just broke my first NCAA record. That tells you how insane of a season I've been having, almost 6,000 passing yards. And here on second and 10, I am going to instantly roll out. I was hoping to hit something deep, and that's probably been my issue. Going into the championship, I need to be reminded to take my flats, so I'm going to be looking at the underneath routes on this play, and that's when I'm going to find our tight end. All we have to do is get a touchdown, and we'd have a two-possession lead. That's going to be a first. And it looks like Jay Stun the second kind of got around that cornerback, but I was terrified of actually throwing it. I do not want to make a mistake this far down the field, so I'm just going to do the smart thing in this situation. And I'm not sure how I feel about our backup halfback getting this one with a toss, because that hasn't worked for us so far, and I think I'm just going to try to make it to the end zone myself, which I do. Even though Ohio State would score a touchdown, we're still up by two. And the pressure is starting to build because we cannot make any more mistakes in this game. If we don't pick up this third and eight, they're going to get the ball back, and that is caught by Jay Stun. And now on first and ten, the halfback screen to our backup running back gets us like nothing. This could be a little bit risky, but I kind of want to go deep to Dalen Maurice and I didn't do it. But because I didn't look anywhere else, it is third and 19 and our deep post route's going to be knocked down. With 32 seconds left, the Buckeyes would score a touchdown. So that means the pressure is on and I am going to complete this one to our tight end. Because we still have all three of our timeouts left, I am hoping for the best and that's going to be caught by him again. But my coach just automatically called our first one for us and I see there's a lot of green grass on this left side of the field, so I'm going to take it. Words cannot express how nervous I am. I just want to get into the end zone and I'm going to try to do it with my legs. So with 13 seconds left, I've tied it all up, but we have to hit this extra point and we do. As long as our defense just takes care of business with this last play, we should be fine. And that throw is not going to be enough. So somehow the Norse are headed to a national championship game. And I cannot believe we've made it this far. I could actually complete all the goals in this series. And in the biggest game, we have to play the Irish again. They beat us so bad earlier in the year, but hopefully we can get our revenge. The national championship is against the one team that beat me this season. So I'm a little bit nervous, but I could actually actually win it all with NKU and here on third and 10 we almost threw a pick. Fortunately because of the rain they'd fumble it away but that was not a solid first drive from us and Calvin Gibbs just stiff armed that defender. He is clearly not messing around in this one. I'm going to pitch it to him and see what he can do here and I don't see this going well for us but my coach wanted me to run it anyway. He broke one tackle. So now it is third and five. They've run man-to-man -man coverage and I'm just going to throw it to our running back who's going to be Mark Short. I can't complain about the fact that we're taking a field goal here especially since our defense forced a three and out and this is going much different than the first time we played against them this season. As much as I don't like playing in the rain, I have a feeling it could actually help us out a bit as Evan Carter Jr. won't go down. And with a new set of downs, my coach wants me to pass it again. I'm going to check it down and we should not have gotten the first. I honestly cannot believe that worked out for Calvin Gibbs, but I love throwing that route and they played it. So that's the second time it hasn't worked against a better program and Dunn dropped the ball. It is third and 10 now. That is man-to-man -man coverage. I'm going to trust Harris. And slowly but surely, we are working to score the first touchdown in this one. I'm honestly just really happy happy with how our defense has done so far, but they could have gotten a stop there. So I had to use my legs to get the first. And every single time my coach has called this this season, I have not liked it, but I can only change the play 20 times a game. And every so often, some of those options are not very good. On second and 13, I just have to hope that somehow this wide receiver screen actually works out and it does. So now it's third and short. We honestly don't need that much. And it looks like they're about to get the sack because I wasn't very decisive, but I actually scrambled for a lot. It's a good thing that the Irish defensive line doesn't seem to be that quick. Calvin Gibbs is going to reach the end zone and our defense could get them off the field on this third and 10 where the blitz paid off. The fact that their quarterback Kenny Minchie is one for seven tells you how well that we've been playing and I needed to get a block but I didn't and I'm still able to get a lot. I have waited all season to use my legs like this and I'm just going to pray that Dalen Maurice comes free here which he does to like the 35. We are dominating versus Notre Dame and I see that Jace done the seconds open. I'm going to try to get it to him and it worked. They would score
score a touchdown, but we're still up by 10 points in the national championship game. And it is crucial that we end this first half in the right way. I see it open. Jace done the second, but for whatever reason, he loves to fall over when catching it. And he would have been gone on this next one. I'm just going to go for it. I didn't think that defender played him well, but evidently we cannot outrun these guys. And I think we're going to have our tight end. Evan Carter Jr. is going to get to the two. And why are we calling a timeout? Now, if we reach the end zone, Notre Dame's going to have a chance to get points as well, but at least we're up by 17 for now. And I can't believe they're kicking a field goal here. They'd also kick another to open up the third quarter. So we are sitting pretty versus the Irish right now. And all we have to do is make sure that this drive goes well as we just got to get a touchdown. If we can do that, I'd feel very good about our chances. Evan Carter Jr. just ran a filthy route to get to the red zone. And we just need him to do the same thing here, but the crossing route did not. So I'm just going to take off with my legs instead. Here on second and one, it looks like it was man-to-man -man coverage, but I got scared of taking something. So again, I'm going to use my legs. And we're so close to putting away the Irish, which we don't do here. If they didn't commit blatant pass interference, we would have gotten in. But it's not going to matter because I'm going to do it on the ground instead. And going into the fourth quarter, we're up by 18. Now they would score another touchdown, but they wouldn't get the two-point conversion, which helps us. And if we can just hold on for a little bit longer, we're going to win it all with the Norse. It is third and 11 though, and that looks like man-to-man -man coverage. So I'm going to take it to Dalen Maurice. And I don't even know why we're still passing the ball. That's what my coach wants to do. So instead, I'm going to use my legs to make sure we run it instead. From here, the only chance that Notre Dame still has in this one is if we turn it over or if we get a field goal against them. But I don't plan on making any mistakes, and this is going to take us to the eight. Now we're just going to pass it, and that's a wide open Jace on the second. So from here, I can confidently say we should win. And all we have to do is convert on this third and 11 after they'd score a touchdown, and that's what happens. We have taken down the Irish in the championship, and this was the craziest series that I've ever done. We'd get revenge. I won two Heisman trophies, and then there's our team holding up the national championship one. By the end of my career, my Road to Glory legend score was almost 15,000, and there's a ton of different awards that I was able to achieve, especially be named player of the game, but there's also a lot of stuff that I couldn't accomplish. At the end of the day, I developed from a 45 overall to this, and I had an incredible senior year with stats like these. I won all these awards twice. That's just crazy. And rushing wise, I finished with 19 touchdowns like my junior year. As much as I hated on him, it wouldn't have been possible without Dalen Maurice. And thank you all for so much support throughout this entire series.